Well, ladies and gentlemen, great show, great audience, great venue. One of those would have been nice. <laughs> I went for a wander around earlier. Someone came up to me and went, well, see your last show. I said, oh, thanks very much. And then he added, at least I hope it was your last show. <laughs> With your fucking mates. <laughs> People often ask me how I do this for a living. How do you get up in front of people for an hour and a half or two hours and tell them jokes? It must be petrifying. Well, the secret is, yeah, what you do, if you're doing any kind of public speaking, this really works. What you do, you imagine the people you're talking to are naked. Yeah, really works. A couple of things to remember. Firstly, don't tell the people you're talking to that's what you're doing. Because that could be a little bit creepy. <laughs> and secondly, it doesn't work as well if you work in a primary school. <laughs> Someone came up to me and said, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but you look like Jimmy Carr. <laughs> How am I supposed to not take that personally? That's my face. <laughs> That's all I've got to work with. I realise I've got quite a broad face. I've got quite good girth on my face. And girth is not a term traditionally associated with an attractive face. <laughs> you know those things you get by the seaside, the big cardboard cutout thing by the seaside? Big fat Johnny Man in an all-in-one red and white striped suit running down Skegness Beach. You know the one? And they cut the face out so you can stick your head through, take a hilarious holiday photo. Well, when I stick my head through one of those, it just looks right. <laughs> I look like a Down syndrome Roger Federer. <laughs> I wish that wasn't funny. <laughs> I wish they didn't ring true, but sadly... <laughs> I bought a rape alarm... ..cos I kept on forgetting when to rape people. <laughs> yeah, bloody marvellous. Um, I was going to tell you a little bit about behind the scenes. Not behind the scenes here at the Bloomsbury Theatre, cos there's fuck all going on back there. <laughs> but behind the scenes more generally. You know in television commercials, when they use chimpanzees to advertise tea and whatnot, because we'll buy anything if chimpanzees are involved, because chimpanzees are adorable. Well, what they do when they're filming a commercial with chimpanzees is they give the chimpanzees peanut butter, and the peanut butter sticks to the roof of the mouth of the chimpanzee, makes the chimpanzee go... ..because <coughs> 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 they're not used to the peanut... Oh, they quite like it, but they're not used to it, so it makes them go... <coughs> <coughs> ..makes it look as if the chimpanzee is talking. Well, that's also how they make Hollyoaks. <laughs> Interesting fact for you. Are you having to explain that to her? <laughs> oh! It's clearly a mixed ability group. <laughs> Here's another fact for you. Are you aware if you put Mentos... You know the sweets Mentos? If you put Mentos into Diet Coke... You're retarded. <laughs> Sweetie, make fizzy pop go magic. Like <laughs> Row up. Sorry, you're giving me a look there as if to say, it is good, though. <laughs> I told my best friend I fucked his wife and got her pregnant. That cured his hiccups. <laughs> I'm in a long-term relationship. Who else here is in a long-term relationship? Give us a shout. You sound thrilled. <laughs> I've been with the same girl for eight years, and we're very happy together, but how's this for mental? She still gets annoyed if I use her toothbrush. That's mental, isn't it, when you consider how intimate we've been over those eight years? And if you can tell me a better way to get dog shit out trainers... <laughs> I'd love to fucking hear about it, cos there's nothing final. <laughs> dog excrement can blind a child. But it's much easier just to use a finger. <laughs> if you really want to be sure, smear dog shit all over both fingers. <laughs> From the shoulder, jab. <laughs> there are a lot of obese children in Britain today, but focus on the positive, the pensions crisis is over. <laughs> Come on, those tubby little fucks aren't going to see 40. Never mind 65. <laughs> There's quite a lot of young people in. 
If you're young and your parents are getting divorced, it can be a very difficult time. But remember, it's not your fault. Your mum's a slag. <laughs> Pretty bad being told you're adopted, but not as bad as being told you're gonna be adopted. <laughs> Did you know, if your ears are burning, it means people are talking about you. Generally, they're saying, he's on fire. <laughs> are you all familiar with Simon Cowell? Do you know Simon Cowell? Yeah. Simon Cowell spends £500,000 every year on his own personal security. That's an extraordinary amount of money, isn't it? Half a million pounds a year on personal security. Has Simon not considered being less of a cunt? <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> you were saying that you like my joke? Yeah. Well, thanks very much. <laughs> it's very nice of you. I was chatting to these men that were having a conversation in front of you, but that's fine. You've, <laughs> you've caught my eye now. What do you do, for, madam? I work for Nationwide. You work for Nationwide in Human Resources? I imagine you've been saying to people, well, you're fired quite a lot recently. <laughs> we have done fucked up the country. Fuck off. <laughs> right, good on you. Human Resources, the, the lady sciences. I was talking about Simon Cowell there. Simon Cowell, uh, people knock the X Factor and they knock Britain's Got Talent, but the way I see it, someone's got to turn the Christmas lights on in Stoke. <laughs> and it's not going to be me. <laughs> Again this year. <laughs> I'm 36 years of age. You know what that means? It means the only way I get to be described as young now is if I die. <laughs> I think you know you're getting old. I was watching porn last week. I found myself thinking... That bed looks comfy. <laughs> the worst thing about being told you've got Alzheimer's is it doesn't just happen the once. <laughs> and I'll be telling that joke again later on. <laughs> if I remember. Of course, a lot of people try and fight the ageing process. A lot of people use anti-wrinkle cream. Does anyone here use anti-wrinkle cream? Yeah. A few, a few of you. Is that a fella up there? <laughs> you know they're meant to be wrinkly. Now, my question to the ladies that use the anti-wrinkle cream, if it really works, how come you've still got fingerprints? <laughs> yeah, that's right, I made you look a fool. <laughs> I saw a thing on the cover of Elle magazine, you're all familiar with Elle magazine for the ladies, it said on the cover, what to buy and how to wear it. Buy a dress and zip it up, you fucking moron. <laughs> what kind of idiots are reading Elle magazine? Who's standing in a newsagent, naked, thinking, help? <laughs> A lot of women worry about one breast being smaller than the other. But focus on the positive. One of them is bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and we call that one our favourite. <laughs> this is interesting. There's an evolutionary reason why men love breasts. It's because prehistoric men loved breasts. <laughs> Have you noticed this, ladies? All men have got obsessive-compulsive disorder when it comes to boobs. Have you noticed that? All men have got OCD when it comes to breasts. No man has ever kissed and caressed a breast, yeah? Mm. <laughs> All right, not a brilliant mime, I'm sorry. <laughs> that looked like I was cracking a safe... <laughs> ..whilst trying to get the temperature right in a hotel shower. <laughs> Pretty multitasking. <laughs> Turn on the taps, test the water. That's how <laughs> That's how I remember it. That's very much foreplay for beginners. <laughs> Not ready yet. <laughs> Not ready yet. Oh, like a fucking slip and slide. Bang. <laughs> Sorry, I got rather sidetracked there. What I was saying was... <laughs> No man has ever kissed and caressed a breast and then not done exactly the same thing for exactly the same duration of time to the other boob. It's like we think your breasts are sentient beings and they'll be annoyed if we've got a favourite. <laughs> One of your tits will be sat there going, hmm, she has all the fun, does she? 
My partner is always saying to me, you never tell me how you feel. About two, three times a week she'll say that to me. She'll go, you never tell me how you feel. <laughs> what is she talking about? <laughs> Only yesterday I woke her up by slapping her in the face with my cock. <laughs> how much clearer can I be? <laughs> this means I'm horny. <laughs> Sorry, sir, we made eye contact there. I didn't mean anything by that. <laughs> I was by the seaside recently, and I was thinking about rising sea levels. And this guy next to me was throwing stones into the water. I thought, well, that's not helping. <laughs> if anything, you're making matters worse. <laughs> Any Welsh people in? Any Welsh? Yeah. Oh, it's quite a few. Well, we seem to have contained the problem. <laughs> I'm loving the Welsh. I like the Welsh language, and I like the Welsh language because it was clearly invented by a dad losing at Scrabble. <laughs> That's clearly what's happened there. That's not a word, it starts with three L's. <laughs> it is a bloody word. <laughs> well, how's it pronounced? <laughs> I was in North Wales uh, last year, I was in Landidno. Has anyone been to Landidno? If it's a no, you don't have to answer, that's right. <laughs> I'll ask again. Has anyone been to Landidno? Yeah. Oh, a few of you have been. It's a lovely town. I was there anyway doing a show, got on stage, walked out, I said, it's lovely to be in Landidno. This guy, front and centre, where you're sitting there, face like fucking thunder, <laughs> went, it's not Landidno, <laughs> you bloody fool. <laughs> it's Clandidno. In Wales, the double L is pronounced with a C. <laughs> I said, all right. Don't be a lunt about it. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I do for a living. I think of little jokes in my head, and then I tell them to you so that you'll like me. <laughs> Sounds a bit tragic when I say, <laughs> what was that, it's not working? <laughs> well, you can fuck off. <laughs> this is as good as it ever fucking goes. <laughs> I don't come to your work and knock the sailor's cocks out of your mouth, do I? <laughs> Where are you? It's not working, man. Give us a wave. Yeah, what do you do, sir? Telecoms. You, you do telecoms? <laughs> what, what do you do? Do you...? I do you. I do you. <laughs> I do you telephone. <laughs> what, sorry? Build you build them in their work. <laughs> Ironically, you work in communications and can hardly... <laughs> ..can hardly string a fucking sentence together. <laughs> well, broadly speaking, as I say, this is what I do for a living. Sometimes it doesn't quite work out, cos sometimes I'll have an idea for a joke, and then I'll sort of look at it in the morning and go... You know, if I've scribbled it down on a bit of paper at four in the morning, I'll look at it in the morning and go, well, it's sort of half a joke, but it's not the funny half. <laughs> it's sort of a bit more... A, a bit more, you know, challenging. It's a bit more esoteric and oblique means difficult to understand. <laughs> Make an effort, Mongo. <laughs> so I thought we might go through some of these, right? Um, I've got visual aids. <laughs> I realise it sounds bad when I say it like that. I don't mean I was walking through a park and I saw two homosexual men having sex and a bit must have got in my eye. <laughs> and now I've got all aids eyes. I don't mean that. I mean, I've got some pictures to help. These are slightly more challenging, bear with me. <laughs> if a giant ape... ..and a table tennis champion got into an argument over a karaoke machine, would the newspaper headline be... ..King Kong, Ping Pong, Sing Song, Ding Dong? <laughs> I'm writing a diet book. It's called Put That Down, Fatty. <laughs> Pedophilia is wrong. It's paedophilia. <laughs> of course, the main cause of paedophilia... ..good-looking kids. <laughs> Could you blame them? I was adorable. <laughs> Do you realise if you put your teeth in Coca-Cola overnight... ..you'll drown? People actually believe Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon. Bullshit. <laughs> it was Mr Takeshi, a gardener from Nagasaki, was standing next to where the bomb landed. 
<laughs> Too soon? <laughs> they say it's bad luck to put up an umbrella indoors, but I think if it's raining indoors, you've already had your bad luck. <laughs> The problem with unidentified flying objects, UFOs, is if they identify them, they're just flying objects, FOs. And then if they land, it's just no. <laughs> I saw an O. Oh. <laughs> lofts. Lofts are magical places where it's always Christmas. It only happens once a year, but when I collect the Christmas tree in the car, it looks like I've overdone it on the air freshener. <laughs> if we are going to put an end to global poverty, now is the time to stock up on trainers. <laughs> I'm joking. We're not going to put an end to global poverty. <laughs> they now make non-alcoholic cider. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, that's apple juice. <laughs> One in three Scottish women is clinically obese, as are the other two. <laughs> when you think about it, a bowls club full of pensioners is like an upside-down graveyard. <laughs> if ever I'm in a cemetery, I like to think that's what's going on underneath. <laughs> Whenever I talk to an old person, I always think, what a privilege. But they never thank me. <laughs> Of course, talking to an old person is like having access to living history, which is a lot like normal history, but reeks of piss. <laughs> there is a law that states pregnant women can urinate anywhere they want. Brilliant news. I think my nana might be pregnant. <laughs> the big shopping centre near us is called Lakeside, and my girlfriend said the other day, Lakeside is so crowded, no-one goes there anymore. We were in the car, she said, where would we be without sat-nav? <laughs> I was looking after a friend's cat while my friends went on holiday and I was worried about overfeeding the cat, so I asked her about it because I thought, well, she'll know about that sort of thing. Here's what she said. She said, don't worry, cats aren't pigs like dogs. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> cats aren't pigs like dogs. <laughs> Good, well, that's really clarifying. <laughs> I used to have table football in the house. We had foosball in the front room of the house. It was brilliant. Then she moved in. She hated it. She said it was too blokey. So what I did was I filled the table football up with water, and now we play synchronised swimming. <laughs> she came home the other day. She was all excited. She was thrilled with herself. She said, I saw a man with one platform shoe. I said, no, you saw a man with a club foot. <laughs> no one's got one platform shoe. No one's half into 70s fashion. <laughs> Unless it was Heather Mills on the way home from a disco. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> a friend of mine dresses his Labrador in a yellow fluorescent jacket and takes it everywhere he goes. It looks ridiculous. Is he blind? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, he's never going to see the show. <laughs> Why do deaf people watch TV so late at night? Is it because they always sleep through the alarm? <laughs> I'm not sure if it counts as incest, but I'm pretty sure when I was growing up, my dad was fucking my mum. <laughs> I woke up with an erection this morning. On reflection, I wish it had been my own. Saw a headline in the paper, it said, Homeless shelter burns down. I thought, well, what are they now? <laughs> Homeless, sir? <laughs> no, they were trapped inside. They're all dead. <laughs> if you know the difference between a kayak and a canoe, you probably don't know what it's like to have sex. <laughs> The highest speed ever achieved on a bicycle was done by a British man, 146 miles per hour on a bicycle. That is pretty impressive. It was recorded at a level crossing. <laughs> Still counts. The Great Wall of China, longest wall in the world, not one cash point. 
Some people think Islamic fundamentalism is a very real threat. What I want to know is when are the Salvation Army going to step up to the plate? <laughs> The most commonly shoplifted book in the world is the Bible. Yeah. Which sounds weird, but then makes perfect sense, because how are you meant to know not to steal it till you've read it? <laughs> I got handed a leaflet in the street saying, God loved you so much, he nailed himself to a cross. I thought, what? One-handed? <laughs> the Pope? The Pope doesn't approve of condoms. Which is fair enough. He's entitled to his opinion. But how does he suggest I smuggle cocaine? <laughs> If I went on to Dragon's Den, I would pitch the dragons a device that makes you less of a self-satisfied smug cunt. <laughs> I've discovered there's a big difference between having something engraved for someone and having something of theirs keyed. To rejoice in someone else's misfortune, the Germans call it Schadenfreude. We call it, you've been framed. <laughs> they say revenge is best served cold, and they say revenge is sweet. So really what they're saying is, revenge is ice cream. <laughs> I think it goes without saying. I'm glad you agree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was tempted just to go for 40 minutes. That would have been, <laughs> that would have been terrifically funny or shit. <laughs> Maybe shit. Um, I've had an idea for a children's book. I was going to run it past you. It's an idea for a children's book. It's about a boy that can see into the future after he gets raped by a unicorn. <laughs> for a bittersweet. <laughs> we don't have an ensuite bathroom, but we do have plastic sheets. If anything, it's more convenient. <laughs> I was in the cinema and something struck me. I think it was a peanut M&M. &M. <laughs> I'm a great driver. Last year, I got 25 points. <laughs> if you're Scottish and you don't want to know how you're going to die, look away now. Heart disease. <laughs> when my doctor told me I had heart problems, I took it with a pinch of salt. <laughs> To cut a long story short, Frodo does it. <laughs> well, we've just done, ladies and gentlemen, somewhere in the region of 60 jokes in 10 minutes. That's quite a lot of jokes per minute. That represents value for money during the credit crunch, I believe. <laughs> well done, me. What I've been trying to do is write the shortest joke possible so I can pack even more jokes into the show. So last year in the show, I had a four-word joke. It's only four words long, but it's a proper joke. Yeah. Venison's dear, isn't it? <laughs> only four words that doesn't fuck about get straight to the point <laughs> so this year I thought well I'll go one louder I'll attempt a three-word joke so for your delight and delectation stationary store moves <laughs> clearly not impressive enough I will now attempt a two-word joke dwarf shortage <laughs> Have you ever had this? My girlfriend made me fire our cleaner because she said the cleaner was too good looking and she didn't want her in the house. How mental is that? She was a really good cleaner. She was especially good at getting spunk out of hair. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know every day nearly 4,000 serious sexual assaults occur in my mind? <laughs> In America, in Oklahoma, where that fertiliser bomb went off, they've now got a garden of remembrance. <laughs> and it has come up a treat. <laughs> so, every cloud. <laughs> These kids in American high schools, I'm sure you've read about them, 14, 15, 16 years of age, they go into their high school with automatic weapons and handguns, they go apeshit. They shoot 20 or 30 of their fellow pupils before turning one of the guns on themselves. What is their fucking problem? <laughs> Do they not know where the staff room is? <laughs> they could be heroes! 
There's two ways to stop bullying. As I see it, ladies and gentlemen, there are two ways to stop the bullying. Firstly, you can stop the bullies. Well, that's been tried. Secondly, you can stop the kids that are being bullied from being such faggy dicks. <laughs> and really, the best way to do that is bullying. <laughs> My what, sorry? Were you bullied at school, sir? Was I bullied at school? <coughs> no. What, sorry? You are a faggy twat. But I am a faggy twat. <laughs> We're all having fun. I'll just open this can of whoop ass. <laughs> Pop that there. You're remarkably uh, confident for a man in, in some sort of hooded top. <laughs> what do you do for a living, sir? Do you mind me asking? I'm a student. You're a student, and what, what are you studying? You're still in secondary school in Ireland? <laughs> and what do you want to be when you grow up? Lawyer. What, sorry? A lawyer. You want to be a lawyer? So you know you're a cunt, you're going down that road. <laughs> and who are you here with this evening? I'm alone. You're alone? <laughs> So, so far, we know you're alone <laughs> and you're a bit of a cunt. <laughs> I'm liking you, frankly. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Chris. Chris. Hi, Chris. You all right? And have you just come over for the show or have you come over for the weekend? Sure. Just come over for the show. Well, God bless you, Chris. Feel free to join in any time you want. <laughs> the more aggressive, the better, frankly. <laughs> I quite like it. <laughs> Chris bullied me. <laughs> Yes, you will be. Uh, <laughs> if you're being bullied because you've got a speech impediment, maybe you're from the Republic of Ireland. Uh, <laughs> now, if you're being bullied because you've got a speech impediment, there are people you can talk to. <laughs> <laughs> but it will take fucking ages. <laughs> and they may giggle a bit. <laughs> I had a friend, she had a speech impediment. It was quite a severe sort of lispy thing. She was bullied so mercilessly at her job that she left. She's moved down to the coast now to work in the tourism industry. She sells seashells by the seashore. <laughs> she doesn't like to talk about it. <laughs> she can't. <laughs> if you've got a lisp and you're offended by that, foey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm making light of something quite serious. Let's try and lighten the mood, shall we? Let's lighten the mood a little bit. When I read about that Austrian fella... <laughs> it was bound to come up, wasn't it? When I read about Joseph Fritzl building a cellar under his house to imprison his own daughter for 24 years so he could systematically torture and abuse two generations of his own family, here's my first thought. This is how middle class I am. My first thought was, I bet he didn't have planning permission for that. <laughs> oh, we'd all like to add some square footage, but there are some fucking rules, mate. <laughs> Has anyone in here ever tried any DIY? Give us a shout if you've ever tried any kind of DIY, yes? Yeah, yeah. Most everyone's tried. Can anyone who's ever tried DIY, hand on heart, tell me they don't have a little bit of admiration for the work that Fritzl did. <laughs> it's not easy building stuff, is it? It's not easy to be a tidy workman. I'm not saying I approve of what he did down there, but he built a cellar without his wife even fucking noticing. <laughs> I'm just saying credit where credit is due. A round of applause for a Fritzl joke. <laughs> you may be my kind of town. <laughs> he was described in uh, the Daily Express newspaper as the most evil man in Austrian history. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> Exam standards are coming down in this country. <laughs> but focus on the positive, we do very well in pregnancy tests. <laughs> I'm not being snobbish, but I think you know you're common if you're at the same school as your mum. <laughs> 
this is a bit snobbish. Do you get annoyed by kids that can't use cutlery properly? That irritates me, if they can't use cutlery properly. Oh. And that would add insult to injury, wouldn't it? If you got stabbed by some asbo yob... <laughs> ..and they were holding the knife like a pen... <laughs> ..I'd be fucking livid. <laughs> Do it again, this time properly. <laughs> Caravan holidays. Caravan holidays are a fun way of telling your kids you're poor. <laughs> Most people laughing, a couple of you giving me the stink eye. <laughs> giving me a look as if to say, it's actually quite a posh caravan. <laughs> it's a sixth birth and we go to Cornwall, so whatever. <laughs> Just one question for you. On your holidays, do you shit in a cupboard? <laughs> mm. <laughs> You've just about cracked a smile, but it really took some effort. <laughs> What's your name, madam? What's your name? It's not the telly. I can, I can see you. <laughs> what, what's your name? Camilla. Camilla. And what do you do, Camilla? I suppose it depends on the guy. <laughs> I'm only messing about. Just you look all dressed up for this sort of show, this kind of filth. Maybe he told you, well, we're going to go and see a theatre show in the West End of London. You went, fucking brilliant. <laughs> You probably didn't even say fucking, you probably went, marvellous. <laughs> Mar the West End of London, a theatre show. This will be, oh, a bit of class. And he's finally, and then you, this, and you're going, <laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> you bought the ticket, and how do you two know each other? That's your mum. Well, you, 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 you don't, you, you don't even look like, you look as if you could be sisters. <laughs> you don't look young, she looks fucking old. <laughs> you let yourself go. I can't help myself. It's some sort of trap. I love the fact you've just turned around and go, does she? <laughs> what have you done to yourself there? You've got a little thing on your... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you. What did you do? You've got... He's got a little bandage on his face yeah. there. What, what have you done? I had a growth cut off. You had a growth cut off your face? <laughs> oh, sexy. <laughs> wow. It'll look better after. No, I, I like the little thing. It's very, very macho. You could make up a better story than that, I feel. <laughs> There's got to be a better story than I had a growth. <laughs> <laughs> I had a black eye a while back. I had a black eye because um, I was playing tennis. I got a tennis ball in the face, so I got a black eye. Obviously, that's a shit story. So what I said to people initially was, you should see the other bloke. <laughs> Fun for about half an hour. Then I hit upon this. People said, what happened to your eye? I go, you should see my wife. <laughs> You can visit her, she's in hospital. <laughs> See, it's all class, this, Camilla. Wife beating. Oh. <laughs> Good. Well, we'll check in with you from time to time, check you're happy. Good. I read that drinking your own urine is meant to be good for you. Bullshit. <laughs> I put my back out. Just a little tip for you, if you ever find yourself in front of 500 people you don't know that well, <laughs> miming drinking piss out your own cock, <laughs> make it a double-hander. <laughs> what do you do? I didn't ask. What do you do? Uh, I have a diving school in Indonesia. You have a diving school in Indonesia? <laughs> wow! <laughs> I mean, I've heard some tall stories that paedophiles tell. <laughs> You're a sexual tourist. You disgust me. <laughs> what kind of diving? <laughs> that sounds fucking great. Cool. Well done, you. I was going to go diving in Indonesia last year, but I, uh, I read this thing online that said you can, you can get a thing where... Fucking <laughs> rope on your face. Tiny little things irritate me in life. I don't know if you get this, but really quite trivial things annoy me. You know when you go into a fish and chip shop, let's say on a Friday, right, and the guy in an all too chirpy voice, it's the chirpiness that gets me, goes, as you walk in, he goes, chips will be five minutes. What? <laughs> what do you mean the chips are going to be five minutes? Did you not think I was going to order chips? <laughs> it's a chip shop. The clue's very much in the name. <laughs> this is the one scenario you really should have been prepared for. <laughs> 
next time you go into a Greg's or any high street bakery, go into any high street bakery at four o'clock in the afternoon and they will say, in the same voice, wherever you go in the country, they'll go, we've run out of rolls. <laughs> and then they'll explain it, they'll go, loads of people came in at lunch and had rolls. <laughs> now we've run out. <laughs> like there was nothing they could do. <laughs> Make some more, you fucking retard. <laughs> Jesus. I sometimes get it in Starbucks. Do you go into Starbucks? I love Starbucks. I love the posh coffee. You walk in there, though, at the end of the day, and they'll go, we've turned the coffee machine off. <laughs> we'll turn it back on, fuck knuckle. <laughs> I didn't come in for a chat. I want a fucking coffee. <laughs> I sometimes get it in department stores at the end of the day. You know, if you're in a big department store at the end of the day, you'll get from behind the counter quite a snooty voice. Excuse me, we're closed. <laughs> you find yourself thinking, well, how did I get in here? Am I a burglar? <laughs> I don't want to be a burglar. Do you go into McDonald's? You might go in there later on. You might need a poo. <laughs> Have you noticed how underneath McDonald's it still says restaurant? <laughs> Who's that for? <laughs> Who doesn't know what McDonald's do? And also, restaurant. Is it a restaurant? Really? <laughs> uh, you guys are a couple, right? How long have you been together? A year and a bit. Okay, so long-term relationship, a year and a bit, you've been together. How annoyed would you be, madam, on a scale between one and fucking very... <laughs> ..if next Valentine's he said to you, uh, Yeah, I booked a restaurant, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I spoke to the maitre d'. Yeah. <laughs> Ronald, I think his name was. <laughs> he was either the maitre d' or a five-star general, cos he had the whole bit, aren't he? <laughs> I've organised a table for two and he recommends the filet fish <laughs> You'd fucking kill him, wouldn't you? And who doesn't know what McDonald's do at this stage? You'd have to be living underground for 25 fucking years. <laughs> Was ist das? <laughs> Hamburger. <laughs> Schnitzel. Schnitzel for the Fritzer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got stopped outside of McDonald's. This guy said to me the other day, he said, this cheap food is only made possible by GM farming, cruelty to animals and the exploitation of workers in the third world. I said, all right, hold up. You had me a cheap food. <laughs> I'm going in, there's no need for the hard sell. <laughs> All that other stuff is just a bonus. <laughs> Do you get this? Do you get the super patronising warning from the waiter about the hot plate? Do you get that when you go out for a meal? Yeah. The, the, it arrives and the waiter goes, be careful, the plates are very hot. <laughs> you think, yeah, I'm a grown-up, I think I can operate a plate. <laughs> also, I can't help but notice, Mr Patronising Waiter, you just put it down with your hand. <laughs> but it's too hot for my little fingers. <laughs> I tell you what, Mr. Patronising Waiter, should we see if it's hot? Shall we? Ah! <laughs> That's really hot. <laughs> I don't want to be a dick, but you should have said. <laughs> In show business, they say never work with children or animals, and nowhere is that truer than porno. <laughs> <laughs> no one likes looking at sick and degrading pornography. More than me. <laughs> And, and one friend I have who has a diving school. <laughs> Any gay priests in? <laughs> no, I'm just, for those of you that don't know the collective noun for gay priests, priests. <laughs> it's an easy one to remember, isn't it? No, because gay priests were in the news, because if you're a gay priest, you can now marry another gay priest, and they weren't allowed to for ages, because it was going to be confusing during the ceremony, because would they say, do you take this man, or... Does he take you? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the mummy? <laughs> Seems a bit awkward. I'd like to meet a gay priest, though, because normally priests do that sort of nomine patre, filio fish thing, whatever that is. <laughs> I imagine a gay priest to be a little bit more... <laughs> <laughs> you know, a little bit more razzmatazz. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you look amazing. <laughs> Do 
Yeah, I'm gonna kneel down before you. <laughs> what? Come on. <laughs> Jesus was definitely a fag. <laughs> what, he hung out with 12 sailors? <laughs> Fishermen, whatever. <laughs> I'm going away, we're having a dinner, no girls. He had a six pack. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I've got a family pack. <laughs> nice. Um, the church wanted to move forward on female bishops, but bishops can only move diagonally. <laughs> Gay priests can move wherever they want because they are queens. <laughs> Altogether or not at all on the applause. <laughs> Otherwise, we've got to throw you a fucking fish. Thanks very much. I, I don't believe in God. I'm, I'm, I'm actually an atheist. Well, not even an atheist. Sorry, I don't believe in God seems a bit obvious now after the Jesus is a fag comment. <laughs> but I, I, I don't believe in God. I'm not even an atheist. I, I'm, I'm what you might call an anti-theist. I, I think religion is a bad idea. I think it's a tool used by the powers that be to control the weak-minded in our society. But you can't pull that on a form, so I just write Church of England. <laughs> I'm actually a lapsed Catholic. Any Catholics in? Oh, quite a few over there, yeah. I'm a lapsed Catholic. I knew my days were over in the Catholic Church when I found myself at communion thinking, I like the wine, I'm loving the wafer. <laughs> Any chance of a bit of cheese? <laughs> Don't get me wrong, though, I still respect the Pope. I like to think of the Pope as king of the pedos. <laughs> He's the best one. He's the ringleader. <laughs> He's Gary Glitter's boss. <laughs> Did you see the story about Gary Glitter? There was a GCSE music question about Gary Glitter. How bad's that? <laughs> How bad's that? A GCSE music question about a Gary Glitter song. Because if there's one artist you don't want associated with the phrase, shh, turn over, you've got an hour. I should probably leave Glitter alone. He just wants to settle down and have kids. <laughs> well, I thought we might have some questions from you, the audience, but I often get asked the same things by audiences around the country, so I've prepared some frequently asked questions to go through first. <laughs> hmm. I get asked after every gig by men of a certain age. They'll go to me, you've been on Top Gear, who's the stick? Do you want to know? Yeah. It's the girl from the Zavirax ads. <laughs> I often get asked favourite colour. It's such a weird question because colour is all about context. For example, bright red. Bright red is a great colour for a sports car. It's a terrible colour for an anus. <laughs> <laughs> we all like green grass and trees and leaves. But discharge? <laughs> Everyone likes blue skies. But pensioners? Don't give me the ooh. I've already toned that down. That was originally dead babies. <laughs> Someone asked me recently, any grooming tips? I said, yeah, don't do it. It's illegal. <laughs> sorry, I can't help but notice. You look quite young there. How old are you, sir? Do you mind me asking? You're what, sorry? 13. You're 13? And, and you're... The, did, you, did you understand that grooming joke? Just, I could explain it to you backstage after. <laughs> Most natural thing in the world. <laughs> are you, who are you here with? Your dad? You're fine with this filth, aren't you, sir? <coughs> uh, are you fine with this level of filth? <laughs> good, you couldn't give a fuck. Brilliant. <laughs> Well, the good news is you've got a cool dad. <laughs> the bad news is you're going to have to go into care. <laughs> because he's not very responsible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get asked, what did you study? I did philosophy in English. Well, I say I did philosophy in English. What I mean is I thought about reading a book. <laughs> hmm. um, what did you do before you did this? I was backstage masturbating and crying. <laughs> what would you be if you weren't a famous comedian? I'd be a comedian you hadn't heard of. <laughs> Who's your favourite comedian of all time, ever? Well, I would have to say... me. <laughs> I know it sounds a little bit arrogant, but think about it, it is exactly my sense of humour. <laughs> People come up to me all the time and say, I love your sarcasm. 
I say, do you really? <laughs> I often get asked this, fair enough, he's a funny boy and he's doing very well for himself. People often ask me, are you related to Alan Carr? Yes, he's my sister. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> There's me, Alan and Maxine. <laughs> Us two were livid <laughs> when we found out Alan was gay. <laughs> I often get asked about that. People often ask me, have you ever had any gay experiences? Well, yes, I have had gay experiences. I've been in a shoe shop and said, may I have to have them? <laughs> I've described a cheesecake as, to die for. <laughs> But I've never had the gay experience where someone puts their cock in my mouth and or bum. <laughs> and really, that is the one that counts. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't count if you do it to them, does it? <laughs> is it? I thought it wasn't gay if you didn't push back. <laughs> it's definitely not gay if you beat them up afterwards. <laughs> I often get asked this, what celebrity would you most like to sleep with? Angelina Jolie. I'd love to have a go on that. <laughs> She's an attractive woman, isn't she? I had a dream about her a couple of weeks ago. I'm not saying it was sexy. I had to get the sheets off with a toffee hammer. <laughs> That's a weird joke, isn't it? Because at once your mind has to go, uh, and, oh, toffee hammers. <laughs> I realise I haven't got much of a chance with Angelina Jolie. She's with Brad Pitt. I've got a face like a potato. <laughs> My only chance with her is if I black up and check myself into a Mozambique orphanage. <laughs> but that could backfire. You could end up fucking Madonna. <laughs> People often ask me favourite joke. And it's not a bad question, because I spend my life writing books about jokes and thinking about jokes. I'm quite obsessed by jokes, so it's a fair question. I like sort of pub jokes that can drop a nice image in your head. I like, uh, why do women watch porn to the end? To see if they get married. <laughs> it's adorable, isn't it? I like this joke, because it's very northern, very Yorkshire joke. Any Yorkshire people in? Yeah. Oh, well, I'll tell it in a Yorkshire accent to patronise you. We didn't have paedophiles when I were a lad. We had to buy our own sweets. <laughs> How Yorkshire is that? <laughs> I got told this one, just a pub joke. I got told it a couple of months ago just by a friend, and it just really tickled me. He said, what's the difference between jam and marmalade? I said, I don't know the difference between jam and marmalade. You'll have to tell me. He said, you can't marmalade your cock up a bird's arse. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. I know, it's a bit much, I know. But there's a good reason for me telling you that joke. Don't you find it awkward when the in-laws come to stay at your house? Do you find that weird? When her mum and dad come and stay at your house? I find it a really weird... I feel like a child in my own home. Breakfast is the worst time for me, cos I'm not really a morning person anyway. All you can hear is the crunch of toast, slurping of tea, there's no conversation, it's just awkward. Yeah, everyone's in gym jams and robes, just weird. What I've given you there? A lovely little icebreaker. Because when her dad says, could you pass the jam? <laughs> Here's one for you. <laughs> no, don't cry, because you can jam you. <laughs> Has anyone got any questions this evening? Anything you'd like to know? Jimmy, yes. If, you were a comedian, so if, you, if I wasn't a comedian, yeah, if, you couldn't be a comedian, if I couldn't be a comedian, many people would say I can't be. <laughs> There is a school of thought that says, what the fuck is he doing? But, go on, if I couldn't be a comedian... What would you do for a living? What would you like to do? I, I, the same as you, I would dress up as Amelie. <laughs> and wander the streets looking for adventure. <laughs> it's a good look, I'm, lo I'm loving that. But what do you do? I'm a student. You're a student? Where are you, stu are you studying in London? Canterbury. Canterbury? Yes. Oh, never mind. Maybe if you'd worked a little bit harder for your A-levels. <laughs> Canterbury University, you say Canterbury, but what I hear is clearing. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no shame in that, that's fine. Any other thoughts? Oh, go on, you've got one. What's the best thing that's ever happened to you? What's the best thing? The time we fucked. <laughs> uh, 
I know you don't remember, but that is the wonder of Rohypnol. <laughs> Trust me, it was magical. <laughs> well, you are good. <laughs> no, 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 you're now saying you're good at fucking, that's great. I'll put that on my DVD and your mum and dad can watch. <laughs> the man next to you, incidentally, is, is sort of going... Uh... <laughs> She's got a point. She's fucking marvellous. <laughs> Excellent. Nice to get a good review. Um, <laughs> any other thoughts, questions? <laughs> he said, if you were a soup, what flavoured soup would you be? <laughs> Is that who I think it is? Is that, is that the BFG? <laughs> what kind of a soup would you be? <laughs> I would be a lovely, delicious wonton soup. <laughs> I, I don't know what kind of a soup... What kind of a soup would you be? Is there a leading...? <laughs> I'd be tomato and bass. <laughs> You've got the loveliest voice in the world. <laughs> what, sorry? Get you a date. Get you a date? Not a problem. Do you like 13-year-old boys? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> We're all having a laugh. You're going, is that going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> You're fine. You're golden. And what, what's your name, sir? I'm Steve. Stephen. Steve. Steve. <laughs> what, what do you do, Steve? I'm a dentist. I'm a dentist. <laughs> and I like soup. <laughs> You're never going to chip a tooth on soup. <laughs> Said the BFG. <laughs> You're wasted. You should be doing voiceovers. It's lovely. I've got a date with you. There is a... There is a large ditted slag that will fuck you. <laughs> That's fair, is it? That's OK. It's not as lovely, though, isn't it? She's pretty hot. She's, she's all right. I don't know if you can see her. Can you see her there, Steve? She's all right. Could she stand up? <laughs> I don't think she could, because you'll topple forward. <laughs> Would you like to have a go on that? <laughs> <laughs> she said, woo, really, really quietly, but it picked up an echo from her normal. <laughs> it's going to be like throwing a sausage up an alleyway, but... <laughs> Only kidding. What's your name, madam? Tracy. Tracy. <laughs> of course it fucking is. <laughs> of course it is. Of course. <laughs> Sorry, let's. I've, I've got to stop being silly black for a minute. But you two can meet in the lobby. You've got the same sense of humour, and she's, you know. Mm. And she's easy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she is easy. <laughs> <laughs> when I was younger, I couldn't talk to women because I was hiding in their wardrobes, masturbating. <laughs> Would have totally given it away. You didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> oh, I've written a rom-com. I wanted to tell you about this. I've written a romantic comedy. It's about a guy and a girl. Classic. Yeah? Initially, they hate each other. Classic. But they end up in bed together. Classic. It's called The Rapist. <laughs> If you get arrested for making obscene phone calls and you get taken down to the station and you've got one phone call... <laughs> it's got to be a temptation, isn't it? <laughs> Excuse me, officer, I'm just going to finish myself off. <laughs> you can say PC's gone mad and no-one minds. People quite like it if you say PC's gone mad. Political correctness has gone mad. They like that. But if you say PC's gone fucking spastic like a mong rapist... <laughs> people get quite chippy. Sorry, I should clarify, when I say fucking spastic like a mong rapist, I mean a rapist that rapes mongs, not a mong that rapes. <laughs> I don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> Although, thinking about it, getting raped by a mong, not as bad. <laughs> At least you get a cuddle afterwards. <laughs> Although, good luck in the police lineup. <laughs> uh... They all look a bit samey. Swings and roundabouts. 
are what they like. <laughs> while we're on the subject of Down syndrome, and that's not a line you hear enough. <laughs> but while we're on the subject of Down syndrome, don't they have enough to worry about without the haircut? <laughs> what sadistic barber is thinking this fella's not getting bullied enough? <laughs> what about a bowl cut? <laughs> Last July, I was in Regent's Park, just hanging out with a couple of friends on a beautiful summer's day. I saw a Muslim woman in full kit... <laughs> or it's not called kit. <laughs> hijab, burqa, yashmak, the full thing, yeah? Rollerblading. <laughs> it looked amazing. Cos it was such a hot day, it looked like someone's shadow had got up and <laughs> fucked up. No, obviously, that's a joke about religious dress, not a joke about ethnicity or race, because I say Muslim woman, but I don't know for sure. <laughs> you can't really tell with that sort of outfit, can you? <laughs> Could have been a Catholic fella for under there, for all I know. <laughs> or a ninja. <laughs> there used to be a problem with racism in this country. When my family moved here from, from Limerick, when my family moved here from Limerick in the 1970s, it was still commonplace, yeah, to have signs in hotels and B&Bs in the window saying, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. I thought this country had changed and changed for the better. I'm not so sure. I was in a shop the other day, they had a sign-up saying, Checks not accepted. <laughs> it's a disgrace. I saw a thing on Sky News, the bloke went, Should Eastern European immigration be stopped? Let's see what the polls have to say. <laughs> it's a very poor choice of words. Some people eat roadkill. Have you heard about this? They take stuff that's been mowed down on the streets, they scrape it up, they clean it, they cook it, they eat it. Fine, but what you've got to accept is some of these kids have got families. <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple of speeding tickets last year. I've got to be super careful now. I've got six points on my licence, so I've got this special device. Some of you have probably got it too. It sits on the dashboard, tells you if there's a speed camera in the street, makes a beeping noise. It goes beep, 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 to warn you there's a speed camera. Also makes a noise if there's a child in the road. It goes ba-dum, ba-dum. <laughs> Last week, I ran over a kid carrying a symbol. <laughs> but um, shh. Come on. <laughs> What's not to like it? It's a joke about killing a child in a music hall style. <laughs> <laughs> Premature ejaculation <laughs> is a problem for many men. Well, I say it's a problem for men. Mainly, it's a problem for women. <laughs> what do we care? We're asleep. <laughs> you can now get practically invisible spray-on condoms, which have been designed specifically for gullible women. <laughs> you can get condoms that are ribbed for her pleasure. So what I do, turn them inside out, please myself. Oh, you're probably wondering why I've asked you here this evening. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about relationships and sex and love, and I wanted to give you some advice, yeah? Because it is nice to talk about that sort of thing, and everyone can relate to it, because you're either in a happy relationship, yeah? Or you want to get into a happy relationship, yeah? Or, or, or maybe you're comfort eating and living with too many cats. <laughs> or happily single, as you call it. <laughs> So I was going to give you some advice about relationships and, you know, that sort of thing. I thought we might talk to the single men first. Who are the single men? Give us a shout. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Said the single men. Yeah, that's probably why you're single. <laughs> OK. If you're on a date with a woman, do tell her you've got feelings for her. Don't tell her it's an erection. <laughs> do walk her home. Don't follow her home. <laughs> do surprise her. Don't wear a balaclava. <laughs> do offer to pay for dinner. Don't offer to pay for anything else. <laughs> Unless it's Tracy, in which case a bag of chips will get you laid. <laughs> hey, Tracy. <laughs> it's a good indicator that a woman fancies you if when you're talking to her, she touches her hair. If it's her pubic hair, it's a cert. <laughs> Women like the strong, silent type. That's because when we're quiet, they think we're listening. <laughs> what are you like, ladies? 
can be a bit depressing being a single man, can be, can be a bit of a bore like. I've got an inspirational story, this will cheer you up. Concerns my friend Emily. She's beautiful, she's intelligent, and she's funny. She's a triple threat. She's on a date with a guy about two months ago, they're having dinner across from each other. Main course arrives, lasagna as it happens, okay? He leans across to her plate, takes a massive bit of her lasagna, boom, eats it. Without saying anything. Does it again like 30 seconds later, another massive bit, boom, eats it. Off her plate. Does it for the third time, boom. All she said was, what are you doing? He came back with this, he said, I'm paying for it, aren't I? <laughs> I know. <laughs> the reason I think that's an inspirational story, she still fucked him. <laughs> I can't believe he's lucky, got laid and had half a lasagna. <laughs> Is anyone actually on a date this evening? I can see a few people I think might be on dates, but I, I don't want to kind of embarrass you because Dates are anxious enough anyway. They're fraught with anxiety, aren't they, being on a date? Because you don't know when you're going to move in for the kiss. You don't know how it's going to end up later on. They're just, they're weird and awkward. So I'd like to break the ice for you. If I'm, I'll break the ice for you. Yeah. Why not suggest fucking in the disabled toilets? <laughs> That's what they're for. That's why they've got that handrail for more exotic positioning. <laughs> Don't give me that look. In my defence, when I was in there, I was fucking a cripple. <laughs> and I'm 90% sure it was consensual. <laughs> How was it? How was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that is Parkinson's for you. I think clapping a Parkinson's joke is <laughs> in poor taste, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> People do seem obsessed by where others are having sex. The Mile High Club is a good example. Any members of the Mile High Club in? Yeah. 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 Doesn't count if you're on your own. <laughs> you know that, right? No, the Mile High Club, making love in a plane. Yeah. Sounds exotic and glamorous, doesn't it? But what you're really saying is we fucked in a chemical toilet. <laughs> Obviously, there's a budget version for you. Top deck of a bus, fingering. <laughs> Are you paying attention? That's all in the wrist. Don't go in with that hand, you're a fool to yourself. You put your shoulder out, keep that hand free for ticketing. <laughs> this is fun and we're learning things. Men and women are different. Now, I know we all know that in our heads, but the more you can accept that in your hearts, I think the better, the easier life is, right? Yeah. Hmm. Some examples. Women like to relax in a hot bath with candles and oils. Men, generally, prefer to masturbate in the shower. <laughs> yeah, we know what you're up to in there, ladies. Why does this loofah smell funny? <laughs> <laughs> Some advice for the ladies. I had a woman come up to me after the show a couple of weeks ago. She said, I think you're very sexist. I said, I think you find it's pronounced sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Run along, grown-ups talking. Ladies, if a man says he likes foreign films, porn. <laughs> if a man says he enjoys long walks in the countryside, it might mean he's a romantic soul. It's more likely he's saying, they'll never find your body. <laughs> when women put out on a first date, men don't like that. We love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've, you know, I, I read a thing. It said that 98% of men are happy to have sex on a first date. I thought, well, happy? We're high-fiving strangers on a night bus. <laughs> hey, hey! Ho, ho! <laughs> Good. <clears throat> of course, a lot of women don't want to have sex on a first date, even if they want to have sex on a first date, because they think if they have sex on a first date, it makes them a slag or a slut or something. Well, not anymore, ladies. You're going to have to do more than that to be a slag these days. Am I right, Tracy? <laughs> I'm just saying that like, having sex on a first date just means you wanted to have sex on a first date. That's all it means. To be a slag these days, you're going to have to do so much more. I've got friends that are slags. My friend Louise is a slag. She's got five kids by seven different dads. <laughs> She's got a speech impediment that prevents her from saying no. Well, I say it's a speech impediment. It's actually a cock in her mouth. <laughs> She's such a slag, the council trims her bush. <laughs> I've got, I've got a question. I've got a question for the men. Have you ever seen a woman so unattractive to you, it makes you question your sexuality? <laughs> I'll explain. Because for me, it would be like Gillian McKeith. You know the woman from How Clean Is Your Poo? <laughs> Weird-looking creature. 
So if you put Julian McGee there and Brad Pitt there, and you said to me, your life depends on it, you've got to do it with one of them. You've got to make the beast with two backs. Do the sticky belly. <laughs> what? I would think, right, I'm a heterosexual man, Gillian is a woman, Gillian is. Oh. <laughs> ah. Jesus. <laughs> Give it here. <laughs> is that bad? Does that make me half rice, half chips? You were right. Well, what, okay, let me give you a moral dilemma. What's your name? I didn't get your name, Annie. Marcus. Marcus. Okay. Moral dilemma for you. All right. Anne Widdicombe, George Clooney, if you had to. You'd go for Anne Widdicombe? Are you mental? <laughs> she's got a face like a bulldog licking the piss off a nettle. <laughs> and she's a hell of a size. You're a slip of a lad. She'd fuck you in half. <laughs> That is only where your problems begin, because I imagine her peachy pouch, her Lala, her Fufu, her Wendy, <laughs> her special lady garden, call it what you will, I bet it looks like a badger that's been hit with a shotgun. <laughs> I bet there are police divers that would be squeamish about going down on that. <laughs> I bet it looks like a bulldog eating mayonnaise. <laughs> I bet George Clooney's got the prettiest cock you've ever seen. <laughs> Why don't you just spit-roast Why don't you just spit-roast her? You're suggesting I double-team <laughs> Anne Widdicombe with George Clooney. <laughs> now, that is a celebrity sex tape that would sell. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said that the other day, Marcus. Someone was as macho as you the other day. They went to... Uh, well, yeah, Anne Widdicombe, just put a bag over it. Really? <laughs> Has that ever happened, ladies? <laughs> How low would your self-esteem have to be <laughs> that you would fuck a guy who's just gone, can I just...? <laughs> That's better. <laughs> chat-up line, let's do some chat-up lines, OK? Obviously, the best chat-up line is, will you hold my pint while I go for a shit? everyone and he's brilliant chat up line if you were a soup <laughs> what flavor of soup would you be <laughs> I, I well I think that's right up there with does this rack smell of chloroform to you <laughs> and the evergreen let's not turn this rape into a murder <laughs> The problem with chat-up lines is you know whether they're going to work pretty much immediately. You know straight away whether the girl's thinking you're a dick or buy us a drink, OK? So I've written some abort mission lines for you, so you could be sort of halfway through a chat-up scenario and you can abort the mission if you think it's going badly, right? So it would work like this. You would say, do you want to dance? She'd have a face like thunder. You'd go, can I have your seat? <laughs> yeah. Did you hurt yourself when you fell from heaven? Because it looks like you landed on your face. <laughs> I've never seen a more beautiful woman in my life. So can you move? <laughs> Here's ten pence, ring your mum. Tell her be round in half an hour to fuck her. <laughs> Get your coat you've pulled. Hang on, wait, you probably don't own a coat. Girls your size tend not to feel the cold. <laughs> and my personal favourite, save this for someone special. Your father must have been a thief. Cos you look like a pikey. <laughs> Let's talk about gifts, because gifts are very important when you're in a relationship. They show your partner how you feel about them. This is interesting. My girlfriend suggested last Christmas that we limit ourselves to £20 for each other's presents. But I wasn't thinking about spending that kind of money. <laughs> Obviously, if you're buying gifts for a woman, it's pretty easy. You just go for the classics. You know, champagne, chocolates, flowers. Unless you're dating an alcoholic bulimic with hay fever. <laughs> I buy my girlfriend flowers every week, because I really fancy the girl in the florist. <laughs> I've told the girl in the florist, my girlfriend's dead. <laughs> I thought it was a good idea at the time. It slightly backfired. You try explaining to your other half why you got her a wreath four weeks in a row. 
Obviously, different flowers express different emotions. So, for example, red flowers say passion. Yellow flowers say love. And self-raising flower says, make me a cake. <laughs> My girlfriend said recently, she said, we need some romance in our lives. So I took the hint, I booked a hotel, flowers, chocolate, champagne, petals on the bed, the full bit, ended up having incredible sex. Of course, it turned out she wanted me to take her. <laughs> What's the fucking point of that? I live with her. <laughs> She'll be there when I get back. <laughs> Put the kettle on, love and fucking knackered. <laughs> I'm not saying I feel cheated, but when we got together, she said to me, she said, I'm very liberal about sex. I don't care what people do, as long as they're consenting adults and no one gets hurt. There's always a catch, isn't there? <laughs> no one gets hurt. Consenting. <laughs> adults. <laughs> Basically, no fun. <laughs> right, some sex tips. Let's try and be grown up about this, yeah? Gentlemen, if you're having sex with a new partner for the first time, never take a run-up. <laughs> I know what you like, you want to make a good first impression, but you don't want to actually leave a dent. <laughs> a lot of women don't like it if you leave your socks on during sex, but I always leave one on because I don't want to get her pregnant. <laughs> hmm. Some women don't like to have the lights on, but it can't be helped in my case because they come on automatically when I open the car door. <laughs> and then they stay on for 20 seconds, so it is over. <laughs> This isn't advice, this is more of a reminder, and it's a reminder to men in long-term relationships, because standards can slide as a relationship goes on. Just a reminder for the men in long-term relationships, it is never acceptable, never acceptable, yeah, to answer the phone when lovemaking. Even if you hilariously pick up by saying, I can't talk now, I'm going into a tunnel. <laughs> Some common myths you may have heard, these are just myths, they're not true. The best lubricant for anal sex is not tears. <laughs> it's blood. <laughs> I bought some KY jelly. It said on the box not to be taken internally. I thought, why do they think it's fucking going? <laughs> <laughs> if you are going to have sex, I can't stress this enough, if you're going to have sex with someone that you don't know, Always, always, always ask. <laughs> Very important. Let's talk about sexual health, shall we? Uh, STDs, STIs and the like, because there's a big difference, my young friend, between giving a girl goosebumps and giving her a rash. <laughs> what? Have you all seen the advert where the girl's got AIDS written on a bra and chlamydia written on her knickers? Well, that is no way to tell your partner. <laughs> It turns out. <laughs> Chlamydia, though, that's the one you want to get. That's the gold standard of STIs. It's the best one. I was chatting to a friend who's a proper doctor. He said, Chlamydia is rife, and the worst thing is, there are no symptoms. I said, how is it even a disease? He said, it can make a woman infertile. I said... <laughs> I'll throw away these condoms then, shall I? <laughs> the only way Chlamydia could get any better is if the discharge was a pizza. The women are thinking, that is disgusting. <laughs> and the men are thinking, that would be brilliant. <laughs> can I just make the point, there's a lot of young ladies in today, can I just make the point, it is totally socially acceptable for young women to carry condoms in their purse or in their bag, of course it is. But a young man carrying a coil is weird. <laughs> Do you know how the coil contraceptive device works? No, I, well, I'll explain. Think of me as a kindly uncle. <laughs> the way the coil contraceptive device works is that the lady says to the man, I've got a piece of coiled metal somewhere in my vajayjay, <laughs> and the man goes off the idea. <laughs> You've got a bit of metal where? <laughs> Any chance of a gob job? <laughs> Let's talk about breakups, because breakups can be hard, can't they? It's not you, it's me is a terrible way to break up with someone, but not as bad as it's not you, it's her. <laughs> Women give us the silent treatment, because they think it's a punishment. <laughs> We've got a special name for the silent treatment, we call it peace and quiet. 
I don't want to sound misogynistic, but I think breakups are easier for women than they are for men. Because I think women have got a support network of friends and family that they really talk to about their actual emotions. What have men got in a breakup to fall back on? All we've got is our mates. You try telling your mates a girl has broken your heart. And your mates will likely as not go, well, it's just as well, because you're clearly a puff. <laughs> I had it happen recently with my friend Russell. He broke up with his wife. They'd been married for four years, together for six. And she's left him for another guy. What do you say? I don't have the vocabulary to have that kind of emotional conversation. I ended up falling back on the old cliches. I said, there's plenty more fish in the sea. He said, yeah, but it's not just the smell I miss. <laughs> Well, on that cerebral and edifying note, has anyone got any questions or queries about sex or relationships? Anything you need to know? What's your favourite position? I like reverse cowgirl, but, you know, <laughs> I'm old-fashioned that way. <laughs> uh, what, what's yours, sir? Various. 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 <laughs> I think I can... It's a match. I think it is. Yeah, I imagine well, it's either that... <laughs> ..or that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe better that, who knows? Yeah, treat yourself, why not? <laughs> what wouldn't you do that your missus would ask you to do? What wouldn't I do that my missus would ask me to do? Stop. <laughs> I was parked earlier on a single yellow line and I was worried about the traffic warden coming when I wasn't there, so I left a little note on the windscreen for the traffic warden. Do you do that? I always leave a note. Saying, oi, Trevor Warden cunt, I fucked your mum. <laughs> Apparently, the rear passenger side of the car is the safest place to be in an accident. Yeah. Although I think if you're back there, it might explain why you crashed. <laughs> if it's an offence to impersonate a policeman, why have we got community support officers? <laughs> My girlfriend's got one of those tiny little strips of hair. What are they called? Moustache. Moustache. <laughs> Landing strip? She's only 12. <laughs> I'm joking. She's got a landing strip. <laughs> She's a very hairy little girl. Uh, <laughs> I've slightly upset myself with that. <laughs> She's a vegetarian. Any other vegetarians in? A few vegetarians around? She's, uh, Caroline's vegetarian. She thinks it's disgusting that I eat veal. But she eats baby carrots. <laughs> <laughs> They're babies. <laughs> of course, some women can eat whatever they want, they don't want anyway. And they're called bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't mind the fuller figure, I quite like the larger lady. I went out with a girl once who was quite a lot larger. Yeah. When she sat around the house, she sat around the house. <laughs> if you had a pillow fight, you had to use a duvet. <laughs> I undressed her with my eyes. It took me 45 minutes. <laughs> I tried to spoon with her. It's more like a ladle. <laughs> I've got a photo of her somewhere, taken by Google Earth. <laughs> my girlfriend and I are trying for a baby. We got pretty close outside Asda last Saturday. <laughs> I was in Los Angeles last year doing a bit of work and I got stopped at the airport. They said, purpose of visit? I said, I'm here to shoot a pilot. <laughs> That's three hours of my life I'm not getting back. <laughs> I was told when I was 12 years of age by my Catholic priest, he said to me, God is watching you when you masturbate. I said, is he a pedo too far? <laughs> I'm joking, I said, is he a pedo too far? <laughs> Now, that joke may be offensive to Catholics, but it's not the only reason I like it. <laughs> the thing about child line... I haven't said anything yet. <laughs> the thing about child line is now we have a generation of children that can't keep a secret. <laughs> I know that doesn't sound very charitable, but let me leave you with this. Ten pence from the sale of every one of my DVDs goes to the poor, underprivileged children of Cambodia. Who manufacture them? <laughs> Listen, I'll be Jimmy Carr. Thank you very much indeed for coming out. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.
I'd like to uh, like to take this opportunity to dedicate the gig this evening to Tupac. <laughs> I miss him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd like to dedicate the gig to uh, Caroline, my girlfriend, a more beautiful, hard-working, dedicated woman could not be found. <laughs> Despite exhaustive and ongoing research on my part. <laughs> I got a lovely note before the gig this evening from someone's dad. He's here with his daughter. She's 16 today, I believe, and she's here with some friends celebrating her birthday. I don't know where you're sitting. Your dad was wondering if you could get an autograph after the show. I'll do better than that. Bring her backstage. I'll finger her. I'm joking. <laughs> I'll fuck her. <laughs> I often get asked after the show, the most common question after a show is, what's the most offensive joke? What's the worst joke? Now, I don't think I can tell you the most offensive joke. Because I think offence is taken, not given. That's not just an expression. That is how it tends to work. Different people take offence at different things. So I can't tell you what the most offensive joke is. But we could see. <laughs> we could start gentle and work our way up and see at what stage, as an audience, you go, ha, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Do you want to give it a go? Yeah. OK, well, let's start gently. Baby steps. All right, we'll start gentle. Very sad when Princess Diana died. And all London got was that shitty fountain. <laughs> Still better than Paris, all they got was a slow down sign. <laughs> no one that offended. But you should have heard the fuss when I suggested it on the Royal Variety. <laughs> Do you remember where you were when you heard Diana died? Yeah? yeah. I was in Kensington Gardens thinking this place needs something. <laughs> the Twin Towers <laughs> was the best of the Lord of the Rings films. <laughs> no, the Twin Towers. Do you think it would have seemed less tragic if they hadn't been twins? <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I feel more sorry for the people in the second tower than the people in the first tower. Do you? Because the people in the second tower, imagine that. Imagine you get into work one morning, the building next to yours, identical to yours, gets hit by a fucking plane. What's your first thought going to be? We dodged a bullet. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> Five minutes later, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> OK, you all seem fine so far. Let's go up a gear in terms of offence. Change tax a little bit. People say dolphins are really intelligent. I think, yeah, but only compared to the retarded kids we got them swimming with. <laughs> when a dog is on heat, it means it wants sex. That is my defence. <laughs> it's a good area for offence, that, isn't it? The weird sexual things that other people do that you've heard about, you'd never dream of doing, but you've heard about. Felching is a good example. <laughs> it's even a horrible word, felching. For those of you that don't know, felching is the retrieval of sperm from the anal canal via suction. <laughs> I know. How mental's that? <laughs> it's like fucking someone in the arse and then going, I take that back. <laughs> no one offended by felching. OK, let's go up another gear. <laughs> I've got a friend that recently had an abortion. But on the positive side, Slimmer of the month. <laughs> she got a badge and a round of applause. She can't believe her luck. <laughs> On the subject of abortions, a lot of people support a woman's right to choose. But I think, if I'm paying for it... <laughs> I'm joking, I never pay. <laughs> Doesn't cost anything to fall down the stairs, does it? <laughs> Some of these girls, I swear, they think I'm made of coat hangers. <laughs> Got a few, yeah. <laughs> uh, just a few, a few of the hardcore. Not offended by anything so far. Let's see if we can pick you off. <laughs> I discovered the hard way. The worst way to start a benefit gig for abused children is with an apology. <laughs> I said I was sorry. I don't see what the fuss was about. <laughs> if men fall asleep directly after sex, why is it so difficult to catch a rapist? <laughs> No one offended. Right, let's bring out the big guns. <laughs> Hitler and Pol Pot. Unquestionably two of history's biggest cunts. 
but let's try and see the good in the bad. And both Hitler and Pol Pot managed to conduct an awful lot of medical research without hurting any animals. <laughs> I put it to you, if you're not even a little bit offended, you haven't really understood that. <laughs> this next joke is just a simple piece of wordplay. It's a little turn on a very common phrase, yeah? Just a little bit of wordplay. The joke isn't about what the joke's about, if you follow me. It's about the wordplay. Yeah, you know it's going to be offensive <laughs> if it comes with a little warning before that. <laughs> they say there's safety in numbers, yeah? Tell that to six million Jews. <laughs> Really, London? Really? A round of applause? Because, <laughs> to my mind, that should be the most offensive joke, not just in the show, but in the world ever. Because, <laughs> content-wise, that's a joke about the worst thing that's ever happened. The Holocaust. Six million lives taken by an industrialised killing machine, the Nazis. That's the worst thing in human history, and that's a joke about that. But it's not that offensive a joke. It's not anti-Semitic, it's not racist, it doesn't hate anyone. I mean, it's in bad taste. I'll give you that. Because <laughs> it's, it's taking lightly something very serious, and that's like the definition of bad taste. I put my hand up to bad taste. Obviously, I put my hand up like that, not like that. <laughs> that's only going to make things worse. <laughs> Never high-five a rabbi. <laughs> now, the most offensive joke in the world, if you judge it by offence caused, yeah, the, the, the kind of consequence of the joke, rather than the content of the joke, it's actually a cartoon done four years ago. Yeah? Caused more offence than any other joke in human history. It was a Mohammed with a bomb as a hat, done by a Danish man. There was protesting all over the Islamic world. They don't like iconography at the best of times. They certainly don't like people taking the piss. <laughs> so there was protesting all over the Islamic world. Some of those protests turned into riots. Three Danish embassies burnt to the ground and ten people lost their lives in rioting. All because of a joke about somebody's imaginary friend. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I think some of the Islamic world slightly overreacted. I think the Iranian government slightly overreacted. They decided to boycott all Danish products. Now, I'm not sure they were doing a roaring trade in pornography, beer and bacon before. <laughs> so that is, for what it's worth, the most offensive joke in the world ever. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to the show tonight. Thank you so much for buying the DVD if you're watching this at home. <laughs> Just a quick thing before I go. The worst thing about being told you've got Alzheimer's <laughs> is it doesn't just happen the once. <laughs> and so be Jimmy Carr, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for coming to the show.
Good. Well, you seem more excited than me, and I've seen the fucking show. Good manners are disappearing. When I was a lad, it was considered polite to tap a lady on the head before ejaculating. I know. You know why kids wear their trousers slung low with no belt? It's because they're dicks. <laughs> True story. I attempted suicide once, came pretty close, killed the guy standing next to me. <laughs> it's all right, it was a goth, it's what he would have wanted. <laughs> Whenever my girlfriend says, fucking men, I always think, yeah, that is the alternative. <laughs> oh, what, sorry? Tosser. Right. <laughs> just around, just tosser. <laughs> yeah, you know you're in fucking Glasgow, don't you, where <laughs> someone pays you 2250 to tell you to fuck off. <laughs> Fair enough, fill your boots. Um, <laughs> on average, in the Northern Hemisphere, January is the coldest month of the year. But if you were in Australia, you'd be surrounded by cunts. <laughs> Any Australians in? Yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> i tell you why there's no women's boxing. The way in. The fight would happen then and there. <laughs> per square inch of head, people with red hair have 750 fewer friends than normal people. <laughs> a lot, isn't it? Are there any redheads in? <laughs> uh. <laughs> I think I'm all right if I look away. My partner recently lost 11 stone. Well, I say that, I left her. <laughs> Fat cow. <laughs> what? A lot of people like to smoke cigarettes after sex, but you can't buy cigarettes until you're 16, so I have to get them for both of us. <laughs> you think it's wrong I'm buying a 15-year-old girl cigarettes? You think it's wrong I'm fucking her? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding does sound like a verb for child abuse, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm kidding. Are you joking or touching kids? <laughs> Women say they want their ideal man to be the outdoors type, the kind of man that enjoys long walks in the countryside. And Women say they want their ideal man to be the kind of man that'll take control, the kind of man that's not afraid to take a few risks. Basically, what you're saying, ladies, is your ideal man is a rapist. <laughs> and it's true, if you're a rapist, you've got pretty much your pick of women. <laughs> it's funny, cos it's true. <laughs> well, I thought I'd kick off with some jokes, Glasgow, not fuck about too much. I'll pause for breath and say hello. How are you this evening, Glasgow? Are you well? <laughs> like an angry mob. Bloody, well, I thought we'd kick off properly. We're in a beautiful room, the Armadillo in Glasgow. Bloody marvellous. I thought we'd, we'd start things properly, yeah? Because everyone's dressed up. It's a Saturday night. Let's start things properly. Let's have a round of applause for the ladies. Let's have a round of applause. Yeah, let's have a round of applause for the ladies. Yeah, yeah, quite right, yeah. That's, actually, that's, that's probably enough. Looking around, some of them have made no effort. <laughs> You've not made an effort, have you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless him. Mongo, no lie. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> and so your comment there is, I haven't made much of an effort. Well, there's some cameras and some fucking lights. I don't know what you had in mind. <laughs> it's not like I come to your work and knock the sailor's cocks out your mouth, is it? <laughs> Seems like a very weird thing from a quite a tough-looking man from Glasgow to say. Oh, you've not made much of an effort. <laughs> I thought you'd be dressed up prettier. <laughs> it's 
It's a little bit prison rape coming from you, sir. <laughs> That's what it feels like. My point, there's an incredible amount of pressure on women these days to be beautiful and thin, and all I can say is, we've got some very brave girls in here this evening, really. <laughs> Terrific stuff. <sighs> no, there are some stunning-looking women in here this evening, and some right dogs. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> I'm joking. No-one in here is stunning. It's all right to make those kind of jokes in comedy because no one really minds. Because, like, occasionally someone will go, oh, yeah, comedy, it's the new rock and roll. It fucking isn't. I'll tell you how you can tell comedy isn't rock and roll. There's no comedy groupies. <laughs> There's groupies in rock and roll. There's no groupies in comedy. What girl is so into comedy she's going to come backstage and suck me off? <laughs> oh. That might be a premature end to the show. <laughs> Have her washed and brought to my room. I'm joking, don't wash her. <laughs> Seriously, like, what, girl, what girl's so into stand up she's going to come backstage and suck me off just so she can go? That tastes funny. <laughs> it's a very fun job. This is all I do for a living, Glasgow. I travel around the country, I find large groups of people with sort of the same sense of humour as me, and then I tell them jokes for the evening. It's a lovely thing to do. It means I get to go everywhere. Any, uh, any Irish people in? Oh, a few. Not that many. It sounds like, sounds like the roads in Glasgow are very nearly finished. <laughs> <laughs> I, was in, I was in Dublin recently doing a show, and I was there with a friend hanging out in Dublin for the day, what could be finer, and he dared me to say this at the end of the show. So right at the end of the show, I went, Dublin, I don't know much about Irish politics. That was pretty much their reaction. A <laughs> couple of thousand people going, I bet you fucking don't, no. <laughs> I said, I don't know much about it, but he dared me to do it, so I had to say it. I said, I don't know much about Irish politics, I just think we should have one island united. <laughs> they were on their feet in Dublin, this guy is all right. And then I added, one island united, under British rule. <laughs> they went fucking spastic. <laughs> Any Welsh people in? Any Welsh? Just one, we seem to have contained the problem. <laughs> I'm loving the Welsh. I really like Every time I go to Wales, I have a lovely time. The people are very friendly. But I get annoyed every time I go to Wales, not by the people, but by the signs. All the signs in Wales. Have you been there? All the signs. Road signs, tourist information, shop signs. Every fucking sign has to be in English, man, Welsh. Everything. English, man, Welsh. Huh? It's ridiculous, because it costs a fortune to do, and only 5% of the population of Wales can read. <laughs> Well, I like to think of myself as an equal opportunities offender. We've done the Irish, we've done the Welsh. Any Scottish people in? <laughs> Imagine my surprise. <laughs> Here's a question for you, my Scottish friends. If you were a homeless, alcoholic Scot and you had Tourette's, how would they ever know? I tell you what, it's rough in England. I was there recently and I didn't realise it was meant to be rough, but Nottingham, I didn't realise this, Nottingham is the gun capital of Great Britain. I tell you what Nottingham needs? A sheriff. <laughs> it's quite a silly joke. <laughs> Are there any Scousers in? Yeah. Oh, there's a few there. All right. Hi, the Scousers. You well? No. <laughs> what, what do you do for a living? Oh, sorry, I forgot you were a scouser there for a second. I apologise, I didn't mean to. <laughs> That's awkward. I'm not having a go at Liverpool. I'm loving the scousers. I'm lo it's a great place to do a gig. It's got, it's got a similar feel to Glasgow in terms of people heckle quite a lot. They join in, they're quite up for it. A nice sense of humour. Loving the scouse crowd. Although I will say this about Liverpool. Liverpool is the only city in Great Britain where JD Sports has an evening wear department. <laughs> They've got a fucking bridal shop. <laughs> Can I interest madam in an off-white tracksuit? <laughs> I always make a bit of an effort, when I'm travelling around the country doing this job, I always make a bit of an effort to do the accent of wherever I am. And I think, generally, people take that pretty well. They like the fact you've made a bit of an effort. But sometimes people get chippy if you don't get it exactly right. I had a guy come up to me, I was doing a gig in the north of England, and this guy came up to me after the show, quite aggressive. Yeah. He said, uh, all right, our kid. I don't think you've got any fucking respect for this town. <laughs> Try and do the voice. We don't even fucking talk like that. 
not bad. I said, no, you've got me all wrong. I love Newcastle. <laughs> I've got a friend that got into an argument with a barmaid from Sunderland. Long story short, he ended up calling her a fat, ugly, Geordie cunt. <laughs> and she said, I'm no a Geordie. <laughs> I'm no a Geordie. <laughs> Sorry, that's a terrible accent. But it is how they talk. <laughs> I'm always impressed when I'm travelling around the place. I came up on the train, and I'm very impressed with anyone that can get on a train. Maybe some of you can do this. Can, can any of you get on a train and you don't have to ask, is it the right train? I'm unable to do that. Whenever I get on a train, I've always got to find someone who looks like a grown-up to me. <laughs> and go, is this the right one? Is this the one for Glasgow? And we all know the answer, because we've all been asked by a tit like me. The answer is always, hope so. <laughs> hope so. I've started doing it on planes. <laughs> I went on holiday recently, and they told me on holiday, yeah, in the hotel, that they had special stuff in the swimming pool that turns the water purple if you pee in the pool. So I didn't pee in the pool. I didn't realise they had stuff for shit. <laughs> But they clearly did, because they were on to me almost immediately. <laughs> I told them it was a brown shark. They were having none of it. <laughs> I met a fat vegetarian. <laughs> I thought, well done. <laughs> All that on salad. You go, girl. <laughs> Whenever I'm cooking, I always make sure there are vegetarian options. They can make do or they can fuck off. <laughs> Women have a go at men for overreacting to man flu, but I think AIDS is pretty serious. <laughs> Near where I live in North London, there's Hampstead Heath. I don't know if you've heard of Hampstead Heath, but there are toilets on Hampstead Heath, this parkland, that are notorious for gay cruising. This is where gay guys go in North London to hook up with other gay guys of an evening, the toilets on Hampstead Heath. Now, I live near there. Here's my question. What happens if you just want to piss? <laughs> You're buggered. <laughs> yeah, you can laugh. I found out the hard way. <laughs> the hard way's not the phrase to use there, is it? <laughs> I've got loads of gay friends, and I'm sure there are loads of gay men in this evening. A few, certainly, not dotted around. Are there gay men in? <laughs> Keeping it quiet in Glasgow. Well, I've got loads of gay friends. I'm sure there are some gay men in this evening. Uh, how do you decide who goes where in a, in a gay relationship? Because when it's a man and a woman, you know what goes where, don't you? Pretty much, most of the time. Apart from birthdays and Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good little nudge. <laughs> Told you that was normal. But if it's two guys, because it's two guys, is it like calling shotgun in the car? Because <laughs> I get annoyed if my friend gets to sit in the front. I'd be livid if he got to pop his cock in my bum. <laughs> that is the face I would do. <laughs> do you know how to tell if someone's gay, Glasgow? Do you know how to tell? You, you know when you get a posh lady, if, like, a posh lady is drinking tea from a cup and a saucer and she'll do the thing with her pinky? She'll do the... <coughs> Ooh, delicious morag. <laughs> <laughs> Another scoon. <laughs> she's Scottish. <laughs> anyway, she'll do the thing with the pinky when she's drinking tea. Well, if a guy does that, when he's sucking your cock... <laughs> gay! <laughs> well, you're sucking that like a puff, you bender. <laughs> What is he like? <laughs> Don't get the wrong idea, Glasgow. I'm not homophobic. Anyone that says I'm homophobic can suck my cock. <laughs> as long as he's not a fella, cos that isn't natural. <laughs> and I think I should be allowed to tell these jokes, because although I've never had sex with a man, I have fucked a girl ugly enough to count as a man. <laughs> My friend said that to me recently. My friend Louise, we were just chatting about nothing, and she went out of the blue. She just went, I've never been to bed with an ugly man, but I've woken up with a few. 
So I said to her, I said, I've never been to bed with an ugly girl, but I fucked a few in car parks. <laughs> Sorry, I should clarify, car park is just what I call the vagina. <laughs> because of my name. You don't look at all happy with the euphemism car park for the VJJ. <laughs> I'm, I don't want to offend anyone this evening. I'm not sure what the, what the least... Probably the least offensive term, probably front bottom. So from here on in, we'll call it a front bottom and a back cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Who's seen me before, Glasgow? Who's been out to one of my shows before, yes? OK. Well, you'll know, I always stick around at the end of the show and say hi to people. Frankly, the least I can do on a day out. And the question I always get asked, I get asked this more than any other question, after the gig, people say to me, what's going on in your head? Well, often they don't phrase it like that, they'll say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought this evening, what might be a fun thing to do is to take you on a little guided tour inside of my mind. <laughs> I've done some pictures to illustrate, and I'll, I'll show you what's actually happening up here. Oh, yes. Sorry, I've just noticed some, pe I've just noticed some people wearing masks of my face in what could only be described as a fucking freaky incident. <laughs> Why have you got... You've got a mask of my... Could you just hold it up, so... Could you turn that round just so other people can see how fucking freaky that is? <laughs> you know what the odd thing about that is? I was looking at you for a second, I was going... That looks familiar. <laughs> That's something about... Hang on, I'm usually shaving when this happens. <laughs> well, thanks for fucking freaking me out on the DVD record. I really fucking appreciate it. You crazy bin. What, what's your name, madam? <laughs> Claire. And what, what do you do, Claire? Excellent. Depends on the guy, probably. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a one-night stand, you really let your hair down. Cool. What do you do for a living, Claire? A student. You're a student. Ah, that's the free time <laughs> to be making masks of comedians' faces. <laughs> <laughs> and who are you here with? Who's, who's your friend? I'm is, she, is she your special friend? <laughs> Special friends. <laughs> Do you sometimes use the mask and use a strap on and pretend? <laughs> yeah. Pretend you're doing it like normal people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's how I laugh. <laughs> if I laugh at any point in the show, it sounds like Elmo's being tickled, <laughs> or a seal is being sexually molested. Well, thanks very much for making the mind. Thanks for making a fuss of me. Right. I, oh, sorry, I was going to take you on a guided tour of my mind. We'll kick off with some thoughts. <laughs> That's me thinking. <laughs> or shitting, it's unclear from that. <laughs> Not that I don't really like the term shitting, I find it a bit, it's a bit aggressive. I prefer to say growing a tail. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to be nice, isn't it? <laughs> right, some thoughts for Glasgow. White van drivers. I don't know, they think they own the road with their flashing lights and their sirens. <laughs> oh, there's been an accident. <laughs> there fucking will be. <laughs> of course, the thing they never do on soaps is watch TV, and that's because they'd see all their dead friends on the bill. <laughs> Have you just spotted the AIDS? Well done. <laughs> Whenever I see a sticker on the back of a car saying Princess on board, it always makes me think of Diana. <laughs> I always think, don't upset Prince Philip, you'll be fine. <laughs> what? I didn't fucking kill her, don't give me a hard time. What superpower would I most like to have? I've given that quite a lot of thought. I think that's the sort of thing men think about quite a lot. What superpower would be best? I think invisibility would be the coolest superpower to have. <laughs> and really, the question is, if I was invisible, what would I do second? <laughs> I think we all know what I would do first. <laughs> Let's face it, if I was invisible, they'd think the ladies' changing rooms were haunted. <laughs> Where's all this ectoplasm coming from? It seems to be... <laughs> Something just tapped me on the head. <laughs> I 
Manners cost nothing. <laughs> I have a lot of ideas, and I'd like to share some of my ideas with Glasgow this evening. Yes, I'd like to share some ideas with all, all of you good people. I'm working on a book at the moment. I'm working on a book. It's about a zombie that comes back from the dead, but the twist is the zombie is the good guy. But apparently it's already been done. It's called The Bible. It's annoying, isn't it? <laughs> I've had an idea for a TV show. It's called Jim will Fix It. <laughs> it's just me spaying cats. <laughs> the first guy that persuaded a blind person they needed sunglasses, he must have been a hell of a salesman. There's a lot of problems in the world, so I like to do a little bit of problem solving every day, try and make the world a slightly better place. British women, that's you ladies, British women last year spent £280 million removing unwanted body hair. <laughs> Surely it would be cheaper and easier just to move to Germany. If you're worried about putting on a few extra pounds and you want to be ready for next summer with your beach body, why don't you visit Somalia and get some fucking perspective? <laughs> There's people with real problems, you fat cow. <laughs> I've solved another problem. It's only a little thing, but little and often with problem solving is probably the best way to do it. Um, I've invented a bird table for my back garden. It's three foot tall and it saves a fortune on cat food. I tell you who I think should team up. Neighbourhood Watch and Peeping Toms. <laughs> it's a good idea, isn't it? A marriage made in heaven. And it would add a whole new dimension to the term curtain twitching. Because <laughs> curtain twitching could mean checking up on the neighbours, seeing everything's OK. Or curtain twitching, female masturbation. <laughs> I feel we've crossed a line, haven't we, Glasgow? We've... <laughs> <laughs> We've definitely crossed the line. <laughs> facts. We've all got loads of facts inside our heads. It's something to do with living in this internet age. Uh, British people are at least one inch taller than we were 20 years ago. And that's because 20 years ago, we were all children. <laughs> 40% of people use their mobile phone to cheat on their partner. I use Mr Tinkle. Mr. Tinkle is just a silly name I've got for my tummy banana. <laughs> Most bingo winners don't tell their other halves about their windfall, and that's because their husbands are dead. <laughs> there are 427 licensed professional jockeys currently working in the UK. If you laid them all from end to end, they would stretch from here to here. <laughs> An iguana can stay underwater for 28 minutes or longer if you don't mind it dying. <laughs> Interesting little fact for you obsessive Star Trek fans are known as. Hey. <laughs> virgins. <laughs> Sorry. Are you a big Star Trek fan? But, you, but how, how old are you? Do you mind me asking? You seem like... Eight. What, sorry? 20. 20. Right. So, so definitely not a virgin in Glasgow. <laughs> what, what do you do for a living? Um, I'm a secretary. You're a secretary? Yes. Nice. Is it 1950 already? <laughs> 2010, actually. What? 2010, actually. All right. You seem, you seem a bit chippy. <laughs> oh, it is Glasgow, sorry. Uh, I'd love to chat more, but I'm at work. So <laughs> Yeah, this will cheer you up. <laughs> oh, and you've gone for that. Nice. <laughs> what a lady. 
Let's talk about language. I'm slightly obsessed by language. I spend my life toying with it and messing around with it and, and trying to, you know, write jokes for you good people to laugh at. A lot of people don't like it when language changes. A lot of people don't like it, don't like Starbucks, for example, because what was small, medium and large is now tall, grande and venti. But I like the fact I've now got a tall cock. <laughs> That's taken away a lot of the stigma. A lot of people change the language that they use so as not to offend certain interest groups or individuals, which is fair enough, you know how touchy queers are. <laughs> PC has ruined some things. You can't say fruit salad anymore. It's now homosexual salad. <laughs> which is mental, because all salad is gay. <laughs> and cooey. You've got to be very careful in how you express yourself, because you could be saying the same thing, but if you pick the wrong words, you could cause offence quite inadvertently. I'll give you an example. I'll read you two sentences. The first one is entirely inoffensive. The second one, well, it could be misconstrued. I know, heaven forfend. But they both say the same thing. Interesting. I fell into a hedge, cut my face, and I can only partially remember the evening. It's fine, isn't it? Much better than saying, I fell into a bush, got gash on my face, and can only remember snatches. Doesn't maternity, maternity makes it sound like you're going to be fat forever. <laughs> and some of you will be. <laughs> Doesn't Nazi gold sound like a greatest hits? <laughs> Let's talk about fears, our subconscious mind. That's quite an interesting area, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, the best way to conquer a fear of spiders is next time you see a spider, Imagine it naked. <laughs> Has anyone got like a morbid fear of spiders? Like a... Someone's got one over there. Go. Oh. Your brother has. <laughs> but so that's kind of... Oh, well, he's here. It wasn't just a random... I haven't got phobia, but my brother has. Maybe you could help with that. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Kyle. Kyle. And you speak for him. When you, when you say your brother, you're not from Paisley, you're not going out or anything, are you? <laughs> oh, no, I'm just asking, cos... What do you do, Carl? Nothing the new, but... What, sorry? Nothing the new. <laughs> Nothing the now. <laughs> it's a new... Kyle and I are just workshopping, we're coming up with a new children's character for Scotland. <laughs> He's called Nothing the now. The unemployed donkey. <laughs> Nothing the now? What the fuck is that, Kyle? <laughs> what, what do you do for a living? You're unemployed? Uh, I. Yes. All right. Well, good. It was lovely having you here. <laughs> Especially in view of the fact a lot of the taxpayers paid for you to fucking be here. <laughs> well... Yeah. Let's face it, we're in Glasgow. There's a lot of people applauded that that have never paid any tax in their fucking lives. <laughs> yeah, there's tax on spirits, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> and what I'd like to do, Carl, my gift to you, give something back to the community. <laughs> Not just put care in it. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to cure you of your fear of spiders. You up for this? Uh, like Darren Brown style, with sort of hypnosis, cure your fear of spiders. You up for this? Fabulous, all right, because it's happening. <laughs> OK, imagine, Carl, you're at home, in bed, under the duvet, as snug as a bug in a rug. Mm. <laughs> and you're dreaming of whatever unemployed people in Glasgow dream of. <laughs> I don't know, being on the social for another few years. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> oh, and then I sign my name and the cheque keep coming. Oh, <laughs> lovely. OK, so you're at home in bed. Uh, but then what I'm saying is, you're in the most safe and secure environment you could possibly be in. You're under the duvet, safe and secure and warm. Mm. <laughs> Dreaming away. A spider, Kyle. Size of my hand. Big, hairy motherfucker. <laughs> Crawls on your face as you lie sleeping. Doesn't wake you, Kyle. You're still dreaming of nice things. Buckfast and the like. <laughs> uh. 
just sits there for a while on your face car as you sleep, lays its eggs in your tear ducts, <laughs> and scampers away to its enormous giant spider nest under your bed where it lives. <laughs> you can check later if you like. <laughs> okay, you wake up in the morning fresh as a daisy, lovely, ready for a busy day. Well, <laughs> you're awake anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, you're absolutely fine the next morning. That's my point. About a week later, you're sitting reading the paper, you know. It's a weird itch. A thousand spiders touch up your eyes. <laughs> has, that, has that helped at all? <laughs> that needs work, doesn't it? Sorry. <laughs> if it's any consolation, it's only Carl. Doesn't matter. Franklin D. Roosevelt famously said, there is nothing to fear but fear itself. Of course, he's dead now, killed by a spider. <laughs> i tell you what I worry about, and I'm sure many of you share my concerns. I worry about climate change. Climate change, or to give it its official scientific name, autumn. <laughs> Do you know we produce 48% more carbon emissions than we used to in the 1970s, but that figure could be halved if you just divided it by two. I'll tell you what I do really worry about, and I'm, I'm sure Carl will be thinking this is entirely justified. I worry about going mad. I've got a friend that went mad last year, and he ended up killing himself. He took everything in the medicine cabinet, choked on a surgical bandage. <laughs> That's not how I would do it. If I was going to kill myself, I know what I would do. I don't want to be morbid, Glasgow, but I know how I'd do it. I would dress up as Superman and jump off the top of a building. <laughs> how fucking awesome would that be? <laughs> And I would do it at four o'clock in the afternoon during term time. Because <laughs> you'd want a couple of hundred kids going, wow, Superman, and then, whoa, fathers for justice. <laughs> Rape. <laughs> Such a harsh word. I prefer to say when Kiss Chase goes too far. <laughs> and what exactly is aggravated rape? Oh, not only did he rape me, now I miss my bus. On the positive side, at least with Rohypnol, there are no bad memories. <laughs> oh. Let's talk about childhood, Glasgow. Yeah, childhood memories, childhood thoughts, yeah. One in ten British kids has never been to a beach in this country. Imagine that, growing up without ever having seen a dead cormorant with a tampon on its head. <laughs> When I was a kid, I wanted to get a tattoo, but my parents said I had to get it somewhere that didn't matter. So I had it done in Hull. <laughs> Is anyone here from Hull? Yeah. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Here's an interesting thing. This is weird. You can have sex in this country when you're 16, but you can't buy pornography until you're 18. That's an odd law, isn't it? So you can have sex when you're 16, but you're not allowed to watch other people have sex for another two years. So if you're 16, you can have sex, just don't look down. Let's talk about faith and spirituality, an important part of our psyches, I'm sure you will agree. Christians say, and there may be Christians in this evening, Christians say, Jesus died for your sins, be good. I say, he's already dead, fuck it. <laughs> What's he gonna do, get deader? Fill your fucking boots, mate. <laughs> also, if he died for your sins and you don't do any sins, you've made him look a right cunt. I don't believe in the paranormal per se, but I do have a spirit guide. Well, I say spirit guide, you might call it a sat-nav. <laughs> paranormal is actually derived from the Greek para, meaning you're not, a normal. <laughs> Let's talk about travel, yeah? The main reason Americans, are there any Americans in? For the best. <laughs> the main reason Americans don't have passports is they have trouble fitting in the photo booth. Luckily, they've developed Google Earth. <laughs> More than 2.3 million households have no one in full-time work, which is a convoluted way of saying there is a place called Scotland. 
<laughs> really? Good luck. <laughs> of course, not all Scottish people are alcoholics. A lot of you are recovering alcoholics with drug problems. <laughs> Let's face facts, Glasgow. If you Scottish ever find a way to deep fry whiskey, you are fucked. <laughs> Interesting little fact for you hopscotch was originally invented in Glasgow by children trying to step over their alcoholic parents. <laughs> True story. Let's talk about some dumb things. I see a lot of dumb things around. I see a lot of dumb signs. I was in a supermarket, I saw a sign that said, buy two, get one free. I only wanted one, so I took the free one. <laughs> I don't want to show off about my showbiz lifestyle, but I was in a Yates's wine lodge. <laughs> yeah, I was in a Yates's wine lodge, and I got talking to the barmaid, and I asked her how many types of wine they did in Yates's wine lodge, and she said, both. <laughs> Let's talk about some important social issues. There's a guy I work with, and every day he has what looks like fish fingers. I think he was in a fire. <laughs> Don't tell me that's too brutal for Glasgow. <laughs> Most domestic fires need just four things to start. A source of oxygen, a source of heat, gambling debts, and an up-to-date insurance certificate. <laughs> I hate people that make loud noise on public transport, particularly explosions. <laughs> Annoying. <coughs> I got into an argument. I said women have a lower pain threshold than men. She said, try childbirth. I said, I have. How do you think I got here? Do you know the NHS is currently so underfunded that couples wanting IVF treatment to help them conceive are being told to go and fuck themselves? <laughs> Remember, dogs die in hot cars. Or a heavy blow to the back of the head will work just as well. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's the one that got you? OK. <laughs> I came home the other night. My girlfriend was dressed up as a French maid. Very disappointed, the house was a fucking state. <laughs> Filthy slut. <laughs> well, let's talk about love and romance and sex. Let's talk about sex, Glasgow. There's a very commonly held belief that men think about sex every seven seconds, which I think makes talking to your dad creepy. <laughs> British men spend on average 22 minutes on foreplay. Of course, they spread out between all of us over the course of a year. <laughs> Women who read romance novels have twice as much sex as the national average. While I say sex, what I mean is they yield the precious softness of their silken female innocence <laughs> to the crushing firmness of his intent. <laughs> Sorry, I came over all Catherine Cooks in there. <laughs> it's not a great phrase to use. That'd be like painting the fourth bridge. <laughs> the average person has two pounds of meat lodged in their colon. So come on, love. Of course, most people don't know this, but confetti, you know confetti that you get at a wedding? Confetti represents fertility in the seed of man, which is quite accurate, because a lot of it does end up in the bride's hair. <laughs> Women have a go at men because we're no good at multitasking, but then you have a go at us when we piss in the shower. <laughs> it's like we can't win. Speaking of multitasking, I had a threesome last week. My girlfriend is pretty cool, but if she finds out about this, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I did have a threesome. I know you're probably thinking, yeah, probably you, a girl, and another bloke. No, it's actually me and two blokes. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. 
Well, that feels like it's quite enough from inside my head. Should we leave it there for now? Let's leave it there for now. Marvellous, right. <laughs> yes. Um, do you ever do this, Glasgow? Do you ever get asked to do the washing up and you do it really badly on purpose so you never get asked again? Do you do that? Yeah. My girlfriend does that with blowjobs. <laughs> Seriously, her blowjobs suck. <laughs> and it's not just me, a lot of my friends have commented. <laughs> my girlfriend likes to have the lights on during sex. Yeah, because she likes to be able to read. <laughs> Which I think is to be encouraged in a girl of her age. <laughs> I'm kidding! <laughs> She's actually scared of the duck. <laughs> that divides people, though, doesn't it? Some people like the lights on, some people always have to have the lights off. I like the lights on during sex. My best mate likes to have the lights off. And fair enough, his missus is a pig. <laughs> My girlfriend and I, we do a little bit of role-play in the bedroom. I pretend to be a swarthy Italian Lothario, and she pretends to be asleep. <laughs> she gets pretty into it as well. Sometimes she's there for seven or eight hours. <laughs> I'm actually quite conservative sexually. I tried S&M once. Why well, say I tried S&M? I punched a girl. Who's in a long-term relationship? Give us a shout if you're in a long-term relationship, yes? Yeah. Oh, loads of us this evening. Okay, well, you'll know as I know, in a long-term relationship, it's all about compromise. It's about finding that common ground. Because if you're not both happy, neither of you can independently be happy. No one's happy when the other half has got a face on, are you? <laughs> so you've got to find that common ground. Here's a good example of compromise from my life. This happens a lot in our house. I want to go out for the evening, yeah, night out. She wants a romantic night in. So as a compromise, we go dogging. <laughs> We, we don't. I suggested having sex outside once, and she went, what if someone comes? <laughs> I said, we'll go home. <laughs> OK, I've got a question for the men of Glasgow, OK? You're representing the men of Britain this evening, OK? I've got a question for you, gentlemen. Has any man in this room ever used the phrase, making love? <laughs> no, well, no, of course fucking not. <laughs> Purely the preserve of the ladies. Ladies love that phrase, making love. Making love. <laughs> making love. But you know why it's called making love? It's because we're going to make you do it, love. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Fucking rate. <eight. laughs> I got stopped by one of those charity muggers. You know the ones with the clipboard in the high street? And you think, oh, I've dodged him, and then there's another... Oh. <laughs> they work in teams, I don't know how they do it. Anyway, I got stopped, I got cornered. He said, can I have a word about the homeless? I said, certainly. Lazy. <laughs> Off you fuck. <laughs> I was in London, and I, I saw a homeless guy with a dog on a piece of string. Classic look for a homeless guy. <laughs> and I was walking by and the homeless guy said, could you spare some money for food? And my friend said, eat the dog, then we'll talk. <laughs> Even I thought that is harsh. <laughs> I'm joking, I didn't. <laughs> Truth be told, there was no friend there, I said it. <laughs> I was just checking to see you thought it was funny first. <laughs> I do a lot of gigs for people less fortunate than me. Only last week I was in Stoke. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, it's sort of the, the English equivalent of Dundee. <laughs> Are there people in from Dundee? Yeah. Oh, there's some girls in from Dundee. That's good, because I've got money for chips and I wouldn't mind sex. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact the girls from Dundee applauded that. <laughs> Just the uh, yeah, you're going, yeah, fuck chips, chip. Ooh. <laughs> should, I, should I do my impression of me seducing a girl from Dundee? <laughs> so, that's all you need.
Fucking marvellous. Um, <laughs> now, listen, this isn't what the show is about at all, but I was briefly going to tell you about a thing that I'm doing at the moment. It means a lot to me, and I was just going to take a moment of your time. I've started a little charity, just a little thing of my own, and it's going great, but I, I, I didn't want to put anything up on big screens or put any leaflets out or, or anything in the programme. I was just going to briefly tell you what the charity that I've set up does, and then if you want to get involved, you could just Google it. But it's not really what the evening's about. The evening's just about having a laugh, but I thought I might just... Sorry, I'm wittering on now. But you could just look it up and Google it if you want to get... <laughs> You know, I'm just saying, you know, because well, you could be proactive rather than me sort of forcing it down because people get bored of that. OK, what we do is we, we send obese children to the rainforest. <laughs> well, I don't mind you tittering because we're already seeing fabulous results. And if you want to be part of that, it's feedthetigers.com. <laughs> um, their faces light up. <laughs> Not the children, obviously, they're fucking petrified. Although it is quite ironically funny seeing them trying to run away. <laughs> He's a bit late for cardiovascular now. <laughs> you should have thought of that when you were waddling to Greg's, you fat fuck. <laughs> Flooding. Flooding's pretty bad. I saw a woman on the news in her flooded front room, crying. I thought, crying's not open. If anything, you're making matters worse, love. <laughs> I am committed to getting young girls off the streets. <laughs> Sometimes it's just for a half hour, but it relaxes me. I find it very <laughs> relaxing. Sorry, I'm not sounding very charitable. I do do my bit, you know. I've created a foundation for battered women. It's really thick to hide the bruising. It's weird. Domestic abuse is still a real sort of taboo subject, isn't it? People don't like talking about domestic abuse. And ironically, that makes the problem much worse because the charities that deal with domestic abuse, their problem is a problem of communication because the women that they're trying to reach out and communicate with, the battered wives, are the very women that won't shut up and listen. <laughs> Tragically, this is the only language they understand. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That's like the lion from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I wouldn't last a fucking day in this city, would I? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know, I know there's a degree of civic pride in Glasgow because uh, domestic abuse was invented right here, wasn't it? <laughs> Around the turn of the century. Well done, we salute you. <gasps> <laughs> Someone say something there? <laughs> Old Firm Day is Domestic Violence Day. <laughs> Is that a thing? Is that real? There's a, there's a woman there just going... <laughs> oh, yeah. What? Sorry, just tell me that again. Old... So, when Rangers play Celtic, it's the day for domestic abuse. <laughs> I fucking love it that you've got it diarised. <laughs> Has anyone had this recently? Have you, has, ever, has anyone made an appointment with the doctors recently? I phoned up for an appointment with my doctor and I got an appointment in three weeks' time. I thought, that's good, I'll either be better or dead. <laughs> but then they gave me option B. They said, well, you can come down and see the locum doctor. It's not your doctor, it's just our doctor we've got down there. And if it's serious, you can come down and wait. So that's what I did. I went down to the doctor's surgery and I waited for like four hours. And eventually I got called into the little treatment room with the doctor. Walked in there. Stunning looking doctor. I mean, properly, 10 out of 10. Absolutely gorgeous. Exactly my type. I went, uh, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> she said, I'm a professional. You're a grown man. Just tell me what the problem is. I said, OK. I think my cocktail's funny. I don't know if you've got a test for that. <laughs> but I've had an idea. <laughs> it's weird, the gender stereotype in that joke, isn't it? Like, the idea that when, when I say doctor, most people imagine a man. That's very odd, because we all know there's loads of female doctors, but if you're honest, when I say doctor, do you imagine a man? Yes? 
It's weird. And when a nurse is even worse. If I say nurse, do you imagine a woman? Yes. <laughs> Sounds like a slightly overactive imagination there. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, like a proper nurse, not like a stripper in a pub. <laughs> when I say nurse, do you imagine a woman? Yes? But we all know there's loads of male nurses. Although it's not pronounced male, you don't call them male nurses. It's actually pronounced male nurses. <laughs> not that I don't want to offend any male nurses, or indeed your boyfriends. <laughs> Just nod that one in. Good. Um, <laughs> I'll never forget what my granddad said to me. I shit in a bag. Please kill me. <laughs> a great way to warm up pensioners in winter is cremation. <laughs> Do you know you lose 50% of your taste buds by the time you're 75? So it is OK for your nana to live on cat food. My nana, my mum's mum, used to make me a jumper every Christmas. Did anyone else have that? She used to make me a, a jumper every Christmas. Much better than the ones in the shops. No. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> I remember one year she made me this burgundy monstrosity. Sleeves way too long. And in the front she'd embroidered, Blacks go home. <laughs> I said, I'm not wearing that. It's burgundy. <laughs> and the sleeves are too long, you crazy racist whore. <laughs> My girlfriend recently had a phantom pregnancy, and now we have a little baby ghost. <laughs> it's quite a sweet joke, isn't it? It's not hurting anyone. And that's why, every time I tell that joke, I kick a tramp. Even things up karmically. <laughs> Who's got kids? You got kids? Yeah. Who's got, you've got kids? OK, I've got kids. Well, I've adopted, but it's the same, isn't it? It's a family. Well, fostered, but as I say, it's a there's a bit of paperwork, it's nothing. Sponsored. I've sponsored a child. <laughs> well, it's not a child, it's a panda. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a donkey. I didn't sponsor her, I gave her half an apple through a fence. <laughs> that always gets the same reaction. It's always the, the woman going, that's not the fucking same. And the bloke going, have you? <laughs> Good. As long as I don't have to see a fucking photo of it. <laughs> a lot of men use moisturiser, but I'm old-fashioned. I just spit on my hand. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think we were talking about? <laughs> oh, come on, don't give me that look. We've all been there. Come on, love, the film starts in ten minutes. <laughs> we haven't got time for your fancy foreplay or your expensive lubricant. We're going to be buttering the baking tray the old-fashioned way. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, buttering the baking tray is the phrase that will stick. <laughs> so you've just given him a look as if to say, I thought you invented that. <laughs> How does he know what we do? Flavoured condoms. Has anyone in here had any dealings with flavoured condoms? <laughs> a few of you. The girl from Dundee's thinking, I thought that was one of my five a day. <laughs> Another banana, lovely. <laughs> my point on flavoured condoms is they are a waste of money. OK? Turns out my girlfriend doesn't have a sense of taste in her front bottom. <laughs> or back cunt. <laughs> which is just as well if you think about it. <laughs> well, don't think about it. <laughs> I feel like I've been up here long enough. I can open up a little bit. I can share with you. Glasgow, this thing I can share, yes? Yeah. Okay. My girlfriend has fallen asleep during sex before. <laughs> that is embarrassing. That is awkward. But not as awkward as the time she woke up during it. <laughs> <laughs> ha, 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 ha,
Hello, love. <laughs> You're up early. <laughs> yeah, I was just getting on with a little bit of sex. <laughs> I'll make you a cup of tea when I'm finished. <laughs> That'll help get rid of the taste. <laughs> yeah, I know it's weird. I've seen a doctor. <laughs> Well, that's, that's pretty much the first half of my show, ladies and gentlemen. But it's mainly me talking in the first half. Any questions so far? Anything else you'd like to know? Yes. Oh, I'm going to presume all the questions are for me. <laughs> if, that's, if I'm not being too starry and arrogant. <laughs> Although there's something about my name in this town. <laughs> Jimmy! Just sounds right. <laughs> Go on, what was the question? Yes, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's one of Wittgenstein's theorems. <laughs> um, you'd suck off his mum. <laughs> He's done you. He has done you. I, I, I'm not from Perth, so I may never have to make that decision. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. You sound like you come from a very broken home. I'm not suggesting you fucked your mum, but only because you wouldn't want to two-time your sister. <laughs> Why do I laugh like a sexual predator? <laughs> I like the way that a sexual predator sounds better in your accent than any other. A sexual predator. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I laugh like that. It's one of life's mysteries in the same way as why you dressed as a gay lumberjack. <laughs> we, we may never know. I like big, thick logs. Hmm. Yeah. How big's my cock? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not sure whether your mother would be comfortable discussing it, but it's... <laughs> Truth be told, it's quite small, but it smells like a big one. What, sorry? Where's the weirdest place I've had sex? His mum's bum. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. It was his dad's. <laughs> Any other questions, thoughts? Why do I look like Hitler? <laughs> nine, nine, nine. <laughs> Who said that? What hotel? <laughs> ah, well, it's quite a posh one, so it'll have to be your place. <laughs> I don't think... I don't think they'll, they'll let you in. They've got a policy on that sort of thing. <laughs> and even though I'm not paying you, it looks like I am. <laughs> yeah, go on. Where's your best audience? What, sorry? Where's your best audience? What's the best audience? Well, without being um, sort of, you know, sycophantic, sir, without sucking up to you, he said in a very patronising manner. <laughs> uh, Glasgow's pretty good. I mean, that's why I'm recording the DVD here. But I don't know if you noticed the cameras, but it's... It's, uh... It's just a, it's just a fun place. I'll, I'll tell you a quick story about Glasgow, just before, before we move on. I'll tell you the reason I'm recording the DVD here. The first time I ever came to Glasgow to play at the Stand Comedy Club, I got on the back of a taxi, yeah? And I said to the book, because I wanted to make a reference to where was rough in town. So I said, excuse me, driver, where's rough in Glasgow? And he said, for you, everywhere. <laughs> and then I was on stage later that night, yeah, on stage, and I told that story on stage, and all I said was, and I thought this was a comment that was beyond any kind of argument, all I said was, Glasgow is quite an aggressive town. And a guy down the front went, no, it fucking isn't it? <laughs> No hint of irony. No, it fucking isn't it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this place will do for me. <laughs> now, do you all like drinks and sweets, yes? Yeah. Everyone likes drinks and sweets. Do you sometimes get annoyed paying regular prices for sweets? Do you wish you could pay two or three times as much for exactly the same Maltesers? <laughs> 
Cos if you do, you are in luck. <laughs> We're about to have an interval, and this venue is about to rape you. <laughs> I'll meet you back here in 20 minutes for more jokes. See you then. Get that thing where you walk into a room and you totally forget why you've gone in there. You just kind of go, the, what am I meant to be? <laughs> Do you ever get that? Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you cat people or dog people? What would you say, cat people or dog people? Because <laughs> to me, it all tastes the fucking same. <laughs> people of restricted height. Some of them don't mind being called midgets, but they hate being called dwarves. Some of them, fine with dwarf, hate being called a midget. So what are you going to do? What I do is I call them all Oompa Loompas. <laughs> None of the little fuckers like that, do they? <laughs> are there any midgets in? I mean, I haven't seen any, but then that's part of their charm. They could be... <laughs> I don't look down on dwarves. That's probably gone over their heads. <laughs> How could I stoop so low? <laughs> Life's too short. And just because you're a midget doesn't make you any less of a person. <laughs> Truth be told, I fucking love dwarves. But I never tell them that I love them because I don't want them to get big-headed. <laughs> a lot of people say women get more attractive after a couple of drinks, but I think they lose a lot of their charm vomiting and pissing in the street. <laughs> Welcome to Glasgow. <laughs> they just put speed bumps outside my local school. Wow, I'm pretty sure it's a speed bump. <laughs> I'm 90% sure it was a speed bump. With a satchel. <laughs> I make my own vegetables. I've got a hammer. <laughs> Is it wrong, Glasgow? You be the judge. Is it wrong to call the disabled seating area of a theatre the cabbage patch? <laughs> Is that wrong? Double amputees, you've got to hand it to them. <laughs> but they will drop it. If I lost both my arms, I'd probably just shrug it off. <laughs> I, I, was doing, I was doing a gig on this tour, I was telling that joke, and there was a guy sitting where you're sitting, right down the front there, missing both his arms. And he laughed at that joke, but then at the end I noticed he wasn't applauding. You know that moment when a girl locks eyes with you across a crowded room and says, Yes, Your Honour, that's the one. <laughs> I saw a headline in the paper, it said, Rapist Strikes. I thought, what does he want? Better pair conditions. <laughs> he's outdoors in the park, he's on flexi time. Talk about your job satisfaction. <laughs> what have we got, unionised sex offenders now? What do we want? Get in the van. When do we want it? Get in the van. <laughs> women ask weird questions. Well, the women in my life have always asked weird questions. My girlfriend said to me recently, she said, which of my friends do you think is prettiest? Well, that's what she said. What I heard was, I fancy a fight. <laughs> I don't know much about women, but I know there is no correct answer to the question, which of my friends do you think is prettiest? There's nothing I can say that she'll go, Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> and there's going to be trouble, so I thought, well, I might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. So when she asked, which of my friends do you think is prettiest, I said, well, Karen is pretty, but Susan does that thing with her tongue. <laughs> talking during sex, Glasgow, where do you stand on talking during sex? I think there should be very strict rules on talking during sex. Rule number one, don't. <laughs> Rule number two, shh. 
and those are the rules. <laughs> my, my girlfriend talks during sex. I don't mean sexy, dirty, filthy talk. I'd love that. That'd be awesome. No. She says the most mundane shit you've heard in your life, <laughs> mid-coitus. That means whilst fucking. <laughs> the thing you do for chips. I'll give you an example, OK? So, a, a, a couple of weeks ago, we were making love. I'd made her do it love. <laughs> we were about halfway through. Well, we were nearly finished, truth be told, but she didn't know that. <laughs> I was in... I was actually... And she said, Where do I leave my keys? <laughs> I said, Well, they're not in your vagina. <laughs> I've had a good route round. I was sure I would have noticed something. <laughs> I'll check your bum. <laughs> She said, you will not. It's no one's birthday. <laughs> so I've come up with a way f of dealing with this, OK? I could just say to her, could you not say mundane things during sex because it sort of kills the mood for me, sort of ruins it, you know, kills the moment. I could just say that, but that would be literally no fun at all. So what I'm doing is whatever she says to me, no matter how mundane, whatever she says to me during sex, I try and make it sexy. Set myself that challenge. It's a lot of fun. I'll give you an example. She said to me a couple of weeks ago, while we were, she said, uh, the recycling's coming tomorrow. <laughs> well, more accurately, she said, the recycling's coming tomorrow. <laughs> so I said, the recycling's not the only thing coming tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to separate your paper and plastic. <laughs> Doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> That's my sexy voice, by the way. I've kind of gone for a 1970s black exploitation New York City voice. Because then you can say things like, I'm coming. If I just use my voice, I've just got to go, I've arrived. <laughs> Has anyone heard anything more mundane than that during sex? What's the most mundane thing? Hurry up. Hurry up. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> what was that? These chips are cold. <laughs> Oh, oh, bless. Any others? What, sorry, what was that one there? Rather cold today. Rather cold today. <laughs> cool today. Uh, aye. <laughs> That's like small talk at a bus station. I suppose we're in Glasgow. It could well have happened at a bus station. <laughs> <laughs> I got the little... <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> any, any others? Yes. Is it in yet? <laughs> so, have you said to this boy here, this, uh, there's a man covering his eyes now with a... <laughs> oh, God, she hasn't. That's not your boyfriend. I'm sure you don't limit yourself to one. Um, <laughs> it... But you've said to a man, is it in yet? <laughs> you, but you've said that to him, you've looked a man in the eyes and gone, is it in, is it in yet? So you don't want to look down and check, and you've got no feeling in your vagina whatsoever. <laughs> so without, well, hang on, just make eye contact with me. Without looking down, can you tell if there's a cock in you now? <laughs> what was your one? My grand's in hospital. My grand's in hospital. <laughs> you were fucking someone, and they said to you, "My grand's in hospital." <laughs> oh yeah, baby, tell it like it is. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to break your hips. <laughs> <laughs> Any other mundane things during sex? There's the ice cream van. There's the ice cream van. <laughs> Did you start going out with him when you were quite a lot younger? <laughs> oh, there's the ice cream van. Shh, 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 shh. Most natural thing in the world. <laughs> I had one the other week, a guy came in with his wife. They'd been married like 30 years. And she had said to him, and she said she'd said it, OK? She said to him, during sex, she said, now I've got your full attention, let's talk about those curtains. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd been him, I would have gone, curtains look fine. <laughs> 
Another one that comes up a lot, you're boring me. Which my response would be, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this says about us as a nation, but one that comes up all the time from audiences is uh, change channels. <laughs> Are we having sex with the television on, people? Change channels. I think if someone said change channels to me, I think, well, I would know they were talking about the television, but I would be very tempted to go, thanks very much. <laughs> I don't mind if I do. Of course, the classic is, uh, Seely needs doing. <laughs> Hopefully not in that voice. <laughs> Seely needs doing. To which my response would be, yeah, I'm going to fill your crack. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, if you're in a long-term relationship, you'll be familiar with this conversation. It's the conversation that happens five minutes after you think you've gone to sleep. <laughs> you know the one I mean? TV's off, lights are off, books are down, everyone's washed their teeth, you're in bed, night, night, love you, love you, night, night. <laughs> Five minutes after that, just as, you're, just as you're drifting off into sleep, the most insecure voice you've ever heard in your life, out of the darkness, if we broke up, <laughs> would we still be friends? <laughs> I said, what do you mean, still? I bought my girlfriend some lingerie, it was her birthday, and she'd hinted at the stuff she wanted, so I went to, I think it was Agent Provocateur, for these fancy kind of set of pants and bra and stuff. Well, quite right. <laughs> so she was quite impressed, she opened it up on her birthday morning, she was really kind of into it, and she went, oh, these are beautiful, darling, but they're not my size. <laughs> I said, don't worry, I've had a chat with a woman in the shop, and she says, you can have an operation. <laughs> I knew I had to lose some weight in the last year. It's a very sad day for any man when his girlfriend suggests he comes on his own tits. <laughs> you ever done that? Have you ever mixed up a fat person and a pregnant person? It's embarrassing, isn't it? Especially if it's a fella. <laughs> I had a fat girl come up to me recently after a gig. Well, I say a fat girl. She was either fat or 18 months pregnant. <laughs> she was big. Bubbly, you might say. <laughs> Not with an effervescent personality that filled a room, no. Shaped like a bubble. <laughs> she was a comfort eater. I don't mean she was eating for emotional comfort. She was eating till she was comfortable to sit on. <laughs> she wasn't a size zero, she was a shape zero. <laughs> anyway, she came up to me after that. Well, she pretty much surrounded me. <laughs> and she said, you're not meant to use the term fat. I said, you're not meant to eat cake for breakfast. <laughs> you're not meant to deep fry Mars bars. And gravy isn't an energy drink. <laughs> and if I can't say fat, because I wasn't using fat in a judgmental way, I was just, just purely being descriptive on stage, I was using the word fat. Apparently I can't use the word fat now. If I can't say fat, what term does she prefer? Chunky monkey wobble slob? <laughs> Fatty boom batty? or blubbernaut. <laughs> and if you're offended by any of those terms, how about a salad? <laughs> I, I tell you what, I, I, I'm a bit, not distressed at, but a little bit upset. The term real woman. I used to really like the term real woman. It meant a voluptuous, fuller figured, curvy, beautiful, buxom, plump lady. You would say she's a real woman. Doesn't mean that anymore, does it? Real woman is now a euphemism for chunky monkey wobble slob. <laughs> You say she's a real woman when you mean she's a really fat woman. <laughs> she's dangerously close to being two women. <laughs> Have you ever fucked a girl so fat you think it might count as a threesome? <laughs> and I tell you when you know you're with a fat lass, when you find yourself in the throes of passion thinking, is that boob or arm? I'll give it a lick, just to be sure. <laughs> a lot of people think horizontal stripes make them look fat. No. What makes you look fat? It's being fat. 
the only horizontal stripes making you look fat are the ones in Viennetta, lasagna and sponge cake. <laughs> I had a fat girl come up to me after a show a couple of weeks ago, a very nice girl. She said, look, I really enjoyed the jokes, but I'm a fat woman. How do you think I feel? I said, squidgy. <laughs> <laughs> I was asked recently, Glasgow, by like a proper publishing company. Proper publishing company said to me, do you want to write an autobiography? And I've given it a little bit of thought. I've made some notes and I thought we might go through the notes this evening and see whether we think it's a good idea for me to write a book. Just out of interest, if I wrote a biography, who here would, would buy it? <laughs> well, it might just be worthwhile. You never know your luck. Um, well, look, I, I've been asked to write it, so I thought I'd make some notes. Obviously, my first thought when they said, do you want to write a biography was, well, I wish I'd kept a journal, but I never kept a journal because I'm not a fat goth girl. <laughs> The first thing you've got to talk about, if you write one of these kind of cashing on your fame biographies, you've got to talk about being famous. You know, has fame changed me? No, I've always been a bit of a cunt. <laughs> it's a very odd thing being famous. I get this thing happen now where about once a week someone will come up to me in the street and go, I know you from somewhere. Do we go to school together? And I've discovered there's no way to say to another human being, no, we didn't go to school together, but do you own a television? without sounding like a total fucking arsehole. <laughs> what, sorry? Is that Buckfast? No, that's water. You've probably heard of it. <laughs> Who's the most famous person I've ever met? Well, I, I once met her. Uh, the, um, well, it's quite an impressive one. I don't want to show off, but, you know, you know, you know... No, you know how villages have got idiots, yeah? <laughs> I met the idiot for the whole of Glasgow. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he's, uh... <laughs> One of the biggest cunts in the world, yeah. I married him. And you married him. That is, again, that will only happen in Glasgow. <laughs> you call someone a cunt and their wife goes, yep. <laughs> oh, don't I know? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, yeah, I'll record it in Glasgow, it'll be fine. <laughs> really? Really? The big, big advantage to being famous, as I see it, is if I ever get Alzheimer's, I want to be absolutely fine. If I ever forget who I am, I'll be fine. Because as I wander around town for the day, people are constantly going, oh, look, Jimmy Carr, oh, look, Jimmy Carr, oh, look, Jimmy, oh, look, Jimmy Carr, Jimmy Carr. So if I forget my identity, I'll be constantly reminded. The downside to that is about 5% of the time people get it wrong and think I'm Alan Carr. <laughs> so about once a week, I'd end up back at the care home sucking off an old fella. <laughs> No, oh, I don't really like it. <laughs> looks. Let's talk about my looks. <laughs> well, could be worse. It could have been a pop-up book. <laughs> Looking at me, you wouldn't think I was voted the fourth sexiest man in Britain. And you'd be right, I wasn't. <laughs> People often ask, how do you get the Jimmy Carr look? Well, get your mother to drink heavily during pregnancy. <laughs> Sorry, mate, no offence. <laughs> I do look a little like Roger Federer, and a lot like Ian Beale's daughter from EastEnders. <laughs> yeah, I wish that wasn't funny. <laughs> I wish that didn't ring true, but sadly it does, doesn't it? It's an odd thing, being on TV, being on stage in front of all you people, it makes you more vain than you should otherwise be. I mean, I'm a 37-year-old man. I shouldn't be vain at all. I realise you can't polish a turd. <laughs> but you can roll it in glitter, can't you? So... <laughs> you do the best with what you've got. And I always try and make the best of myself. You know, I try and, you know, dress well and present myself well. It only ever leads to embarrassment, vanity. I remember the first time I did a room this size in London, my older brother came to the gig. Yeah, I've always, like, looked up to my older brother. Came to the show, came backstage afterwards. He didn't say anything about the performance. He just went, are you wearing makeup?" And to my eternal shame, I went, 
No, it's tinted moisturiser. <laughs> I realise now, I couldn't have sounded gayer to him with two cocks in my mouth. <laughs> Let's talk about my career. I've got a terrible boss, self-employed, and I'm currently on sexual harassment charges. Of course, on the other hand, you are looking at Employee of the Month. <laughs> How can I explain what it's like? You know when you walk past, like, an electrical goods store and they've got all the TVs in the store hooked up to one camera and you kind of do that weird thing of waving at yourself as you walk by? And there's an odd moment where you go, well, I don't want to stop waving because I'm still waving. <laughs> That's what Channel 4 is like for me. <laughs> I'm like their fucking screensaver. <laughs> and for the moment, it's just stand-up and TV for me. My acting career has been put on hold. And that was a decision taken by you, the British public. <laughs> yeah, a lot of comedians that I started with have now gone to Hollywood to make movies, which is great, you know, well done them. But there's something called loyalty. And there's something else called a lack of talent and no offers. <laughs> I've just noticed, does that... Sh can you all just keep a little bit quiet for a second? I've just noticed there's a man over there that appeared in a blue jumper. I think he might be asleep. If you could just keep quiet around him. Just shush, shush. Oh, and fuck, he's woken. <laughs> fuck. Hello? <laughs> You're having a fucking weird dream, aren't you? <laughs> I wouldn't fall asleep again. Some, something very bad will happen. <laughs> I was going to teabag him. Shit. <laughs> it's annoying, isn't it? <laughs> Sounds like it would have been a very popular choice. What's your name? Steven. Steven. You had to have a little thing, though, didn't you? <laughs> All right, and what do you do, Steven? Footballer. You're a footballer. Who, who do you play for? Stran Ra. Stran Ra? <laughs> He's a footballer. He plays for Stran Ra. <laughs> OK, I'm fucking shit at football as well, mate. Don't worry about it. Don't, that's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Don't feel bad. Stran Ran, is that five a side, is it? <laughs> you got a full team? <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I bet you're a great kicker. <laughs> you lazy fuck. Try and pay attention. <laughs> it's not like people fall asleep when Stran Ra play. Oh, no, hang on, that's a bad analogy. <laughs> 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 you lazy fucker. I've noticed a trend in publishing. Just the last couple of years, the more depressing the childhood segment of the book, the better the book does, the better the biography does. People love reading about kind of horrible, depressing childhoods. So I've had a crack at writing a heartbreaking childhood memoir, which wasn't easy for me, because my childhood was actually fine. <laughs> I was in a lot of fights at school. Well, not a lot, one. And it wasn't a fight, it was a debating society. <laughs> and I wasn't in it, I was watching. Still, don't fucking mess. <laughs> we were poor, but we were happy. I remember every Sunday morning you could hear my dad banging away, trying to get some life out of the old boiler. <laughs> <laughs> then he'd give up, go upstairs and fuck my mum. <laughs> I simply adored our pet dog, Patch, but one day my parents called me in and told me that Patch had been called away to the giant potato sack with bricks in it in the sky. <laughs> For weeks, I wasn't changed. I wasn't given proper food. Someone stuck the TV on in the corner and I just lay there in my own filth. God, I loved university. <laughs> the other thing I've noticed with books is, like, anything with a spiritual element always does brilliantly. Look at the Bible. That's still a bestseller, even though they give it away in hotels. <laughs> I guess you could say I haven't found Jesus, but then I think Jesus should try and find me. He's omnipotent, I'm on telly. How tough's that? <laughs> make a fucking effort, Christ. <laughs> or Christ, make a fucking effort. That works either way. I'm cynical about religion, but I'm not a cynic. I, I do believe in other things. I'm willing to believe in aliens, for example. I mean, if aliens don't exist, then who was it that abducted me at the age of 13 and transported me to a room full of weird flashing lights and subjected me to a terrifying rectal probing? <laughs> oh, that's right, it was the guy that ran the youth centre disco. <laughs> yeah. 
The thing that put me off religion was I was raised Catholic. Any other Catholics in? Yeah. You, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Like Catholic school, if you go to Catholic school, sex education is very odd. Sex education, they don't want kids to be told about sex. They want to show them. The Catholic Church are weird. The only kind of contraception they seem to approve of is fucking young boys. <laughs> Granted, you're not going to get them pregnant. <laughs> One of my teachers was very sexually repressed. He used to take it out on the kids. <laughs> One thing stuck in my head. <laughs> he was responsible for the worst phrase in my childhood. You know sometimes something bad happens, and then someone says something and it just makes it ten times worse, right? It was already bad. About 60 of us, my whole year, went swimming. Big swimming regatta thing. And my friend Anthony got an erection. <laughs> That's embarrassing, right? It's a bad situation. The teacher didn't make it any better by pointing out said erection, <laughs> in case anyone had missed it, <laughs> and then describing it as, wait for it, nature's thumbs up. It is weird, the stuff you remember when you look back. Like, I've sort of made some notes about my childhood. I thought I'd be able to remember the stuff they taught me. How an oxbow lake is formed, how World War I started, you know, the stuff they teach you at school. I can't remember any of that. I don't know what this says about me as a person, but I remember with total clarity the day Matt came into school and told us all he could suck his own cock. <laughs> I remember clearly, because he told us how he did it, he said he did it by falling backwards into the bath. I remember at the time thinking, there's an accident that's gone terrifically well. <laughs> Most people laughing at that, just one man down the front give me a look as if to say, I might have a bath later on. <laughs> Mum, Dad, I'm just having a bath. Why isn't the water running? <laughs> no reason. It's an interesting area. I think sexual awakening is... An, for a biography, that's always a good chapter. My uncle actually taught me the facts of life, but I can't tell you what they are, because it's a special secret between me and him. <laughs> Seriously, I can't say if I tell you, my mum and dad will both die. <laughs> when I was about six, I was given a doll. I don't remember the doll's name. I just remember the game was you had to point to different places and say how many times it happened. Did you not have that game? <laughs> Jealous much? <laughs> one of the things that's holding me back from writing an autobiography is the fact that if you write one, you've got to talk about your private life in a very public way, and it changes the nature of celebrity. It makes you into more of a sort of tabloid celebrity. So I'll just dip my toe in the water. I'll talk about it a little bit, try and get used to it. My girlfriend is, without a doubt, the most beautiful girl I could get. I'll cut to the chase on this. People always ask, have you ever cheated on your partner? Well, yes, it's, it's happened. It's nothing that I'm proud of, but... Well, it was last Christmas, and I read all the Trivial Pursuit questions before we played. <laughs> and then I fucked her sister. <laughs> which, if anything, made it worse. She's forgiven me now, though. She told me recently, she said, I'm fine. Nothing's wrong. Good. <laughs> I thought it was weird because she was crying. So I said, what's the problem? And she said, if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you. So I guess she's organising some sort of surprise party. <laughs> I thought it would be romantic to take my girlfriend back to where we first met. But she said, don't make me go back there, Mr Jimmy. I'll cook, I'll clean, I'll be better. <laughs> I worry about that joke. <laughs> Is that just racy lacism? <laughs> oh, you racy lacist. <laughs> it's not, it's an accent, it's fine, don't cry. I get asked, what's the secret of comedy? Graham Norton's got a wife and two kids. <laughs> Doesn't leave this room. People ask me what I'll do if I ever run out of jokes. Well, I could always write an episode of Two Pints of Lager. <laughs> <laughs> I 
People seem mildly sort of obsessed. I always get asked, what did you do before comedy? Well, I used to work on the oil rigs off the coast of Aberdeen. I, I did. I was a male prostitute. <laughs> I knew I knew you from somewhere. <laughs> Never forget a face. All the back of someone's head. Um, I often get asked, what's your pet hate? Well, he doesn't like it if you put things in his bum. <laughs> but who can resist a cat's bum hole? It's like a towel holder from the 70s. They're strangely alluring. <laughs> right, I'll tell you what, I was going to talk to you about this. This is the question on this tour that's come up more than any other from audience members, yeah? What order would you do Girls Aloud in? <laughs> Most men in this room have given that concerted thought. Even though we know it's never going to happen, we want to be ready just in case. <laughs> in case we ever get a knock on the door from the five girls saying, I want you now, we want to be able to say, come in, ladies, the rotor's on the fridge. <laughs> I can explain myself. <laughs> Cheryl first. I'll tell you why Cheryl first. I find her the most attractive, so I definitely want to get that one done. And let's face facts, I might only have one in me. <laughs> five is not going to happen. Be honest, guys, five is never going to happen. For, like every man in this room, the only time I've ever wanted to have sex twice is before I've had sex once. <laughs> the ladies know what I'm talking about. You've all been over-promised to. <laughs> I'm going to make love to you all night long. <laughs> Or until I get sleepy. <laughs> Let's see which comes first. I came first. <laughs> no, no. I... <laughs> I would have the ginger one in the room at all times. Stop me going off early. <laughs> oh, Cheryl, I'm just about to. Oh. <laughs> oh, we're back in the game. <laughs> Has so anyone got any other questions this evening? Anything else you'd like to know? <coughs> Why do I get my suit? I get all my clothes from high and mighty. It's not to do with my size or shape. It's my attitude. <laughs> this is actually a suit for an eight-year-old giant. <laughs> I don't know why that's a giant. <laughs> More like a thunderbird. <laughs> you get the idea. Any other thoughts, questions? How much money are you making from this gig? How much money am I making from this gig? Well, I'll put it in terms that you'll understand, sir. A hundred money. <laughs> Go on, sorry, what was your question? What age did I lose my virginity? It was the 20th century. No, I, I lost my virginity. I was 26 when I lost my virginity. Now, I realise there'll be grandmothers in Glasgow thinking... <laughs> well, that can't be right. <laughs> Did he not have a sister? <laughs> no, I was 26, but I'll tell you why I was 26. Because I was Christian growing up. I had an imaginary friend uh, that I used to talk to. I know it sounds mental now, but I did. So that was part of it, but partly I wanted it to be special. Well, not special but consensual. <laughs> and then I got to 26 and I thought, fuck it. <laughs> How much is a train ticket to Dundee? <laughs> Any other thoughts? What, sorry? What's my favourite song? I would say probably Sweet Caroline. <laughs> Where it began. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. I can't begin to know it, but then I know it's growing strong. First there was spring, ah, then spring became the summer. Who'd have known it can... Well, sorry, I could have just gone on there. Hands, touching hands, reaching out, touching you, touching me. Da, da, da. Sweet Caroline ba, ba, ba. Good times never seem so good I'd be inclined ba, ba, ba. 
To believe they never would. Hey, I'll do that. <laughs> My favourite song. Yeah, do some karaoke halfway through. Why not? Hmm. I like that, and I also like uh, Baby Got Bat by Sir Mix a lot. <laughs> I like big butts, and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't do nine. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll come back over here. The best way to impress a woman is to compliment her, as in, Cor, you're a fast runner, you nearly got away. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that no means no, but what does it mean when they shout, help? means the gags come loose. <laughs> Two things really annoy me. You know when you buy stuff and it comes in that super hard plastic that you cannot get a start on? Do you know the stuff I mean? You, and you end up chipping a tooth. And then you go and get scissors. <laughs> You'd never dream of getting the scissors first. You think, I'll try my teeth. Da. Ah. And then the worst thing is when you bought scissors and they've come in that stuff. <laughs> that annoys me, that, and genocide. Oh. <laughs> Backseat drivers, they're all the same. Why are we going into the woods? Please let me go. <laughs> I tell you what I love, 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 and I bet you all love it too. I love the snooze button. Do you love the snooze button? Yeah. Love the snooze, because after eight hours sleep, I'll tell you what I need. A nap. <laughs> Strange but true, isn't it? I wake up in the morning, I'm more tired than when I went to bed the night before. <laughs> I wake up thinking, I'm exhausted. <laughs> How tiring is sleep? <laughs> I need ten minutes just to take the edge off that. <laughs> have you got pets? Who's got pets, yes? <laughs> I can't have sex if the dog is looking at me. <laughs> Those big eyes looking up as if to say, what are you doing? <laughs> and that's why... <laughs> I didn't fuck a dog. We made love. <laughs> I'm a typical guy, I love all sports. Pilates, hopscotch, <laughs> conkers, you name it. <laughs> Any cricket fans in? <laughs> Interesting fact about cricket. Cricket was invented at rugby public school when some boys were playing football and one of the boys forgot the ball and they're all standing in a field and nothing happened. <laughs> I like the developments that have been made in cricket over the years. Initially, there was test cricket. That takes five days of your life that you don't get back to play. <laughs> then there was one day cricket, a vast improvement. Then 2020, that only takes three hours to play. I'm looking forward to cricket 1-1 one, one, and ultimately cricket fucking zero, where no cunt plays cricket because it's fucking boring. <laughs> The Paralympics, that is what sport should be about. <laughs> Did you watch the Paralympics when it was on in Beijing? Inspirational or inspiring global event. About three people saw it, it would appear. I don't know how to describe it to people that didn't see the Paralympics. It's sort of like the Paralympics, it's sort of like a children's book where all the broken toys have a picnic. <laughs> well, you can get off the high moral ground if you didn't even fucking watch it. I had a favourite event, and all the events are interesting, I think, because you're watching sports that you've seen before, sports that you've taken part in, done in a different way because they're being done by disabled people, so you're getting kind of a different angle on it, different rules, yeah? So they're all interesting. My favourite, and you've got to promise me, look this up if you, if you think I'm making it up. Google it when you get home and have a look on YouTube. Treat yourself. It's awesome. Paralympics, the blind football. <laughs> OK, so they get a normal... I'm not talking about Stran Ra. OK, so what they do in the blind football at, the, at their Paralympics, they get a normal football, normal standard-issue soccer ball, they put a bell in the ball, <laughs> and blind people play football. Their spatial awareness is that good, they could tell where the ringing is, find the ball, not only find it, kick it and score a goal. How fucking awesome is that? And Team GB got silver. Gold went to some kittens. <laughs> I don't know how they got into the stadium. <laughs> Presumably no-one saw them. And there was an unfortunate incident when the referee blew the whistle for the final time, someone kicked his face off. 
as you'll be aware, I'm very comfortable talking about disability on stage because disabled people are part of our community, part of our societies, of course they are, but also disabled people are the most patronised group within society. Everyone patronises the disabled, it's like a national pastime. Here's a good example for you. If you've got any building in this country with more than four storeys, there's a limit on the number of wheelchair users that can be in that building at any one time because what if there's a fire? If there's a fire, throw him out the fucking window. <laughs> What's he going to do? Break his back again? <laughs> What's he going to be? Double paralysed? <laughs> you heard about Dave? He's been double paralysed. <laughs> it's pretty bad. He's got to go around in two wheelchairs. <laughs> I heard about a blind guy climbing Everest. I thought, well done, but what for? <laughs> the view? Surely the great advantage of being blind is there's no need to travel. Get a foot spa and a heat lamp, you could be fucking anywhere. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm thinking of starting a charity sending blind kids to Disneyland. Well, telling them. <laughs> no, it's not the same, but my dog, uh, my dog's gone, well, he's lost an eye, and he's got, well, the vet reckons he's got about 30% peripheral vision in his, in his uh, remaining eye. Who thinks I should get the vet to, to put him down? No. Canal it is. <laughs> if he'd wanted to live, he would have won the fight with a badger. <laughs> a lot of men like it when the collars and cuffs match, but I wouldn't want to date a bald lady. That took you a while to get. <laughs> Apparently, women like chocolate because it stimulates them in the same way as sex, which I think goes some way towards explaining the popularity of the chunky Kit Kat. <laughs> I've never found chocolate to be an aphrodisiac. The only way a chocolate bar is going to help my sexual performance is if I use it as a splint. <laughs> or bait. I've got a friend that took me to one side recently. He said, what does it mean if on a first date a girl puts a cheeky finger up your bum whilst fellating you? <laughs> I said, it means there's going to be a second date. <laughs> now, it's been a pleasure talking to you this evening in Glasgow. Firstly, thank you so much for coming out to see the show. I really do appreciate it. Um, well, thanks so much. I mean, it's been lovely. A couple of quick things just before I go. Um, if you've never seen a Punch and Judy show, I don't want to spoil it for you, but the man behind the curtain is a paedophile. <laughs> a lot of people don't think paedophiles should be allowed to live anywhere near schools, but it does reduce their carbon footprint. <laughs> the final thing, if you're scared of paedophiles, grow up. I've been Jimmy Carr. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Glasgow. I don't know if you realise as an audience what that noise means to performers. That simple act of applauding, it's everything you work for as a performer, but that noise could drive you mental. <laughs> Imagine if that happened when you left work. <laughs> you finished a busy day doing whatever you do with your lives, you finish work and 3,000 people go, fucking yeah! <laughs> You'd go a little bit, mm, hello, I'm very special. So to keep my feet on the ground, to stop myself going crazy, I always remind myself, Glasgow, that is less applauding than any of you individually would give to a waiter who dropped a tray. <laughs> it's true, though, isn't it? That is our best thing ever as a nation. <laughs> I, I love it when you're away on holiday. If like you're, you're in the south of France or Spain or wherever, or f Birmingham. <laughs> yeah. But I love it when you're away. You can tell where all the other British people are. Because when a tray goes over in a restaurant, we're the ones going, you clumsy fucking cunt. <laughs> Obviously, it's a family show. 
I've noticed a thing. I go out to see a lot of comedy shows, and I've noticed a thing. Comics tend to do their best stuff right at the end of the gig, and then they leave the audience wanting more. Sounds good, doesn't it? But it doesn't make any sense. Because you, the audience, are left wanting more, and the comedian has fucked off. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So what I'd like to do, because I've given it some thought, I'd like to torpedo this gig with some very unpleasant jokes <laughs> that will offend and upset you all. <laughs> yeah. And then you can all leave thinking, thank fuck that's over. <laughs> You're welcome. Let's begin. If women are so good at multitasking, is it too much to ask? Tickle my balls while you work the shaft. <laughs> half a joke, half public service announcement. <laughs> I often get asked, are you ever going to get married? I don't think I ever will get married. I mean, you can't get married at 16 without parental consent. <laughs> and that's not going to happen. They still think she's dead. That's an unfortunate reaction, because that's only there to warm you up for this one. <laughs> Did you all read that story about the girl that was kidnapped and kept in squalid conditions for 18 years? Did you read that story? Yeah. Was I the only one that read that story and thought, 18 years in squalid conditions? Have a tidy round. <laughs> Make a house a home, you lazy bint. Say what you like about the Make-A-Wish Foundation. They can work to a deadline. <laughs> it's only words, nothing bad's happened. It's not like I've drop-kicked a kitten into an orphan's face. <laughs> once, I did that once. And it was fucking funny, but you sort of had to be there. <laughs> I think I've sorted out the credit crunch. I thought you'd be pleased. <laughs> no, I, I genuinely, I think I've sorted out the credit crunch. You know what the problem is with, it, with the credit crunch? As I, as I, in layman's terms, OK? The trade, the turnover, the cycle of business isn't happening in the way it was because businesses and banks and countries have gone bust and no-one trusts each other. So how are we going to repair this? How are we going to get things started again, get that virtuous circle up and running? I'll tell you what we do. We build a World Trade Centre. <laughs> I can see you sat there with your arms crossed, thinking that's going to be a fucking big building. <laughs> We're going to have two of them. <laughs> I saw the chief of the New York City police on the news. He said, we will never forget 9-11. I thought, what's your fucking home, not your phone number? I do love doing these gigs. I mean, I'm so glad I, I, I recorded the DVD in Glasgow, but the, the, it, these gigs, just the fact that everyone sort of shares a sense of humour, that's such a sort of special thing. Everyone appreciates as well. Everyone gets it. Everyone in this room gets the fact it's just jokes. We're just messing around, trying to have a laugh together. It's just messing, you know. These jokes aren't who I am. I'm actually, I mean, in the real world, I'm quite a generous sort of person. So I realise that makes me sound like a dick. <laughs> but, you know, I'm quite a giving sort of person. I mean, last year I donated a kidney. Yeah. Of course, they wanted to know where I got it from. <laughs> I know it's still warm. Keep it. <laughs> I often get asked... Someone asked earlier a favourite joke or rudest joke. Um, I got asked in Liverpool last year, someone said, uh, favourite pub joke. Someone shouted out at the end of the show. So I thought I'd end by telling you my favourite pub joke. It's quite a rude joke. <laughs> I think you all knew it was going to be fairly rude. But I'll tell you, and then I'll tell you why I'm telling it. Um, I got asked, favourite favorite pub joke in Liverpool, and uh, so I said, I told my favourite pub joke, what's the difference between football and rape? Girls don't like football. <laughs> that is a textbook response, Glasgow. It's a laugh followed by a ooh. <laughs> the interesting thing for me is that that's not two distinct groups of people. There's not one group laughing and another group going ooh. Those are the same people. That joke makes you a little bit schizophrenic. Because <laughs> you don't choose what you laugh at. I'm sure many of you have been disgusted at what you've been laughing at this evening. But you don't choose what you laugh at. It's like a reflex. You just laugh. And then another bit of you kicks in and goes, what the fuck are you doing laughing at that? <laughs> ooh. So I told it in Liverpool. It got a laugh and then an ooh. And then there was a pause. And a woman at the back went, I like football. <laughs> 
Imagine that being your problem with that joke. <laughs> She clearly had time to think, well, we all like it rough once in a while. <laughs> He's got us there. But I also enjoy soccer. Now I'm taking a stand. <laughs> well, as I say, it's been a pleasure performing in Glasgow. I mean, the reason we did the DVD here is because it's sort of the, one of the best gigs of the year. I just, I fucking love it. Um, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, just a couple of... <laughs> Just one quick thing before I go. If anyone wants an autograph or to say hello after the show or to get fingered or to have a fight... <laughs> ..whatever you would like, I'll be down there in that corner. I'm more than happy to wait as long as it takes. Thank you so much for coming out to see me and I'll see you all again next year. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Good night. Thank you. I'm Jimmy Carr, these are my jokes, let's not fuck about. <laughs> before we get started, who's seen me before? Yeah. Who's never seen me before? Yeah. You sound happier. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure this is working. According to Ofcom, the people that make the guidelines for television, according to Ofcom, the most offensive words on TV are the F word and the C word. But I'm live on stage this evening, so I can say whatever the fuck I like. <laughs> and those cunts can't do anything about it. <laughs> I had trouble getting out tonight. I had to organise a babysitter. Uh, I don't have children. <laughs> I just found they're a lot cheaper than escorts. <laughs> She's 17, there's nothing she won't do for 50 pounds. <laughs> sort of half a joke, that, isn't it? Because it's quite funny, but also true. <laughs> when I'm away from home, I sometimes get lovesick. Well, they call it chlamydia. <laughs> I spend a lot of my time away from home, because this is my job. I travel around the country telling jokes to people. I love it. But I spend a lot of my time away staying in hotels, because I have to travel. I was in a hotel a couple of weeks ago, walked into the hotel room. As I walked in there, just on the TV, it said, the adult channel is disabled. <laughs> I thought, that's a bit specialist. <laughs> I'm joking. I was gutted, no spaz porn. I'm sure you've all seen this, Birmingham. On trains, they've got seats reserved for elderly, disabled and pregnant people. Begs the question, who's fucking all these old cripples? <laughs> Do you ever hear anything so dumb, it's almost brilliant? So stupid, it just it takes you a moment to work out what just happened. I'll give you an example. I was on a bus, I heard this girl get on the bus, walk up to the driver and go, can I get a return? And the driver went, where to? And she went, back here. <laughs> It took me like an extra beat to... What's going on? Oh, she's a fucking idiot. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> People worry about their physical appearance. We've all got silly hang-ups. Personally, I worry that one of my balls is bigger than the other two. <laughs> I shave my testicles. 
I call them Brazil nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me giggle. Because it tickles when I do it. The first few weeks of joining Weight Watchers, you're just finding your feet. <laughs> well done. Altogether or not at all on the laughter, I think. <laughs> Feed line, punch line, laugh. Don't fuck about. <laughs> You're getting it late nonsense. Um, are there any ginger people in tonight? We got any ginger people? Yes. Well, seem to have contained the problem there. Good. <laughs> ginger people get given a hard time. People say very unkind things about gingers, but I think you should be destroyed humanely. <laughs> I can talk. Check out the look I'm rocking. I look like a Lego Hitler. <laughs> That's his style. Hmm. When I broke up with my last girlfriend, I said, I said, I blame myself. I should never have let you let yourself go. <laughs> but you have, so you have to fuck off. <laughs> Do you read the Sunday papers, Birmingham? Do you all read the Sunday papers? I like the papers on a Sunday morning. I think it's a nice time to reflect on the last week and also to look ahead for the next week. We read the Sunday papers like the News of the World in, in bed, Sunday morning, a couple of weeks ago, tea, toast, Sunday papers. What could be nicer? What could be more British? Anyway, my girlfriend turns to me. There's some sex scandal in the News of the World, as there invariably is. And my girlfriend turned to me and went, I hope I never find out you're having an affair. I said, me too. <laughs> you could be the moral arbiter on this one, Birmingham. Right? You'd be the moral arbiter on this one this evening. I've got a friend, he got dumped by his girlfriend. She ended their relationship just because he said something. They were, they were making love, they were mid-coitus. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> as he orgasmed, as he, as he, as he arrived, <laughs> ejaculated, came. The most intimate, but also the most vulnerable time for a man, as, as that occurred, as he... <laughs> he said, bang, and the dirt is gone. <laughs> I can see two distinct groups of men. There's some men looking at me as if to say, I don't think that's that bad. <laughs> I think maybe she's overreacted a little bit. And then I can see other men looking at me as if to say, note to self. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be very careful with jokes in the bedroom, because it's quite funny to say to a girl who's sucking you off, it's rude to talk with your mouth full. <laughs> but it's even funnier if she says, well, it's not full. <laughs> Having sex with someone at work is all right, as long as you don't work in a primary school. <laughs> I've got a friend who's a part-time teacher. Well, they're all part-time. <laughs> Are there teachers in? Come on, it's your own time you're wasting. <laughs> Where are the teachers? Give us a shout, the teachers. <laughs> and what was it that first attracted you to um, children? <laughs> Not all teachers, obviously, that would be mental, but PE teachers, they're wrong uns. <laughs> you know what PE is short for? Pedo. <laughs> it's a fact. You can look that up. You know why so many American kids die in high school massacres? It's because they're not allowed to run in the corridors. <laughs> Take your time with that, that's wrong on a number of levels. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed this, Birmingham. It's very difficult to get the first kiss right. You want to be firm, but gentle. You want to be manly, but you don't want to wake her up. <laughs> first dates are very delicate. Is anyone on a first date this evening? <laughs> Is anyone on a first date, no? Yeah, yeah. On your own? <laughs> Seems a little bit suspect, doesn't it? We're going somewhere very special. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I realise women don't masturbate. You just expect us to believe you really enjoy baths. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first, my, well, good luck if you're on a first date. You see, first dates are very delicate, because if you call her the next day, she'll think you're too keen, she'll be put off. 
If you never phone, she'll think the worst of you. So what I do as a compromise is I phone her the next day and call her a slag. <laughs> Sometimes you can sense a friend wants to take things further. Will it ruin the friendship? Things get hot and heavy on the sofa one night, you think, this doesn't feel right. You're my best friend. You're not even allowed on the couch. <laughs> Bad dog, town boy. <laughs> Did I say down boy? <laughs> I've made it gay. <laughs> I fucked a girl with one leg. <laughs> Should have used my cock. <laughs> now I realise this joke does not require a mime. Saturday night in Birmingham, come on. <laughs> I said to my girlfriend, I said, um, I said, you want to experiment with a role play rape fantasy? She said, no. I said, that's the spirit. <laughs> rape is such a horrible word, though. It's such a harsh, brutal, awful word, rape. That's why I prefer to call it a struggle snuggle. <laughs> you couldn't stay mad at a struggle snuggleist, could you? <laughs> Bloody adorable. Um, now, I've been a comedian now for about 10 years. I've been doing this job for about 10 years, and I thought this year, I thought this year, I would try and get a bit better. Not a crazy idea, right? One of the things I was quite weak on was regional accents. Is anyone here good at regional accents? <laughs> no. <laughs> You could barely say the word yes there, so... <laughs> We're not even good at talking, never mind accents. <laughs> but but I, I, I was no good at doing regional accents, and it's one of those things that, as a comedian, it's quite good if you could be good at regional accents, because it's good for telling jokes, but... I thought, well, I'll go away, I'll do some research. This evening, I would like to give you a masterclass in regional accents, because I've discovered the secret, and the secret is this. All you need is a key phrase to get you started in the regional dialect, and then you're golden. Once you get started, once you get it in your head, you're fine. But getting started can be tricky. So I'll kick off with, um, well, I'll tell you what, I'll kick off with Scouse. Any Scousers in? We've got a Scouser over there. Where's the Scouser? Give us a shout. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not going to take your benefits away. <laughs> but, this is the phrase I use to do the Scouse accent. This is the phrase I have in my head to, to get me started in the Scouse. I want some chicken and a can of coke. <laughs> I want some chicken and a can of coke. I want some chicken and a can of coke. A can of coke. I want some chicken and a can of coke. The little head bobble just comes if you say it a few times. I want some chicken and a can of coke. Well, let's make the Scousers feel at home. Let's everyone, on three, I want some chicken and a can of coke. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> Fantastic, Birmingham. <laughs> Bloody well done. I know. Now, obviously, obviously, that's just to get you started. Once you get started, then you can say something properly, authentically, scouts. I want some chicken and a can of coke. I'm going on the rob. <laughs> I've got to get a prezi. It's me gran's birthday. She's 30. <laughs> Anyone in from Belfast? Anyone from Belfast? You're Bel Belfast? Where's Belfast? Hey, Belfast. This is the phrase I use to get the Belfast accent right. Ginger and community. <laughs> The terrifying stare is optional, <laughs> but I find it helps. Ginger and community. <laughs> community. Has more syllables than you thought it had. <laughs> OK, let's try, everyone. Let's go Belfast. Ginger and community. One, two, three. Ginger and community. Perfect. <laughs> you are now all qualified to say, there's a bomb in the car. <laughs> Roller coaster, pooper scooper, umpa lumpa, Kawasaki, four unrelated words, meaningless in all respects, other than if you're trying to do the Geordie accent. <laughs> in 
which case they're a fucking gift. <laughs> Roller coaster. <laughs> Poopa scoopa. <laughs> Oompa loompa. <laughs> Kawasaki. <laughs> this makes me happy. Um. <laughs> All together. Roller coaster. Poopa scoopa. Oompa Loompa. Kawasaki. Perfect. <laughs> Are there any Geordies in? <laughs> no, presumably they're outside with their shirts off fighting. <laughs> but I wonder what the fellas are up to. <laughs> <laughs> Welsh, have we got any Welsh people in? <laughs> My God, we've got an army. Hello, the Welsh. <laughs> Now, I've discovered the secret to the Welsh accent isn't so much a phrase, it's more a state of mind. To do a good Welsh accent, you've just got to sound confused. <laughs> Whose coat is that jacket? <laughs> Whose shoes are those trainers? <laughs> Let's all try. Whose coat is that jacket? <laughs> Whose shoes are those trainers? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> See those two houses? The one in the middle is mine. <laughs> that paper you're sitting on, are you reading that? <laughs> I came out of the shop and there was my bike. Gone. Anyone from Manchester? No one from Manchester. Manchester's pretty, the accent's pretty easy for Manchester. You just need three words. Started. All right. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> See, one of my best friends is from Manchester. He's called Ali. He was named after where he was conceived. <laughs> <laughs> Any Scottish people? We got Scottish? Hello. You're living the stereotype, aren't you, love? <laughs> Obviously, the Scottish accent, probably the best phrase to use is, There's been a murder! <laughs> Chances are there probably fucking has been. <laughs> of course, living in Scotland, the main benefits are unemployment and housing. <laughs> See, the Scouser's ears have perked up. <laughs> like a chavvy meerkat. What? There is a bit of a drink problem in Scotland, I hope you don't mind me saying. Yeah, up there they think I'm a double act. <laughs> and the drugs, you wouldn't believe the fucking drugs. Whereabouts in Scotland are you from? Fort William. Fort William, I don't know where the fuck that is. <laughs> what, what, sorry? <laughs> You've got sort of where an accent meets your speech impediment, I think. <laughs> the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> are you introducing yourself? <laughs> Sorry. Um, didn't mean it. Sorry. But the drugs in the drugs in Scotland. My, up in, in Scotland, they call it methadone. It's called. I can't believe it's not heroin. <laughs> I think the easiest accent in the UK is the West Country because the West Country is just a pirate voice, isn't it? Who can't do a fucking pirate voice? <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'm going on a date <laughs> with my sister. Oh, my mammy doesn't find out. <laughs> I'm cheating on her. <laughs> Are there people in from the West Country? <laughs> hey there. Hi. Right. Hi, right, hello. <laughs> Not being patronising, I just thought it'd be a little treat for you to see a hand with five fingers. <laughs> 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 Now, what would be the phrase? If I was going to try and do the Birmingham accent, what would be the phrase for Birmingham? What would be the thing if I was going to... All right. <laughs> All right. All right. The other phrase that seems to come up a lot in Birmingham is, it's fucking shit here. <laughs> All right, it's fucking shit here. <laughs> Any other phrases for Birmingham? What other? 
What was that? <laughs> that was just all vowels. <laughs> what was it? A yow. A yow, all right. <laughs> a yow, all right. Have you had a stroke? I said I shouldn't really joke about strokes. If I ever have a stroke, I'll be laughing out the other side of my face. <laughs> Are there any other words, any other key phrases for Birmingham? <coughs> what, sorry? Cup of tea. Cup of tea. How am ya? How am ya? How am ya? Poorly educated? <laughs> Have we got any other exotic accents in the room? Is anyone from overseas or any more exciting? Anyone, any, anyone from the UK that we've missed? Any, any other places in the UK? Jersey! Jersey? <laughs> you haven't got an accent, you tax-dodging scum. Who knew there was that much anti-Jersey feeling? <laughs> it was simmering under. Finally, someone said it. <laughs> You're basically French now, fuck off. <laughs> Has anyone else got a different accent that we haven't covered? Essex! Essex? You mugging me off, you fucking slag. <laughs> you fucking toilet. up. Come on, come on. Fucking slag. I don't know how they make Essex men. Presumably, a man fucks a chicken. <laughs> oi! Oi, oi! There's a lot of that going on. Uh, any others? You're Aussie! What, sorry? You're Aussie! Aussie? I can do Aussie. I can do... Yorkshire! Is... <laughs> Yorkshire? It's £25 a ticket. I thought we priced you out. <laughs> Yorkshire? Yorkshire, I say what I like and I like what I bloody well say. <laughs> Whip it, tetley, frugal. Cricket. <laughs> My favourite Yorkshire phrase is tin, tin, tin. Which means it isn't in the tin. <laughs> tin, tin, tin. <laughs> oh, tin, tin, tin. Who do we have? A, who's a, where's Australian? Give us a give us a shout, Australian man. Hey! Are you still fucking there? Where are you? <laughs> I can do Australian. I can do. Is it the Prime Minister or the President? I can re never remember, but I can do Alf from Home and Away. <laughs> Whichever one he is. <laughs> You're acting like a bloody hoon, mate. <laughs> a larrigan, a prize galah. <laughs> Whatever the fuck a galah is. <laughs> well, you, whereabouts in Australia are you from? Melbourne. So you weren't affected by the flooding, were you? <laughs> Is that why you've sat so high up? <laughs> Not taking any fucking chances, but... <laughs> I'm amazed, because people, you know, people lost everything in the flooding because they'd forgotten to tie their kangaroos down. <laughs> Serious. People drowned, and you wouldn't have expected that, because they're all wearing hats with corks on. <laughs> Any others? What, what was that one? Chinese. Ch you're Chinese. <laughs> you don't really sound Chinese, sir. I'll be honest with you. And I think if I did a Chinese accent now, it would, it would, you know, it would smack of razy lacism. Well, that took you a long time, didn't it? <laughs> hang, hang on. Oh, no, got it. <laughs> Any others? Jamaican? <laughs> Jamaican? You know my name is... Are you aware of this? Oh, well, this will be a treat for you. <laughs> I'd like everyone in the room now to say my name in a Jamaican accent. One, two, three. <laughs> Jamaica. 
<laughs> he just went, yay! <laughs> Bomber clock. Clearly got some bomber clots in. They've gone oh, <laughs> right on a bloody minute. Any others? <laughs> Dublin. Where, where's the Dublin? Hello, are you from Dublin? I saw the documentary about your weddings. I thought it was terrific. <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> That's my favourite. You know, I'm a plastic paddy. What they call a plastic paddy. I've got Irish parents, Irish passport, born in Ireland, but I speak and present myself in this way because I was raised and educated in the home counties, which goes to show what you can do when you apply yourselves. <laughs> What's my favourite... My fa do you want to hear my favourite Irish joke? Maybe, I, maybe only Irish people get this joke. I'll tell you and see. What's the difference between a riot and a gypsy wedding? You can't buy a gate at a riot. <laughs> Maybe that's just an Irish thing, I don't know. Well, look, we'll move on. Every year in my show, I write some jokes that require a visual element to be fully enjoyed, and this year is no exception. So what I thought I'd do now is show you some of the pictures I've done to illustrate the next jokes. Do you want to see them? Yeah. Excellent news, because that is what happens next. <laughs> I've had some ideas. I'll kick off with some ideas. I've had an idea for a rape alarm that when you press it, it plays the Benny Hill theme music. <laughs> you know, to make it more of a caper. Some advice for you. The best way to test the temperature of a bath is with a baby's elbow. <laughs> I've had an idea of how to prop up our currency, the pound, against the euro and the dollar. What we do is we print new pounds, and this time the queen is smiling. <laughs> and if things get really bad, tits out, Your Majesty. <laughs> Little joke for you. What do you get if you cross the queen and Prince Philip? Killed in a tunnel. <laughs> Too soon? It's been 14 years, get over it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, point taken, I'll drop that from the Royal Variety. <laughs> I say that, Prince Philip would probably piss himself. <laughs> Although he's 82, he'd probably piss himself anyway. <laughs> Some thoughts for you. When you think about it, a rhino is just a unicorn that didn't moisturise. Gillette. Gillette claims to be the best a man can get. What about a blowjob from twins? <laughs> Whatever happened to Jedwood? <laughs> the speed men shave in adverts. If I shaved at that kind of speed, my balls would be in shreds. <laughs> when I was told I was bipolar, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. A friend of mine's got OCD. For those of you that don't know, OCD is an abbreviation. It's just a shorter, quicker way of saying, I'd be a really annoying girlfriend. <laughs> True story. <laughs> if all the veins in your body were laid out in a straight line, you would die. <laughs> Let's talk about some social issues. My neighbour is noisy and nosy. He's always banging on the walls, shouting, Is anyone there? I've fallen. Is anyone there? <laughs> it's none of your business if anyone's here. <laughs> Still, he's gone quiet now. <laughs> Childhood is now effectively over by 11, which is when the pubs close and Uncle Terry gets home. <laughs> oh, Uncle Terry. I was traumatised as a child. Our priest was cheating on me. <laughs> I just want to reach out to people that attempt suicide and say, come on, have another go. <laughs> keys to the city, that's a weird thing, isn't it, the keys to the city? Of course, they don't have that in Liverpool, do they? You just get given a coat hanger. <laughs> As a fashion statement, socks with sandals says, I'm either a German, a paedophile, or a cunt. <laughs> Quite possibly, all three. <laughs> Apologies to any paedophiles or cunts we have in. <laughs> it's not 
going to be any Germans at a comedy gig. <laughs> health. Let's talk about health. That's important, isn't it? I heard that because of women putting on so much weight during pregnancy, it's a good idea to take off your wedding ring. So I did. <laughs> Posh Spice, Victoria Beckham. She's so thin, she's got to be careful when she has a bath. Because if the water's too hot, she could turn into stock. <laughs> Obese children put a lot of strain on the NHS, not to mention seesaws and swings. <laughs> you know, if things carry on as they are, it's predicted that in 40 years' time, the average toddler will be 43. <laughs> <sighs> I tell you what, let's talk about religion. That couldn't possibly upset anyone. <laughs> if Jesus is the way, and to be a Christian is to be in Christ, then aren't all Christians just in the way? <laughs> Jesus says he loves me, but I worry about the age gap. <laughs> now you'll notice out of deference and respect to our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, I've let him bum me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a Muslim friend who's really religious. <laughs> Feel the tension in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a Muslim friend who's really religious. He knows the Quran backwards, which is handy because that's how you read it. <laughs> Surprisingly well informed and inoffensive joke about the Islamic faith. And that's because I'm not a fucking idiot. <laughs> What are the Christians going to do? Forgive me. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Speaking of Christians, any Catholics in? Yeah. Got a few Catholics? Catholics are a weird bunch. <laughs> Look at the rosary. Basically, anal beads. <laughs> Thank you much. Um, Good. Uh, Excellent. Now, I think the next thing for me career-wise, ladies and gentlemen, will be doing some sort of interview show where I talk to people, you know, this kind of setup, a couple of, couple of chairs, you face off against each other, Parkinson, Jonathan Ross, Graham Norton, those kind of shows. That'd be great to get, but you can't just start doing that on TV like day one. That'd be tricky. So what I thought what I would do on this tour is practice. Get someone out of the audience every night with an interesting job or a claim to fame and interview them and get a bit of practice with the interviewing. So to that end, does anyone have an interesting job or a claim to fame? Oh, God, your hand's gone straight up. What do you do? You were on TV in Poland. I will take that to mean you work in the adult film business. So you've been on Polish TV. Okay, well, that is a claim to fame. Well done, you. And, and Polish radio. Well, finally. That's fucking sealed the deal. <laughs> Okay, any, any other claims to fame? Interesting jobs? Any others? I mean, it could be from anywhere. It's... You're a priest. Who's a priest? <laughs> You're a priest. I'm looking at you. I'm thinking you might have had some dealings with priests. <laughs> just stand up, just for a second. Just turn around, just so people can see you. See? I mean, am I... Am I being cynical? <laughs> or is he definitely not a fucking priest? <laughs> Any other interesting jobs? Shop. What, sorry? I own my own pizza shop. You own your own pizza shop? Yeah. <laughs> you sound fucking chuffed with yourself. <laughs> I own my own pizza shop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a massive problem with obesity in this country. You should be fucking ashamed. <laughs> Pizza, well done, well done. And, and, and you, the best pizza, you say? Voted best pizza in Britain. Voted best pizza in Britain by you? <laughs> well, what? Best independent pizza. Best independent pizza. What, what, what? I didn't care the first time. <laughs> you can. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Any other unusual jobs or claims to fame? I'm a funeral director. You're a what? A funeral director. A funeral director? <laughs> Love. <laughs> Do 
your voice couldn't go any better with your job. <laughs> He's fucking dead. <laughs> How am you? Dead. <laughs> fucking shit here. <laughs> okay, so funeral director, that's pretty, that's interesting. I like that as a job, that's fa fascinating. Any other interesting jobs? What's your name? Caroline. Caroline, what do you do, Caroline? I work in TV. You work in TV? What, what do you do in TV? I work on You work on what, sorry? Holby City. You work on Holby City? Uh, uh, <laughs> well done, I love it. <laughs> I love what you've done with Holby City. I think the fucking genius move with Holby City recently was, was casting Hugh Laurie and changing the location to America. <laughs> well done, you. I think we should talk to the funeral. Should we talk to the funeral director? <laughs> funeral director, what are the chances of you getting down here? Don't fucking jump or we'll have to bury you. <laughs> but if you can make your way down to here, then we could talk to funeral director. That sounds exciting. While he's making his way down... Yeah, give him a, a smasher. He's making his way. While he's, while he's making his way down, because it's a big old venue, he'd take a minute. Any other claims to fame in the room? Any other, any other exciting? Paleontologist. You're a what? Paleontologist. You're a paleontologist yes. in Birmingham. <laughs> Just in case any dinosaurs... It's, it's dinosaur bones, yes? Yeah. And you, you look at those? Not just dinosaurs. Not just dinosaurs? What, have you got another part-time job in Asda, have you? <laughs> what, what else do you look at? Different fossils. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure paleontologists, I'm sure that's a brilliant, wonderful scientific thing to do, but I did a project on dinosaurs when I was six, and I loved it. I was very excited, and I did lots of pictures, and I stuck them in, and I did a whole project on dinosaurs, and I loved them. And then what I did, and this is an interesting note to you, I grew up. I'm still doing my dinosaur book. I like it. <laughs> What's it well, I'll indulge you. What's your favourite dinosaur? A velociraptor. A velociraptor. Yeah. Because of Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you might as well have said Barney. <laughs> <laughs> Grow up. Um, where the fuck is this Undertaker gone? <laughs> I'm slightly worried that there's been a death in the village <laughs> and he's been called away. <laughs> Where the fuck is he? <laughs> Where the fucking hell did you come from? <laughs> come and say hello. You're a funeral director. Hello, how are you? Very nice to meet you, sir. Come and say hello. <laughs> right, how are you, sir? Have a sit down. I'm all right. What's your... <laughs> Sorry. How am ya? <laughs> Are they too bad, me old booker? Okay, you're not a gangster rapper, so just hold that like a... <laughs> hold that like a normal human being. Okay. <laughs> what's, what's your name? I didn't even get your name. John. John. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, I'll set this up properly. Hello, my name's Jimmy Carr, and I'm joined this evening by John, the funeral director from Birmingham. <laughs> John. <laughs> tell us, then, what does your... What does your sort of what does your average day involve? Uh, Making coffins and doing funerals and doing funerals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Making coffins. Yeah, yeah. Collecting uh, deceased. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slightly terrified by you. <laughs> how, how, how do you, so you collect the body? So in a hearse or in a just the back in of a, a transit? In a private ambulance. Sort of like a transit, but a bit more sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> a bit more sophisticated. When you say a private ambulance, is it just a transit with ambulance written on it in pen? <laughs> in dirt? <laughs> not really, no, not, not quite a lot. OK, so, so you go and collect them from the... Fa so you have to turn up all kind of, yeah. you know, in a black suit and stuff, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You... That's why I'm wearing this, so nobody recognises me. <laughs> they're not going to recognise you anyway, cos they're dead. <laughs> I just I can't believe I'm here with you, nice one. <laughs> this is unreal. Man. Must be lovely to meet someone who's still breathing. <laughs> lovely fucking change for you. Um, 
Do you get involved in the embalming? Uh, uh, not so much, no. When I first started, I had a bit of, you know, I said, well, paint with the grim stuff, but not so much now. I've been doing it. I've been doing it years. Sorry, so not so much now. No. It sounds like there was an incident that stopped you from doing it. No, no. It sounds no. like they went, hang on, get away from that. That's not oh, for no. eating. <laughs> no, no. I, I tend not to do much with the bodies anymore. Like, if that's the wrong, if that's the right thing to say. You don't do so much with the bodies no. now. No, no, no. I'm more to do with coffins and funerals and. Now, have you you work in this industry? Is there any... Now, necrophilia is something that's talked about. <laughs> I'm only asking. Because cause people think they're going to get away with it, but ultimately, you know, they'll get caught because some rotten cunt will split on them. <laughs> it's my necrophilia joke, everyone. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> well, I've been caught yet. You haven't been caught yet. <laughs> Do you want to hear my favourite, like, funeral joke? Well, not Undertaker joke. I don't know if this is, like, based on a true thing, but uh, you, you might know this, even. They're, they're an old lady, beautiful, nice old lady, and, uh, she, she, you know, she, her husband's died. And she goes to the funeral parlour where, where you would work on it, and she's talking to the guy that does your job, and she says, he's beautifully laid out. She said, oh, you know, that classic sort of thing, oh, he's never looked better, he looks lovely, but... But I wanted him to be in his blue suit, and you've got him in his brown suit. Could you, could you put him in his, in his blue suit, not his brown suit? And the guy says, not a problem, madam. And then leans out the door and goes, change the heads on two and four. Because <laughs> presumably, once you're burying them, do, do things get stolen? Do, do like, because people get buried with jewellery and stuff, do things No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, nothing like that. Nothing like that. It's a nice watch, man. <laughs> 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 and what do you, uh, you live in Birmingham? Uh, well, Cried well, Leaf, just outside Birmingham. <laughs> black country. In the black country. Racist. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, what's that? That's an interesting thing. How did you get into it? How did you get into being a. Uh, I did from a work experience when I was at school. You did your work experience. Yeah. It sounds like you turned up to that meeting late. <laughs> What's left, sir? Well, you're going to be working with corpses. <laughs> that's, quite, that's quite a cool thing, though, isn't it? Sure. Has anyone ever woken up? Because <laughs> <laughs> you hear stories about something to do with fluids in the spine. You hear stories about people kind of bolt upright. In... Oh, no, never. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. You just position them how you want, you're away. <laughs> <laughs> John, well, look, you've come up and shared a bit about what you do, and I think that's an interesting thing to do. It's a, like, it's a life less ordinary work as a funeral director with the kind of corpses and things and, and death. You've got to deal with it. Hard part of life, but whatever. Um, I, feel, I feel like I should give something back. And the thing that I'm good at is writing jokes. I'm good at doing sort of one-liners. So I'd like to do a joke for you about... any. It's sort of like my party piece, John. It's what I can do. What I can offer the world is jokes. So what would you like a joke about? Could be anything at all. Could be funeral directing, could be getting married, could be anything you want. Anything at all, I will write a joke from, like, off the top of my head, just really quick. Drum and bass music. <laughs> why, did, why did the lion get lost in the forest? I don't know. Because jungle is massive. Yes! <laughs> black, black, black! <laughs> <laughs> I think, that was, I think that was too easy. I think that was too easy a thing. So why don't we go for something else? Go for something more difficult. More do anything at all. It can be as abstract as you want. Motorbikes. <laughs> all right, okay. Okay, so two motorcycle guys, like bikers, like, like Hells Angel bikers, right? Two guys, massive bikes. Okay. The, the, uh, walk into a bar. They're all in the Harley Davidson kit or whatever. Helmets on. Walk into a bar. Barman sees him coming. The barman goes, "Drinks, gentlemen," and and, and the bikers go, "Cheese and onion crisps." Because <laughs> there's two of them. There's two of them. 
That's pretty good as an outfit. And now I should probably just, just And I but we don't John, we don't this isn't like a setup thing. I didn't I don't know you, right? So like, off the top of my head, it just you said bikers. You could have said anything. Or motorbikes and I did bikers. And off the top and two of them and then Brilliant. It's John everyone, give him a round of applause. John, thank you so much. Really appreciate it coming up, man. Thank you so much. Hey, oh, you want to go back there? You can go around that one. Thanks, man. John, everyone. <laughs> oh. I very much enjoyed my brilliant motorbike joke. <laughs> there was no joke there, John. We're just fucking with you. <laughs> That's the nicest man. I hope when I die, he buries me. <laughs> Don't interfere, John. <laughs> Leave that alone. <laughs> Didn't like it when I was alive. <laughs> <laughs> right, more on me. Um, my girlfriend said to me during sex, she said, did you remember to lock the front door? I said, yeah, there's no way you're going to escape. <laughs> I had a relationship with a blind girl, which was rewarding but challenging. It took me ages to get her husband's voice right. <laughs> You didn't see that coming. <laughs> Neither did she. <laughs> Who picks up guide dog shit? <laughs> Some young women drink so much they black out and can't remember what happened the night before. If that's you, don't worry, love. I made a video. <laughs> I shouldn't joke, my granddad was an alcoholic. We used to call him Alco Pops. <laughs> I remember he used to press flowers. Well, I say that, he used to fall over a lot in the garden. <laughs> Have you all been to the cinema recently? Has everyone been to the cinema? Yeah. See, there's an advert now in the cinema telling you not to buy pirate DVDs because it's not the real cinema experience. And then it goes on to say, because if you buy a pirate DVD, someone might get up in the middle of the film and go for a piss. And you think, yeah, that is annoying. But it's a lot like being in a cinema. <laughs> My ex-girlfriend bought me the Kama Sutra last year as a gift, which put me in a very awkward position. <laughs> I'd like to talk about a sex act that I don't fully understand. Are you all familiar with the 69, yes? No, I like the 69 as much as the next man. <laughs> Hoping he is a man, that would be terrible. <laughs> I like the 69, but I don't, I don't really understand it because it's an incredibly intimate thing to do with another human being. But how does the 69 ever occur? It only ever happens when, when the, the man says to the woman, would you do that thing that I like? And the woman goes, yeah, all right, but only if you do that thing that I like. And the man goes, not a problem, away you go. And the woman says, no, because the last time I did the thing that you liked, you were a little bit sleepy afterwards. You fucked off to sleep. You said, we'll call it a 68. It's like a 69, but I owe you one. I like everything about the 69, apart from the view. <laughs> the perineum, or taint. I like to call it the Amanda Holden. <laughs> because like Amanda Holden, on Britain's Got Talent last year, it's the bit between the arsehole and the cunt. <laughs> Piers fucking Morgan. He's interviewing people now. When I said I wanted Piers Morgan to get Parkinson's, I didn't mean his fucking job. <laughs> You shaking your head at a Parkinson's joke. That's inappropriate. <laughs> right, let's try some rude stuff, see if we get along. <laughs> Lady wind. Queefing. Fanny farts. <laughs> the expulsion of air from the JJ during sexual intercourse. <laughs> A cunt grunt. <laughs> there are two main responses when a queef occurs. Some couples, it doesn't matter how gnarly or squelchy the noise, they deny the queef. <laughs> Did you hear anything? No, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> and they move on. Some couples, it's a funny little noise, they have a little giggle, they move on. Not a problem. I like to go a third way. I like to pretend the vagina is talking to me. <laughs> What's that? There's a boy trapped down a well. <laughs> I like to think of myself as the vagina whisperer. <laughs> what? 
happened? Are you getting a phone call? There's a Scottish lady getting a phone call. I imagine the drugs are arriving any moment. <laughs> All right. You switched it off and it rang anyway. <laughs> well, I'm not buying that fucking story. <laughs> Don't worry, it's OK. It's only a phone. Don't feel bad. It's a what, sorry? It's a late alarm to come and see me. Well, come and see me an hour fucking late. <laughs> You're not the one I booked for the interval, are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult to get dirty talk right. Have you noticed this? It's very difficult to get dirty talk right. Like in a long term relationship, it's fine because you know where your boundaries are, you know your partner. But on a one night stand, fraught with danger. I've got a story concerning a friend of mine. He's quite good at pulling. We were all at a party together and he pulled a girl that none of us knew. Ended up back at her place that night having sex. Well done him. High five. <laughs> so he told us the story the next day. He said she started it. They were, they were having sex, she said, talk dirty to me. Or more accurately, talk dirty to me. <laughs> so from the roller decks of filth in his head, he came forth with this. And this would be fine for many of the ladies here. Within the confines of the bedroom, within the boudoir, this would be an okay thing to say. With a long-term, loving, trusting partner. On a one-night stand, maybe not. He said, you love it, you slut. <laughs> She said, I'm not a slut. <laughs> and there was a very awkward moment. Awkward as moments can be when you've just insulted someone, your balls deep in. <laughs> he apologised profusely, needless to say, and they moved on. <laughs> I imagine there's a story there, madam. <laughs> well, you know how when you've got a phrase you're not meant to say, it's all you can think to say? It's on the tip of your tongue. So, like, two minutes later, right, my friend, he somehow lost track of what he wasn't meant to say. Says it again. <laughs> you love it, you slut. She said, I'm not a slut. And he got into an argument with her. He didn't mean to. It was like a reflex. When she said, I'm not a slut for the second time, he went, well, we have just met. <laughs> she said, you don't know me. He said, well, that just proves my point. Are there any couples in this evening? Give us a shout the couples. Yeah. Oh, lots of couples in tonight. This is a bit silly, I think. Uh, but for Valentine's, I got my girlfriend sex vouchers as her present. <laughs> I didn't realise they were transferable. <laughs> Turns out they accept them at her work. <laughs> you get to the stage in a long-term relationship where you want to experiment sexually. But, you know, it can be awkward. And what if she finds out? <laughs> I'm 10 years into a relationship now. Anyone be there anyone longer than 10 years? Yes. What's the longest we got in the room? 13. Th 13? 26. 26. Anyone more than 26? 28? More than 28? How, how long? For, sorry? You, you've, been you've been together for 43 years? <laughs> I think. Come on, 43 years. <laughs> now, I obviously... I don't know what it's like after 43 years. I think that's an extraordinary commitment, especially in this day and age. That is quite something. But I don't know if it's the same for you, because I've only been together with my girl for 10 years, but things have got quite predictable in the bedroom. Now, when I lower my entire ball bag into her mouth, <laughs> she is pretty much guaranteed to wake up. <laughs> same? Oh, you couldn't see that? He just went, yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> you look worried on their behalf. They've been married 43 years. Don't panic. They've tried everything. <laughs> Who, what's your relationship with them? What, how do you know them? That's your mum and dad. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> well, I hope the image of your dad teabagging your mum hasn't... <laughs> I hope. I, for one... <laughs> I don't know about looking your parents in the eyes again. I don't think you'll be able to drink tea. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Shit, sorry. This will be hard for you to believe. I used to be a gentleman. I didn't used to talk about my sexual exploits, even with close friends. Never kiss and tell. Always just keep, you know, keep it private. It's private life for a reason. Private. Now, I'll talk about anything. 
It's great for me because it's a catharsis, but also I think it's good for everyone because you talk about things, everyone feels a bit more open and a bit more normal because, you know, there's weird things. Here's an example of an intimate detail I don't mind sharing with you. My girlfriend can't have orgasms during intercourse, but it's not a problem because I can. <laughs> I gave my girlfriend an orgasm and she spat it back in my face. <laughs> when my first girlfriend choked to death, it was a terrible blow. <laughs> I had to finish myself off. Inequalities between the sexes, and I think it's universally acknowledged men get an easier deal in our society than women. But I can think of an example where men get a very raw deal. You know, early on in a relationship, before you live together, when you're just kind of staying over each other's houses, very exciting phase in a relationship, in the history of the world, no man has ever been staying over at a girl's house and found a vibrator in her bedside drawer, and there's been a problem. There is only one reaction on record, and that is as follows Oh, hello. <laughs> Cheeky. What is she like? <laughs> but when she finds a latex vagina in your sock drawer, <laughs> there is hell to pay. <laughs> Explanations must be made. <laughs> I say sock drawer, it's actually the office. <laughs> I say latex vagina, it was the receptionist. <laughs> right, let's hear it from the, uh, the men of Birmingham. Give us a shout, the men. <laughs> Specifically, give me a shout, the heterosexual men of Birmingham. Yeah. Same voice is just a little bit lower, because you've got... <laughs> have you all, have you had the conversation, the pub conversation, the classic pub conversation, if you had to sleep with a man, who would it be? Have you had that conversation? You had that conversation? You haven't had that conversation? I will save you the embarrassment, so I'll tell you what happens in that conversation. So you're in the pub with a mate, having a drink, talking about love and life, whatever. Out of nowhere, your mate goes, if you had to sleep with a man, who would it be? Well, I wouldn't, so it wouldn't be anyone. <laughs> but if you had to, who would it be? Well, I wouldn't, so it wouldn't be anyone. But if you had to, though, well, I wouldn't, though, so no one. But if you had to, well, I wouldn't. But if you had to, sleep with a man, who would it be? Well, I wouldn't. But if you had to, though, well, I wouldn't, though, so no one. But if you had to, well, I wouldn't. But if you had to, though, well, I wouldn't, though. But if you had to, though, well, I wouldn't. But if you had to, I wouldn't. If you had to, I wouldn't. If you had to sleep with a man, who would it be? I wouldn't. But if you had to, I wouldn't. But if you had to, though, well, I wouldn't, though. But if you had to, I wouldn't. If you had to, well, puff. <laughs> I got accused of being gay the other day. I was on stage doing a gig and I had a pink shirt on and someone accused me of being gay. I went, gay, it's a gay shirt, pink shirt, gay. I can't think of a more masculine colour for a shirt than a pink shirt. Because a pink shirt shows the world you don't know how to put a wash on. <laughs> what could be more masculine? I often get asked, what celebrities have you been with, have you, have you slept with? And I don't want to give it the big one, but it was years ago, so it probably doesn't matter if I say. Do you want to know? Yeah. Yeah. Gary Glitter. <laughs> <laughs> have any of you seen my impressions? Have you seen any of my impressions before? I don't do many. I do, I do a few. Um, I'll, I'll do one for you now. Um, are, there any, um, are there any lesbians in? Does anyone enjoy smashing pasties? <laughs> huh? Are there any lesbians? There must be some lesbians, surely. What, is there a pool tournament on? <laughs> well, where are the lesbians? Are you up there somewhere? <laughs> oh, there's, there's some lesbians up there. Are there lesbians over here? Hello, girls, how are you? You all right? Very nice to have you in. The impression that I do, though it's more a piece of physical theatre than an impression per se, but it's the... Um, hang on, the cameraman's coming to get the lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's more a piece of physical theatre than an impression, but it's actually it's, it's the breakup of a same-sex relationship between two women. And I think it captures the emotional turmoil and the anguish when love breaks down. When you still love that person, but you're no longer in love with that person, and you've got to go your separate ways. Would, would you like me to perform it for you now? OK. Give me, just give me a second here. <laughs> 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 oh, what did you think was going to happen? 
I feel duty bound now. To, what's your name, madam? Shiral. Sh what? <laughs> Shiral. Shiral. OK, fine, Shiral. <laughs> sure, we'll go with Shiral. And who, who are you with? Who's, who's the other half? Rosie. Hi. I feel duty bound to ask you the question I've asked every lesbian I've ever met. What would it take to get you back on solids? <laughs> Oh, I've got a maybe, yes. <laughs> I'm two Bacardi breezers away. Come on. <laughs> I often get asked about heckles. That's a very common question for me. People want to know what's your favourite heckle, what's the worst heckle, that kind of thing. Um, I, I was doing a gig last year uh, on the Rapier Wit Tour, the, la the last tour, and uh, I was doing a joke about the Paralympics. Now, when you're doing a joke about the Paralympics, you've got to be a little bit careful when you're setting up a piece of material like that that you're not fuck-witted disrespectful. So I was set, setting it up quite carefully. I'd got one sentence in. All I said was, my favourite event at the Paralympics. And this guy at the back of the room, quick as a fucking flash, went, cripple jump. <laughs> I wish I hadn't, but I fucking pissed myself. <laughs> the other one I loved. I was doing a gig last year in Cardiff. And uh, front and centre, this guy front and centre where you're sitting there, madam, out of nowhere, 20 minutes into the gig, he just went, dragon. <laughs> so there wasn't a massive pause before he said dragon. That was just to let you know what happened there. In my head, I had to go, whose court is that jacket? <laughs> to get it started in my head. But 20 minutes in, he just went, dragon. <laughs> I went, what? He went, dragon. <laughs> I went, yeah, but what do you want? He went, I'd like a joke about a dragon, please. <laughs> and he said it like I was the cunt for turning up in Wales without any dragon-based humour. <laughs> So in the, in the interval, I felt duty-bound to go and write a joke about a dragon. Do you want to hear my dragon joke? Yes. Okay. Two dragons walk into a pub. <laughs> Don't panic, John, it makes sense. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> oh, I love John. I'm just imagining a funeral cause, you know, what do they call it when the funeral, when the, all the cars? Procession, procession yeah, a funeral procession with drum and bass. <laughs> Has your hearse got blue lights underneath it? <laughs> I think that'd be quite good, that looking like, like it was haunted. <laughs> <laughs> Two dragons walk into a bar, one says to the other, it's hot in here, the other one says, shut your mouth. Now, I thought what we might do this evening, Birmingham, obviously you've all come out to see the show this evening. I'm very grateful for that. I love my job. I love the fact you come out to see me live. But we're all sort of friends here, and you've bought tickets to come and see me at the show. So I tend not to get heckled in the way that I used to get heckled when I used to play the clubs. When I used to play the clubs, you were unannounced. The, you know, the venue was bigger than, than the name, so people would come along, they wouldn't be invested. If they didn't like it, they would shout rude things out. I used to love that, proper aggressive heckling. I thought, well, why don't we? Because yeah, people tend not to do it at these kind of gigs because people don't want to fuck up the evening for themselves or for anyone else. <laughs> Hold your horses just one second. <laughs> people tend, one notable exception, people tend not to want to fuck the gig up. But I thought it's quite nice, it's quite a fun thing, heckles. So why don't we have a heckle amnesty, a little two, three minutes where you can just fill your boots. If you've got something abusive to shout, <laughs> have at it. <laughs> Have you actually got Tourette's? That was, that was so quick. Can't fuck bum. And fuck bum, that's such a weird thing to shout. Fuck bum. Like the rudest words you know. Fuck, cunt bum. Any other heckles? What, sorry? Peter K was sold out, so you had to come here. Unlucky. I bet he wouldn't have called you a cunt. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not Peter Kay. <laughs> cunt. <laughs> it's a very different kind of show. Peter's show's good too. Um, any other heckles? My crisps tasted rubbish. <laughs> Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> I became Latino there for a second. <laughs> no, you didn't. 
<laughs> yeah, I did. I had crisps. Did you see? I had crisps. Jimmy Con Carney crisps. The good people are walkers for comic relief. They brought out a flavour of my crisps, and it was me and Al Murray and Frank Skinner and Stephen Fry. And then they made these crisps, and every packet they sold, they gave five pence to the starving people in Africa. And I said to them, why don't you just send them the fucking crisps? <laughs> got to make more sense, hasn't it? Because they can't be as fussy about the flavours. <laughs> if you're starving, you're fine, aren't you? Well, these are a bit... Nah, fair enough. <laughs> Any other heckles? When's the comedy on? When's the comedy on? <laughs> When's the comedy on? Really? What's your name, sir? Uh, I remember. <laughs> What's your name? David? Yeah. What's your favourite colour, David? Blue. Blue, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like the fairest way to deal with you, David. There are so many things I could say. <laughs> Number between one and eight, David. Six. Six. Okay, and you said to me, when's the comedy on? <laughs> It says, it says, if you want my comeback, you'll have to scrape it off your mum's teeth. <laughs> These things don't lie, David. These things don't lie. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. She swallowed the lot. <laughs> Any others? What, sorry? I've got, I've got a big nose. What are you, fucking retarded? I, I mean, I literally don't have a big nose. That's a weird hat. That's like an insult you've heard someone else use. And you've gone, I've got a big fucking laugh. That's going to work best with a comic with a big nose. What's your name, sir? Thomas. What do you do, Thomas? You're a student. What are you studying? Mathematics. <laughs> Are you at school, Thomas? <laughs> I don't know if we should continue this any further, because it's starting to feel like grooming. <laughs> Are you at school? Yeah, I'm at school. <laughs> you got a big nose. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> any other heckles? <laughs> oh, what was that? That sounded good. Go on, what was that? <laughs> what was it? <laughs> oh, I'm a paedophile. I was just fucking chatting to him. I've done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Any others? Yes. yes. <laughs> Dad? Any, any other heckles? Dino. What, sorry? <laughs> Posh prick. <laughs> Posh prick seems a bit harsh. <laughs> what's, uh, what's your name, sir? Miles. <laughs> Miles. <laughs> and you think I might be a bit posh? <laughs> All right, Miles. What's your favourite colour? Blue. Seems like the fairest way to deal with this. <laughs> you some... B L U E. <laughs> Number between one and eight, Miles. Four. Four. All right. Ooh. It says if you've come as a cunt, you've won. <laughs> Bit of good news. <laughs> any more for any more? <laughs> Who the fuck has a side party? <laughs> You're going to kick yourself when I tell you. Me. <laughs> I think you know your doctor isn't great if the STI check is a taste test. <laughs> My girlfriend used to smoke after sex, so we started using lubricant. <laughs> I was in bed with a girl recently. She said, I want tonight to be magical. And it was. After I fucked her, I disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> huh. 
I got into an argument with my ex, and uh, in the middle of the argument, she went, what kind of an idiot do you take me for? I couldn't resist. I went, a fat one? <laughs> in my defence, she was fat. <laughs> she didn't get a suntan, she got crackling. <laughs> she was legally required to make a beeping noise when moving backwards. <laughs> She wasn't that big when we got together, but she bloomed. I mean, I've seen girls put on weight before, but she took the biscuit. <laughs> on the plus side... <laughs> just a nicer way of saying it. I quite like a euphemism. Of course, the classic euphemism is if someone's gay, instead of saying gay, you would say, he's a friend of Dorothy's. <laughs> if someone's really fat, I like to say, he's a friend of Greg's. I had a super awkward moment on stage recently. So I was on stage doing a gig. I said, any questions? And someone went, are you ever going to have children? I said, I don't want to make you feel bad about asking, but my girlfriend and I actually can't have children. <laughs> the way we do it. <laughs> so he's trying the other way, because you can't get pregnant in the mouth either. Are there any parents in? We got any parents? Give us a shout, parents. Yay! Has anyone got parents? Yay! You had to think about that. You're an idiot. <laughs> only point about parents is all parents have got a favourite. If your parents told you they didn't have a favourite, all it means is you weren't it. <laughs> Unless you're an only child. If you're an only child and your parents went out of their way to tell you they didn't have a favourite, that is bad. <laughs> With her last child, Angelina Jolie had a very difficult delivery. She wasn't in and had to pick it up from the sorting office. <laughs> in a long-term relationship, it's important to be a good listener. I think she's asleep. I might pop downstairs for a wank. <laughs> You're familiar with the phrase, fuck buddy. Have you all heard the phrase, fuck buddy? Yes? I've got a friend that didn't know what that meant. I used it in a conversation and, and he didn't know what it meant. I had to explain what a fuck buddy was. I said, it's like a friend you have regular sex with. He said, well, how's that different from a normal relationship? <laughs> I said, they're your friend. <laughs> and you have regular sex with them. <laughs> it's like the opposite of a normal relationship. <laughs> I found out the hard way. There's a big difference between hanging out with a mate's girlfriend and hanging out of a mate's girlfriend. <laughs> A lovely turn of phrase, I could get a job on Sky Sports. <laughs> I got into an argument with my girlfriend. She said, you treat this house like a hotel. I said, I have never snorted cocaine off a hooker's tits in this house. <laughs> I told my girlfriend the top she was wearing was too revealing. I said, Jimmy sometimes cries after sex. We, uh, we got into a row. Uh, you'll be familiar with this. If you're in a long-term relationship, this is the kind of scenario for a row that I think happens a lot. We got into a fight on the way back from a party. So we went to this amazing party. It's about 2.30 in the morning. We're driving home. So I'm driving. I haven't had anything to drink. Stone cold sober, driving. She's had quite a lot to drink. I mean, in terms of units of alcohol, she's had an awful lot to drink. But she's not drunk. And I know she's not drunk. I know she isn't drunk because she told me she wasn't drunk 400 fucking times. <laughs> You know, like sober people, don't. <laughs> anyway, the worst thing about this argument, I didn't even say anything. Someone else said something, and she was talking about that, and I just agreed with the fact that the other person said. And it was a fact. It wasn't a point for debate. It was a fact. So I was driving along, right? She's, she's talking a lot. I'm listening a little. <laughs> okay, my bad. But she's telling me about the evening in real time. <laughs> and I was there for most of it, so I don't need to be hearing this. <laughs> A lot of the stories involve me. <laughs> right, so we're driving along, she tells me the story, and she, she got to the point, she said, this, this mutual friend of ours, this girl that we both know, she said, that girl, that girl said my dress was short. I went, yeah, it is. <gasps> <laughs> You're taking her side? <laughs> Why don't you go back to the party? Why don't you drive her home? <laughs> it was short, I mean, it was a really short, it was what I would call a greyhound. <laughs> you call it a greyhound? It was just an inch away from the hair? <laughs> short skirt so like I, I went it is short yeah she went oh you're taking her side when you go back to the party and drive her home then if you fancy her so much try not to mind me you saying I've got fat legs 
suddenly fucking Chewbacca's in the car. Never fucking fancy me anymore. You know the game. What the fuck? There's just snot and. <laughs> Next thing I know, like, within 20 seconds, she's pulling on the car door. We're doing 40 miles an hour, middle of nowhere, 2.30, in the morning. She's going, I'll walk home. I'll walk home. Trying to open the car door. She's opening. She's not wearing a seatbelt because she's pissed. Opening the car door. Safer. Um, <laughs> opening the car door. I just stop the car. Because it's dangerous, right? So as soon as I stop the car, she fucks off out immediately, teetering on heels up the road. No coat, no money, no keys, no idea where she's fucking going. <laughs> I'll walk home, I'll walk home, you don't even fucking care, I'll fucking walk home. I'll walk home. I'll walk home. <laughs> so I have to do the dutiful boyfriend thing of driving along at four fucking miles an hour. <laughs> Come on, get back in the car. It's all my fault. <laughs> it's not my fault, I've done fuck all here. <laughs> Come on, get back in the car, I'll buy you chips. <laughs> Please just get back in the car. Anyway, long story short, I got arrested for curb crawling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think the best thing about a big, passionate argument is tumbling into bed together afterwards and lying in cold, grim silence until dawn. <laughs> Are you asleep? I can't sleep. I'm too full of hate. Any fans of makeup sex in? Anyone had good makeup sex? Give us a shout, yes? Yeah. Makeup sex is pretty awesome, but timing is critical. Because if you get overexcited and you go for the makeup sex too early and the argument's still happening, that is a little bit rapey. <laughs> Let's hear it from the ladies of Birmingham. Give us a shout, ladies. Yeah. Oh, you sounded very good spirits. Do you think you're easy to live with, ladies? Yeah. The vast majority say yes. Well, this is going to be educational and informative. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how easy you are to live with, ladies, and I'm going to do it with a couple of questions, OK? Mm -hmm. Have you ever met a gay man? Yes. Have you ever noticed how happy homosexual men are? How joyful and carefree and full of life. <laughs> we're going dancing, Bacardi Breezers, hiya! <laughs> well, that's what we were like before we met you. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting little fact for you. 3% of all new homes are built specifically for pensioners, and they're called coffins. <laughs> My grandmother, I loved her to death. Smothered. <laughs> I'm joking, I fucked her. <laughs> now, I don't normally do political stuff on my stage show, you know, on the tour, but I saw something that caught my eye recently. It was in Croydon. Anyone in from Croydon? One person down there. I hope you're having a knife crime. Sorry. <laughs> nice time. My, my bad. So it was this thing, it happened in Croydon. I saw it in the local paper down in Croydon, and it was a BNP campaign. Are you familiar with this carnival of cunts? <laughs> The British National Party campaigner was handing out leaflets in Croydon High Street. And you know, when people are handing out leaflets, I mean, handing out leaflets in Croydon High Street for the BNP is the Everest of stupid, needless to say. <laughs> but he's, uh, he's handing out these leaflets. You know, sometimes you don't look at a leaflet when you're, you're in the high street. You just pick it up and kind of oh, take it, and you're a couple of steps before you look at the thing. So this guy picked up a leaflet. Oh, British National Party, that's interesting. Bang. <laughs> and properly connected with a punch. Now, I'm not advocating violence. Never solved anything. But on this occasion, I will let it go because he gave the BNP campaigner a black eye. <laughs> and that is pretty genius. Because <laughs> for that fucker, that's adding insult to injury. <laughs> a lot of planning is going on in London for the 2012 Olympics. Sadly, most of it is being done by Al Qaeda. <laughs> I just don't understand it. Why would you become an Islamic fundamentalist suicide bomber? On the off chance, you might get 72 virgins when you die. <laughs> become a Catholic priest and have them now! <laughs> 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 
Life's for living, am I right? <laughs> My favourite suicide bomber of the last year. <laughs> oh, you're better than me because you haven't got a list. Whatever. Um, <laughs> My favourite suicide bomber, well, I've got a couple that I really like. The Detroit bomber. Do you know this guy that flew into Detroit last Christmas? So he flew into Detroit airport. He had an explosive device in his underpants. The triggering device went off. The explosives didn't detonate. So there was smoke billowing around, but everything didn't blow up straight away. Just smoke billowing. So the other passengers, you can imagine, in America, post 9-11, how they put him out. They didn't run and get a safety blanket and some water and a stewardess. No, they stamped the fucker out. <laughs> in quite a camp flamenco style, if this is anything to go by. <laughs> Possibly with a... <laughs> but, I mean, they fucking ruined this guy. They didn't kill him, but they ruined him. Now, normally, I would say, well, you know what? Fuck him. He was trying to kill innocent people as they flew home for Christmas. Fuck him very much. But my heart goes out to this guy, because his court case is coming up in America in the next couple of months, and he's going to have a very tough time in a court of law defending himself, because the prosecution have got it so easy. The prosecution are just going to go, you telling the truth? Yeah, I'm telling the truth. Were your pants on fire? <laughs> My favourite suicide bomber, though, he was an assassin suicide bomber in the United Arab Emirates, OK? He was sent to kill one man. He didn't, he just killed himself. <laughs> Technically a win for them, but I'm very happy with that. OK, so he, he was sent to kill this guy, and in order to get close to the guy he was going to try and kill, he had to conceal the bomb. He had the bomb concealed, wait for it, up his bum. <laughs> Literally a suicide bummer. <laughs> I mean, if people are going to start putting bombs up their bums, the shit is really going to hit the fan. <laughs> now, I don't know how that bomb was detonated. But I like to think, in this day and age, even someone as fuck-witted as a suicide bomber, even someone that morally retarded, would have seen the opportunity for comedy in that situation. And that bomb, up his bum, would have been detonated something along the lines of... Pull my finger. <laughs> Imagine passers-by going, what did he have for lunch? <laughs> oh, I've got some more pictures. Do you want to see some more pictures? Yeah. See some more pictures. I was going to talk to you briefly about sports, ladies and gentlemen. Chinese gymnast Lu Li is the smallest person ever to have taken part in the Olympic Games. Lu Li was just four foot three inches tall. Wow, we was the second smallest. <laughs> ice dancing. Of course, ice dancing won't be around. Any fans of ice dancing in? Ice dancing, of course, won't be around forever because of global warming. And AIDS. <laughs> Snooker and darts. Snooker and darts have seen their viewing figures steadily decline since the introduction in 1983 of remote controls. <laughs> Just 22% of Liverpool fans reside in Liverpool. The rest are on remand in other cities. <laughs> Wayne Rooney. He's not as clever as he looks. <laughs> Let's talk about technology. Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking is sort of half man, half computer. I bet when he dies, it's a virus. <laughs> He's got medical insurance and Norton. In America, they're called astronauts. In Russia, they're called cosmonauts. And in Britain, they're called balloonists. <laughs> the greatest ride at Disney is the girl that works in the Toffee Apple kiosk. <laughs> Pornography. I'll come to that later. <laughs> if you'll pardon the expression. And the expression, of course, will be that of a turtle shitting. The thing with internet porn is it still has the power to surprise us. I saw something on the internet the other day that really shocked me. It was one man having sex with one woman. <laughs> there was no gangbang, no DP, no anal, no dwarves, <laughs> no three-way, no water sports, no girl on girl, no gagging, no rimming, no granny fanny, <laughs> no DV, no DA, no shemales, no milfs, and no one looked barely legal. It was just one man having sex with one woman. I thought, well, who comes up with this crazy shit? <laughs> 
talk about sex. Adult supervision. To me, adult supervision sounds like the ability to see through bras. <laughs> the average speed of ejaculation is 43 miles per hour, which is why it's so important to keep it away from children. <laughs> 20 is plenty. <laughs> Around children, you've got to be very careful with the language that you use. For example, say fiddlesticks instead of vibrators. <laughs> I don't think lesbians should be allowed to use vibrators. You've made your decision. <laughs> no more sin on the fence. <laughs> Either. <laughs> Hermaphrodites. can go and fuck themselves. <laughs> a transvestite is a man that dresses to look like a woman, and the woman they dress to look like is Jane MacDonald. <laughs> Someone told my girlfriend the best way to improve oral sex was to hum. All I'm saying is the theme from Corrie is not erotic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anal sex for women is like Marmite. It's brown and it smells funny. <laughs> <laughs> Condoms come in packs of three, ideal for married couples, because there's birthdays, Christmas, Valentine's. <laughs> I don't think you should ever treat a woman as a sex object, but I do think you should give them a rinse after you've used them. <laughs> you don't agree? You'd rather be left looking like a plasterer's radio? <laughs> My girlfriend's got a cleanliness problem downstairs. Yeah, the kitchen's a fucking state. <laughs> I'm joking, she's actually got a virulent yeast infection in her vagina. <laughs> Let's talk about relationships. The last relationship I had I ruined by blurting out, I love you too early, which gave away the fact I was hiding behind the curtains. <laughs> People often ask me about most embarrassing moments. It's probably when I first got introduced to my girlfriend's parents. I remember my girlfriend saying, There's the bad man there. <laughs> I don't like the term partner, because it makes it sound like we're fighting crime. <laughs> I don't like the term housewife or stay-at-home mum. I prefer to say, lazy sluts. <laughs> My girlfriend says she's good at doing two things at the same time. If that's the case, why is a threesome out of the question? <laughs> Don't judge me, I improvised. <laughs> it's not that bad, it's got a face. <laughs> I often walk around the house naked till the neighbours chase me inside. Some friends of mine just had a baby, but because of some issues, they had to use a surrogate mother, and because of a medical thing, they had to use a sperm donor. So really what I'm saying is, some people I don't know just had a baby. <laughs> One of the symptoms of having conjunctivitis is that when you wake up in the morning, your eyes are so sticky you can hardly open them. My girlfriend has it a lot. <laughs> Sometimes she gets conjunctivitis on her tits. <laughs> Right, final one of these. This is my favourite joke in the show. I'm going to try not to fuck it up, but I slightly fucked it up last night because I, I giggled halfway through. <laughs> but I'm going to dig deep for Birmingham. Come on. OK. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> when I broke up with my first wife, I didn't want anything from her in the settlement except a pint of milk, four egg yolks, a vanilla pod, an ounce of caster sugar and two fluid ounces of single cream. She mixed the whole lot up in a bowl and she threw it in my face. But on the plus side, I did get custody. <laughs> oh, oh. I'll do. Good. Thanks very much. I think civil partnerships 
a gay. <laughs> Apparently, one of the biggest fears is the unknown, like, I don't know. <laughs> Apparently, taking the dog for a walk is a good way to find a woman. But what if you want to find a woman who's still alive? <laughs> did you read this? Did you read about this American man that's suing his ex wife to get back the kidney he donated to her while they were married? That is taking the piss. <laughs> My father always used to say to me, there's no such word as can't. I said, no, I called you a cunt. <laughs> People claim to be into recycling, but you should see their faces when you rinse out a condom. <laughs> I do a bit of baking. Does anyone else bake cookies and cakes and things? Yeah. I do a bit of baking. My specialty is a brownie with nuts, which I call a scout. <laughs> Come on, where's your sense of fun? Um, do you get annoyed by cold callers? You know, of an evening, you're at home relaxing after a hard day at work, watching TV, flicking through a magazine, the phone rings, it's a strange voice you don't recognise, talking about something you're not interested in. Oh, Mr Jimmy, I have your baby now, you send money quick! You bad man! <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> do you get this? Do you get the public-private phone call problem? So this is when you're at work surrounded by colleagues or in, in the pub surrounded by friends. You get a phone call off your other half and at the end of the phone call they say something that you would normally say something back, like it's like your thing, but you don't want to say it because there's people around, it's a bit embarrassing. So at the end of the phone call goes, all right, bye. <laughs> no, no, you know I do. <laughs> no, there's people around. <laughs> I don't want to. Well, well don't be like that. <laughs> All right, I'll say it. I want to choke you with my cock. <laughs> a charity worker came to my front door and they were collecting for a homeless shelter, so I gave him a cardboard box. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers, am I right? <laughs> I did one of those nude calendars for charity. Yeah, child line were livid. <laughs> I did a gig for Alzheimer's sufferers. It was brilliant. Two hours, one joke. <laughs> I did a gig for Alzheimer's sufferers. <laughs> right, final thought. If only Africa had more mosquito nets, then every year we could save millions of mosquitoes from dying needlessly of AIDS. <laughs> I'd be Jimmy Carr. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Good night. Thank you. Cheers. Nice of you, Birmingham. I couldn't ask for a better audience. It would hurt your feelings. <laughs> well, that's pretty much my show. Um, I thought a nice way to end might be there's a theory in comedy. Lenny Bruce, the American satirist, was the first to say it. He said, the audience is a genius. And the idea is, the audience, you regulate comedy. You decide what a comedian can and can't say on stage. Because if you don't laugh at a joke, it is not socially acceptable. If you do, then just by definition, it is socially acceptable. I thought, well, we could put that to the test tonight. We could start gently, work our way up, and see at what stage Birmingham goes, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Do you want to give it a go? Yay! Okay, all right, well, we'll start gentle, we'll work our way up, okay? So everyone's comfortable. At some stage, people will stop laughing, and then that's the end. Hmm. <laughs> Exciting. Well, we'll start gentle. Pope Benedict. Incidentally, he's called Pope Benedict because he comes with a hollandaise sauce. <laughs> Hang on, that's not a hollandaise sauce. <laughs> Benedict! <laughs> As head of the Catholic Church, Pope Benedict is the boss of every Catholic priest in the world. He's effectively king of the pedos. <laughs> I read about a Catholic priest that exposed himself, so they defrocked him. <laughs> they don't help themselves, do they? <laughs> well, they do, that's part of the problem. This scandal could bring the Catholic Church to its knees. 
You've got to finish that one in your own head. <laughs> Somewhat ironically. <laughs> I personally, I don't think the Pope should worry about the sex scandal. It'll all get sorted out soon enough when Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, comes back from the made up. <laughs> well, you all seem pretty happy with a little bit of Christian baiting, yeah? Should we take it up again? Yeah. Okay. My girlfriend can be really loud during sex. I don't know why, she knows no one's coming to help. <laughs> Fine. Up another gear? Yeah. Treat them mean, keep them keen. You all heard that expression? Yeah. Treat them mean, keep them keen. Treat them mean, you will keep them keen. If that was really true, if that really worked, treat them mean, keep them keen, wouldn't the Jews absolutely adore the Germans? <laughs> Really? A round of applause on a joke about the worst thing that's ever happened? <laughs> ever? Where do we go from there? It's a joke about the worst thing that's ever happened. Hang on. This might offend some of you. <laughs> people say, smug, sanctimonious people, in my opinion, but people do say from time to time you hear them, Princess Diana should have been wearing a seatbelt. If she'd been wearing a seatbelt, she'd be here with us today. To those people I say this, I say, you try snorting cocaine off a cock in the back of a limo while wearing a seatbelt. <laughs> you can't be fucking dumb. <laughs> I saw that little, that little shaky head there, and I presume that was disapproval, madam. But to me, that looked like you were going, it can't be done, I've tried a million fucking times. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we go from there? Okay, so we've had one fucking hell, but everyone else seems fine. <laughs> you better fuck off. <laughs> a child can drown in just four inches of water, but you might as well run a bath. <laughs> that feels like it should have been more offensive than it was. A child died in that joke. But I tend to do wordplay, so you, sort of, you get away with murder with wordplay, literally in that last joke. <laughs> Because people go, well, it's just a joke, it doesn't really matter. Actually, when you talk about real stuff that's happened in your life that's a bit darker, and sort of observational stuff, which people think of as being more sort of family-friendly, but when you talk about real stuff that's happened to you, that's where people get more offended, if it happens to be darker. And, and you know, there's a weird thing where that's where comedy's useful. When bad things happen in your life, you need a bit of cheering up. That's where comedy has a purpose in our lives. Hmm. Let's talk about something that's happened to me recently, and I'm fine talking about it, so I, I don't think it should be a problem for you to hear about it, but it is a little bit more because it is a real thing, it's, some people get a bit edgy, a bit more offended by stuff that's real. My girlfriend uh, recently had a miscarriage, and it was doubly bad because I had to pay for it. <laughs> that feels like we're getting somewhere. <laughs> and I realise an abortion can be a very upsetting thing for a woman. But at the same time, who doesn't get a little confidence boost when they lose a bit of weight? <laughs> well, let's cut to the chase on this, shall we? Let's talk about what you can and what you cannot say on stage. A very good friend of mine, a guy that I've worked with the last 10 years. We're pretty close, we've written jokes together and we, we know each other. He's, he's, he knows that I say this on stage, he's fine with it. But Frankie Boyle, you all know Frankie, yes? Yeah. Now, Frankie got into a lot of trouble last year for doing a joke on stage that contained the word Down syndrome. And I think it's sad. I think it does nothing more than betray his ignorance and insensitivity. What a spastic. <laughs> Why are they called sunshine variety coaches when all the kids on board look the same? Well, if that joke's getting a round of applause, I'm out. <laughs> I'm happy to back away from there. It's a weird thing, though, because I suppose the thing that we've all got in common in this room is we all share a sense of humour. We're all laughing at the same kind of things. It's a weird thing where I laugh the very loudest just before I, I, I have a sense of humour failure. I find that if the closer to the edge, the funniest jokes for me are the jokes that I laugh at, and as I'm laughing, I go, I'm a terrible human being. <laughs> Funny, though. But I'm a terrible human being. <laughs> Do you want to hear the joke that got me? Yes. 
I heard a joke, it's an, it's an Australian joke, just a pub joke from Australia. That gives you an idea of how fucking brutal it is. <laughs> the Aussies came up with it. Are you sure you want to hear this? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll just, I'll cleanse my palate before I tell you this. Like a, like a sorbet. It's like a solero. <laughs> How do you make a gay fuck a woman? Shit in her cunt. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I know. Don't think I don't know, because I know. I, I know. I know. There's no use giving me a look as if I didn't pay £25 to listen to this film. Because <laughs> you did, and you know you did. <laughs> I realise my jokes can often be brutal and cruel. And when you think about the content of what I'm talking about in these jokes, it is unacceptable, frankly. <laughs> but then, the only purpose of these jokes is to make you laugh. There's no message here. No one's learnt anything this evening, have they? <laughs> I fucking hope not. Because, <laughs> I mean, the only purpose for these jokes is to make you laugh for two hours. It's to, it's to release endorphins. That's all I'm doing up here. They're just jokes. I'm just messing around. And some people, some people just like being offended. It's a weird thing. I did a gig in Newcastle last year, and this woman came up to me afterwards at the signing, face like fucking thunder. I went, that was disgusting, rude, juvenile, filth. No better than last year. <laughs> oh, I don't know what the fuck I meant to do with that. <laughs> Bloody crazy fool. Um, sorry, about, sorry about that joke. You realise that joke about the Australian, uh, the Australian pub joke? You realise that's the only joke you will now be able to remember? <laughs> That's the way that works. Whatever the most offensive joke is, is the only one you'll be able to recall. The next time you're at a family wedding or a funeral... <laughs> you do a fucking hell. <laughs> Poor John. <laughs> I've just... I know you're here to collect the body. I've... I've lost my husband. I feel so terribly low. Maybe, maybe a joke would cheer me up. <laughs> How'd you make a gay fuck a woman? <laughs> I'll get me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I haven't been up here on my own this evening. First and foremost, I interviewed him earlier. He's a funeral director. If you die, wouldn't you want to be looked after by him? And when I say looked after, I mean nothing more than what is normal. <laughs> John, everyone, give him a round of applause. Thanks, John. Thanks for coming down. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming out, especially this evening, because it's been sort of, you know, the DVD record, which is always a bit of a nerve-wracking gig. And I fucking love playing Birmingham, and I love coming here, and I couldn't if you didn't buy tickets and come out to the show. So, thanks so much. I really do appreciate it, because I love my job. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Let's crack on, shall we? Uh, good evening, you well? Yeah! Fantastic. I've been described as the hardest working man in comedy. Not that impressive, is it? The hardest working man in comedy. That's like being the best looking guy in the Burns unit. <laughs> no offense to any Burns victims we go in. Are there any in? If there's one, there'll be fucking loads. They tend to stick together. <laughs> So my 
someone came up to me outside and went, I thought you'd be younger. I said, I was. <laughs> I'm 40 years of age, but girls still check me out. I wouldn't mind, but they're so bloody obvious about it, pointing and whispering. Stranger danger. <laughs> Every night after the show, I have attractive women banging on my dressing room door, and sometimes I let them out. Are there any comedy groupies in here this evening? Any gag hags? Any chuckle fuckers? <laughs> the only reason I ask is if any girls come up to me after the show looking for sex, I'm going to have to disappoint you. I mean, we can have sex. <laughs> Just it will be quite disappointing. <laughs> I wouldn't lie to you, it'd be like throwing a sausage up an alleyway. <laughs> More information than some of you wanted, okay. I'm a stand-up comedian, a TV host, an actor, and a writer. People ask me, what's your secret? I'm the M4 rapist. <laughs> it's a joke. I've never been wrongly accused of rape. <laughs> we all like a laugh, yes? Yeah. That's the one thing we've all got in common in this room. We all like a laugh. It's a very British thing, I think, to come out of an evening with the express intention of just having a laugh. Here's a great fact about this country. The average person in Great Britain laughs out loud ten times a day. Not everyone, obviously. If you work in a hospice or with learning disabled adults, it could be ten times that. <laughs> Sky's the limit. Yeah, that's my laugh, which is... I, somebody, someone said my laugh was weird. My laugh isn't weird, it's wrong. Because you're meant to laugh on an out-breath, aren't you? You're meant to laugh on a ha-ha, ha-ha-ha-ha. I laugh on an in-breath, so it's ha-ha-ha-ha. <laughs> Sounds like a goose being interfered with. <laughs> someone asked me the other day, is it fake? Why would you fake that? Ha-ha-ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> They say that laughter is the best medicine, so maybe, just maybe, if we all keep laughing at people in wheelchairs... <laughs> I'm a dreamer, what can I tell you? I was at a show recently, I don't know if anyone's had this experience, I was at a show watching a band and uh, standing just under the fire escape, uh, watching a band play, pint on with a mate, relaxing, and a lady from the venue came up to us in the little waistcoat and the little name badge, came up and went, excuse me, you're going to have to move, because if there's a fire, you're blocking the exit. I said, I tell you what, love, if there's a fire, I'll move. <laughs> Kill retard. <laughs> what did she think I was going to do in the event of a fire? Just stand there going, nobody move. <laughs> Why has everything gone orangey and hot? I don't like it. <laughs> oh, mobile phones off. I should have said that uh, at the top of the show. Mobile phones off. As a courtesy to the other patrons in the auditorium, uh, I say mobile phones. What I mean there is phones. No one's brought a landline, have they? <laughs> Let's face facts, the landline is dead. When the landline goes in our house, there's panic. <laughs> Shit the bed, who the fuck is that? We're both here. <laughs> a lot of people text whilst driving. I'm not excusing it, but we've all done things we regret when we're drunk. <laughs> I saw a thing on the news that said that bad drivers are going to get on the spot £100 fines. I thought, it's a bit sexist. <laughs> Do you understand that? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. I'm not being sexist. How could it be? Some of my best friends are slags. <laughs> <laughs> is, it now, is this sexist? You could be the judge on this. Sorry for being rude, but do you think chat up lines are sexist? No, they're not. They're fun, right? They're, I know they're cheesy, but they're meant to be cheesy. That is their charm. What's that one? I like that one. Um, get your coat. It's cold in the boot of my car. <laughs> I don't know if this ever happened to any of you. I was checking into a hotel recently. It's about one o'clock in the morning after a gig up in Manchester. Walked into the reception area and the guy recognised me. He went, oh, Mr. Carr, we put you in a disabled room. What's the difference between a normal room and a disabled room? And he said, the disabled room's got a walk-in shower. <laughs> it's taking the fucking piss, isn't it? <laughs> I've got a question for you, ladies and gentlemen. Does anyone in this room believe in the supernatural? Ghosts and spirits and the like? Yeah. Quite a lot of you. It's actually easy to tell if your house is haunted. It isn't. <laughs> Grow up. 
that's, that's me being cynical, but that's this job. Being a stand-up comedian, I think, makes you a bit of a cynic. Has anyone in here actually seen a ghost? Well, go on, what did you see, madam? Tell us the story. <laughs> and there was no one there. <laughs> go on, what, what did you see? I'm, I'm not... I make you nervous. You've seen the undead. <laughs> and I make you nervous. <laughs> Doesn't really show me in a good light, does it? Go on. Where were you when you saw the apparition? You were in a friend's house. Right. Her stepfather, Her stepfather was what, sorry? <laughs> I think I may have cracked this case already. <laughs> There's a stepfather involved. <laughs> was there ectoplasm? <laughs> Go on, what happened? Were you upstairs? Were you...? <laughs> you were in his son's bedroom. <laughs> of course you were, love. Go on. Uh, he died at 25 I started seeing this weird shit and I woke her up. Basically. He had died. <laughs> you should have mentioned that sooner. <laughs> and then you started seeing weird shit. <laughs> I'm loving this. <laughs> There's a special name for people that have seen ghosts. Schizophrenic. <laughs> All the best with your future. <laughs> Quite an in-depth story. I'll leave it at that stepfather did something terrible <laughs> and you've recoded that memory. Um, of course, not all fat people are jolly. Some of them are women. <laughs> you shouldn't be mean. Fat girls have got feelings. Mainly they're hungry. <laughs> it's only a joke, isn't it? It's only a bit of fun. I told it the other night and a girl got up and walked out. Well, waddled out. I presume offended, possibly just peckish. <laughs> Whenever I'm in the changing rooms at the gym, I'm always embarrassed by the fact my penis is so much bigger than everyone else's. <laughs> but then, in fairness, it is erect. <laughs> Islamic fundamentalist sex dolls. Do they blow themselves up? In Palestinian passports, under occupation, do they just put Israel? <laughs> that joke is only there to test where the Guardian readers are sitting. <laughs> no further questions, back to the knob gags. <laughs> I do talk about sex a lot in my show. I talk about sex all the time on stage. And a friend called me on it recently, came to see the gig, and he, he went, you talk about sex all the time, are you obsessed? I said, well, I'm not obsessed. But sex is the great universal topic for comedy. It's still quite taboo to talk about it openly in public. Everyone's interested, everyone cranes forward, and there's a lot of tension around sex. And where you find that kind of tension, that's also a great place to find laughter. So sex is a great topic for comedy. But it's difficult to stand in front of you good people and talk about sex without sounding crude. So to try and mitigate that, to try and alleviate that, this evening, if I refer to a vagina at any point, I'll be calling it a twinkle cave. <laughs> As in, so there I was, licking out a twinkle cave. <laughs> while she deep-throated my tummy banana. <laughs> it's nice to be nice, isn't it? Um, I saw a woman wearing a top. It said, super dry, on the front. <laughs> I said, have you thought about lubricants or HRT? <laughs> Maybe a little bit of Aussie charm? <laughs> Are you familiar with the term Aussie charm? Just means... Australian charm, you're welcome. <laughs> Very pleasing look from the ladies of London as if to say, well, I didn't know that had a name, but yes, that does happen. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend bought a T-shirt for £80. That's a ridiculous amount to spend on a T-shirt, am I right? It said D and G on the front. I suppose, fair enough, one of her tits is bigger than the other. ha <laughs> 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 I thought my girlfriend was a slag when she told me I was her 30-second lover, and then I realised she was talking about time. <laughs> there is a minimum comprehension level you may be asked to leave. <laughs> my ideal woman would be a single mum, once I'd finish with her. <laughs> it's a joke, I'd pay for the abortion. <laughs> ah, got you again, I fucking wouldn't. 
But let's talk about something a little bit more serious. It can't all be slapstick abortion stuff. Um, <laughs> my first wife was from Thailand. Well, don't, because you'll, you'll feel bad. It's actually quite a sad story. My first wife was from Thailand, and she died of testicular cancer. <laughs> Probably the best way I could describe it is a twinkle cave was an outie. I saw a transvestite in a miniskirt. I thought, that shows a lot of balls. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear from all the heterosexual men in the room. Give us a shout, all the heterosexual men. Yay! I'm guessing from that expression. <laughs> I can't remember which one heterosexual is. <laughs> I'm not taking a chance. Maybe this is how they recruit them. The most annoying thing my sister does is that show, Chatty Man. <laughs> That's the most annoying heckle that I get at gigs. I like it when people join in, I like a bit of a heckle and a bit of fun. But the most annoying one I get is when I've set up a joke, just about to do the punchline, and someone goes, it's always, invariably it's the same thing, it's always, where's Alan? Where's Alan? It's not my, like, bet noir, it's just a bit annoying. Where's Alan? Where's Alan? <laughs> He's at your house fucking your dad. I think we all knew, including him, I think we all knew that was a trap. <laughs> I could feel you as one going, hold, hold, <laughs> hold. And then one brave soul over there said, no. I'm taking one for the team. <laughs> or rather, your dad is. <laughs> of course, not all gay people are happy, camp and fun. Some of them are lesbians. If you're a lesbian and you didn't find that funny, you're surprising no one. <laughs> Are there any lesbians in? No, my gay dar is pretty much honed in on this, this pair down there. Hello, how are you two? You all right? Yeah. Are, are you, I presume you're a couple? Married, yes. You're married? Oh, well, congratulations. You. Fabulous. How long have you been married? Since October. Since October? My God, it's new and fresh. <laughs> have you even finished consummating the relationship? No. You don't know when you're finished, do you? That's one of the problems <laughs> with your lifestyle choice. We'll just put that on hold. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> well, so you're married, you're committed to each other. Well, it's maybe a crazy question to ask you because you're in this long-term relationship and you love each other, but what would it take to get you back on solids? <laughs> <laughs> She's a definite no and you're a maybe. OK, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love my job. I tell you what, I'm going to do a test and see whether we've got any other sisters in the, in the room, see if there's any other lesbians. Sisters. Like I'm a lesbian, I've got the haircut, come on. <laughs> I look a bit like Katie Lang, I could get away with it. <laughs> but I'm going to test the heterosexuality of the other ladies in the room. Just a simple question to test this. Ladies, have you read Fifty Shades of Grey? Yes. You've all read that book? You love that book. I would describe Fifty Shades of Grey as the ultimate flick book. It was the best-selling book last year. What's the world coming to? <laughs> it was the best-selling book last year. I can prove it. Last year, wettest on record. <laughs> I think it's a very interesting book because, although it's not a great piece of literature, it's more gusset typing, <laughs> it's interesting because it's pornography for ladies. That's what it is, right? And, and, and men, that book is in our houses, isn't it? Fifty Shades of Grey is in our house, and we've not even picked it up. We're not looking at your pornography, ladies. We're not interested in your kind of pornography. We're very happy with the service broadband is providing. <laughs> ladies consume pornography in a very different way to men, and the genders are very different in our consumption of pornography. Here's a fact, gentlemen, that will blow your minds about women's consumption of pornography. Women watch porn films to the end. <laughs> you know why? to see if they get married. 
Well, it's probably as good a time as any to talk about how political correctness works in stand-up comedy. Because some people think it's a free-for-all. You can say whatever you want on stage because of freedom of speech. That is not the case. There are rules and regulations that govern what I do. Basically, how political correctness works in stand-up comedy is if you're directly affected by something or involved in something, you get a free pass. You're allowed to joke about that thing. So, for example, homosexual people can joke about being gay. Disabled people can joke about disability. Black or Asian people can joke about race. Those are the rules. So, these two paedophiles walk into a park. <laughs> Child abuse, there's a touchy subject. <laughs> I saw a headline in the paper, it said, Please smash paedophile ring. <laughs> I thought, good, let's see how they fucking like it. <laughs> Have we got any teachers in this evening? Is there show any teachers? Oh, loads of teachers in. You work bloody hard, don't you, teachers? Half the year, five hours a day. <laughs> I'm not knocking it, I could never do what you people do for a living. Not because it's difficult, I wouldn't pass a CRB check. <laughs> I've actually got a bit of a soft spot for teachers. I used to go out with a teacher and she was lovely. But if ever I wanted sex, she always insisted to put my hand up first. That is ruder than it first appears. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, <laughs> have we got any special needs teachers in? You teach special needs? Oh, there was a woo over there. What's your name, madam? Danielle. Danielle, very nice to have you in. All I was going to say about special needs teachers is you are the best and the brightest, in my humble opinion, the best and the brightest teachers. Because I can prove it. We all know teachers socially, yes? Yeah. Everyone knows teachers. And the teachers are always moaning on about, oh, I've got homework to mark this evening. <laughs> Not you, hey, Danielle? <laughs> You're not grading potato paintings, are you? Fuck it. <laughs> your evenings are your own. Fair play. <laughs> Is that a little yay? <laughs> See, the other teacher's looking all fucking annoyed. I didn't think of that. <laughs> what, sorry? You used to teach at my, my school, at Burnham Grammar. Did you? Not when I was there, surely. No, unless you moisturise a lot. Are you, where are you from? <laughs> You're from, you're from Belfast, right. Ginger and community. <laughs> I was just saying what you said to me back. I... <laughs> oh, how come you're teaching over here then? Are you in the witness relocation scheme? What the fuck happened? <laughs> Fucking grass. <laughs> What do, you, what do you teach? What, what subject? What, sorry? English. English? You can barely fucking pronounce. <laughs> I did Countdown recently, the TV show, not Dracula's special needs brother. <laughs> One for the staff room. <laughs> and I got asked when I did Countdown, when I did Countdown, I got asked by, by every man that I know, everyone asked me, how fit is that Rachel Riley off of Countdown? How attractive is she when you meet her? And it wasn't like a rhetorical question. They wanted me to answer. And I thought, well, I should be able to say how attractive a work colleague and a friend is without sounding misogynistic, without being sexist, shouldn't I? Let me, you be the judge. <laughs> Rachel Riley, let me put it this way. I would crawl over broken glass <laughs> to suck the cock of the last man that fucked her. <laughs> I don't think that's overstating it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to fuck her brains out, take ages. <laughs> <laughs> now, I should warn you, there will be some audience participation this evening. Apologies. And the only reason I mention it explicitly is because sometimes when I ask someone a direct question, they get a bit flustered. I think it's because they're used to seeing me on TV, so then when I ask them a direct question, they get a bit, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I didn't press the red button, it's gone all fucking interactive. <laughs> I got a guy wonderfully flustered the other day, front and centre where you're sitting there. And out of nowhere, I went, are you married or single? He went, single. And the girl next to him went, he isn't. <laughs> How could you fuck that up? <laughs> there was a lovely little pause and he went, I think I might be single now. <laughs> oh, well, who's seen me live before? Give us a shout. Yeah. 
Thank you. Well, you'll know every year my friend Chris does illustrations for me for jokes that I write that I think are a bit esoteric, that require a visual element to be fully enjoyed. Would you like to see them? Yes. Well, good, otherwise he'd be fucking gutted. <laughs> and we'd be having some quiet time, which would be shit. Right, well, I'll, I'll show you some. Obviously, we'll, we'll kick off with some thoughts and ideas that I've had recently. Right, so. If you like looking at flowers, but you can't be arsed with gardening, simply run down a kid outside your house. <laughs> can't believe you didn't think of it. <laughs> On bonfire night, I hope our neighbours keep their pets locked up, because there's something about fireworks that makes me really horny. You don't get many homeless gay men, which is a shame, because they'd be fucking bums. <laughs> I was outside a nightclub recently and I discovered that women can be bouncers if you're travelling fast enough when you mount the pavement. <laughs> the thing I worry about when I hear kids in the third world are working 18 hours a day to make my trainers is, when are they going to get a chance to finish my fucking laptop? I was in a hotel having breakfast, and the waiter said to me, he said, do you want white or brown toast? I said, all toast is brown, you're thinking of bread. <laughs> At any one time, a bowl of nuts on a bar will have 17 different types of urine on them. Oh. And that's why they're called peanuts. Wayne Rooney wears the number 10 shirt, or as he calls it, the stick and the circle. <laughs> All the celebrities get plastic surgery these days. Colleen Rooney's just had some work done on her arsehole. He's had air transplant. <laughs> My friend reckons football violence and aggressive behaviour are triggered by primitive tribal rivalries which are projected onto opposing teams and then expressed through exaggerated displays of loyalty. But he's a lying gooner twat so he can suck my fucking cock. <laughs> All that groaning and grunting in women's tennis, it reminds me of sex, in that I'm watching it happen on screen whilst masturbating. To explain spot fixing in cricket, it's what happens when something I don't understand is done by someone I've never heard of in the middle of something I couldn't give a fuck about. <laughs> Spiders used to give me nightmares. Anyone else? Yeah, so what I've done is I've stopped eating them just before bedtime. <laughs> of course, the worst thing about being bitten by a poisonous spider is that you're probably Australian. Are there any Australians in? Yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> I don't like zoos. I prefer to see lions, tigers, elephants and bears in their natural environment. The circus! <laughs> Is anyone here afraid of clowns? Yeah. You're afraid of clowns, sir. There's actually a special name for people that are afraid of clowns. Mummy's Little Benders. <laughs> <laughs> this may interest you, though. Clowns have to register their facial design to make sure that other sex offenders don't use it. <laughs> Dwarves. Often get overlooked. <laughs> I can say that, they look up to me. <laughs> can we treat ourselves to another dwarf joke? Tell you what I know about dwarves. Very little. <laughs> Come on. Here's a random fact. It's random, but it's true. One in ten British kids is now conceived in an IKEA bed. True. How it works is their parents insert flap A into slot B and then screw until the nuts tighten. <laughs> <laughs> in 2009, Nadia Suleiman of California gave birth to octuplets, two daughters and six sons, earning her the nickname Octo Mum, although she's also known as Giganto Snatch. <laughs> Those babies were walking before she was. <laughs> uh -huh. 
I think the men in the room will be able to relate to this. My girlfriend always wants to stay in and watch Downton Abbey, but I want to go out and get a new girlfriend. <laughs> I thought it'd be okay for me to have sex with other women because my girlfriend and I were on a break. But apparently, I ruined that weekend at Centre Parks. I was going to tell you a story about the poshest place I have ever been. I got invited last year to Clarence House, where Charles and Camilla live in central London. I got invited there. I'm involved in this hospice charity because I'm such a fucking terrific guy. <laughs> Not because I was press-ganged into it. No, no, no. <laughs> Maybe a little. Anyway, I'm involved in this thing. So Camilla is the patron of this great charity. So she organised, like, drinks and a concert and dinner in her home uh, to, you know, thank the corporate sponsors and to get more people to donate money, raise a bit of money, raise awareness, that sort of thing. In her home, though, she put on this event. So we're all in her front room, literally Charles and Camilla's front room. It's the most ornate, like, high, beautiful sort of ceilings, and, and they've got a telly and a couch in the corner like normal people might have, but every square inch of mantelpiece and shelf and sideboard has got a beautiful object on it that they've been given by visiting dignitaries or they've picked up on their extensive travels of the world. It's a very intimidating space to be in. So we're all standing there having a drink, and she's coming around saying hello to everyone, and she gets to me, and because I'm a dick, as I feel we've established, <laughs> she gets to me and goes, oh, how are you involved? And I went, never mind about that. <laughs> Have you seen Cash in the Attic? Because <laughs> we're sitting on a gold mine here. <laughs> and to her credit, it's absolutely true, she went, yes, winked and fucked off. Brilliant. <laughs> I did another weird royal thing last year. I did the Jubilee. Did anyone see the Jubilee? I, I did a little thing where I had to introduce Grace Jones in a hula hoop. Nice work if you can get it. In order to do that, I had to get past security at Buckingham Palace. Here's what it consisted of. So I met an armed police officer. His only job is to guard our queen, to make sure that no one steals our queen and uses her head to photocopy it and make their own money and stamps. I don't know. <laughs> so I walked up to this armed police officer outside Buckingham Palace. I said, security. He went, yeah. He, here's his question. He said, are you in Al-Qaeda? I went, no. As you were. <laughs> I thought, this guy seems fun. So I asked him, I said, does anything funny ever happen when you're rolling with the Queen? He said, yeah. I'll tell you this story. Has to be in confidence, though. <laughs> I said, you can trust me. <laughs> <laughs> he is not a good judge of character. <laughs> I'm also in Al-Qaeda. No, I'm not. Uh, the, <laughs> or am I? No. Uh, <laughs> but, so, so, so he told me the story. He said the Queen, uh, the, her whole entourage, she travels with about 15 people. They went up to Glasgow last year. She was opening a drop in centre for homeless alcoholics. Of course, in Glasgow, where else would you fucking put it? <laughs> it's very much ground zero for homeless alcoholics. It's their biggest export. <laughs> so the Queen's there, and she's cutting through the ribbon like a fucking ninja, and all the usual suspects are there. There's the mayor. There's the local dignitaries, there's the chairman of the charity, the people that work in the local office, and they've got a couple of the homeless guys, the alcoholic homeless guys from Glasgow, that the charity has helped in other locations, suited and booted, washed and brushed there to meet the Queen, so that she could see the people that have benefited from her kind works. Lovely. So the Queen, as we all know, has only got one bit of shtick, which is the question, what do you do? That's her only question. She doesn't point like that, that'd be mental. But that's her only question, what do you do? That's all she asks. She said to a, a Scottish alcoholic homeless man, <laughs> what do you do? And he came back rather epically, I feel, with, same as you, nothing. <laughs> Apparently, she was fucking terrified. <laughs> Our friend of mine, quite recently, a couple of months ago, got proper old school flashed. Guy in a Mac, at dusk, in a park, one of those. Sorry, I've added that. I don't... I don't know if he did that. You would, though, wouldn't you? You'd give it a bit of cock slap. You'd probably treat her to the windmill, wouldn't you? Who are you hurting? Anyway, she got proper old-school flashed, and she shouted, rape! I thought, don't give him ideas. Don't workshop it, you fucking lunatic. Has anyone in here been flashed? Go on, what, what happened, madam? Is it a funny story, or is it distressing? In a club? Yeah. In a club and someone flashed you in the club? Yeah. Are you sure you didn't go off with a man in a club? <laughs> I was kissing him and I, uh, under his zip and then he flashed me. <laughs> go on, what, what happened? Tell me, tell me the story. It was in the middle of the dance floor. Middle of the dance floor and he was throwing some shapes <laughs> and one of his was... No, 
So to get rid of the guy, your friend told him you were lesbians. That's how these two started, but then... <laughs> they liked it, so they stuck with it. <laughs> and did, did that work? She said, we don't like cock. <laughs> so, sorry, so someone, flat, someone got his cock out in the middle of the dance floor in a club, and you went, oh, no, sorry, we're lesbians. <laughs> you could have just told him to fuck off. You're incredibly polite. <laughs> I'll make up an excuse so he doesn't feel bad. I, <laughs> I don't want the flasher to feel rejected. <laughs> How nice are you? And has anyone else been flashed? You got arrested for flashing. Well, don't take it out on me. <laughs> what do you mean you got arrested for flashing? Well, I was, I was going for a piss. You were going for a piss? <laughs> this sounds like bullshit to me. <laughs> you were going for a piss. Where were you going for a piss? Get, set the scene for us. I've never met anyone that's flashed. Go on. Sorry. It's going for a piss in a primary school. In a car park. <laughs> in a car park, OK. In a car park outside, you're going for a piss. Caught short. Late at night, fine, OK. Yeah, and uh, I needed a piss, so I went up against a tree. You went up against a tree? Yeah. Turned out it wasn't a tree, it was a fat girl? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, so you walked up to a tree to take a pee in a car park. This doesn't sound terrible. So far, I'm on this guy's side. Go on. So there was a woman in the trees. There was a woman in the trees. <laughs> Sounds like you've broken dogging etiquette by pissing on someone. <laughs> so you went up to take a piss on a tree, and there was a woman in the tree. Right, she was walking. There's a pathway. She was walking, OK. And it was outside a police station. And it was outside a police station. <laughs> kind of a fucking idiot, are you? <laughs> you? You went for a piss in the police station car park. <laughs> Why don't you just turn yourself in? That's a cry for help, if ever I heard one. <laughs> Lock me up before I hurt someone. <laughs> and what, did she scream? Did she complain? What happened? Uh, she went into the police station and uh, they came out and arrested me for indecent exposure. They came out and arrested you for indecent... Is it because you're a bit ginger? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they would have let you off if you hadn't been quite as... <laughs> I'm sorry about these lights as well. We could well be giving you skin cancer. <laughs> I don't... I think I'm on your side there. If you're taking a piss, that's not indecent exposure, is it? What do you think? Are we on this guy's side? Yeah. There's one man, no. <laughs> Stop pissing outside, you crazy fool. <laughs> but because there was a woman in the other night with a story. She said, oh, I got flashed. And then she told me the story, and I'm, I wasn't sure. She said, I got flashed. I said, has anyone been flashed? She went, yeah, I got flashed in Disneyland. I said, I'm all ears. She said, I was in Disneyland, Florida. I was walking in past the hotels in Disneyland and uh, into the park, and I looked up at one of the hotels, and a guy was opening his bedroom curtains, flashed me. <laughs> I said, no, he didn't. You are a peeping Tom. <laughs> My girlfriend wants a diamond ring, and the only reason I know that is it's pretty much all she fucking talks about. <laughs> Let's face facts. Anyway, my girlfriend's getting a diamond ring is if the vajazzler slips. I don't really understand the vajazzle. I mean, I know what a vajazzle is. I know, I know what it is. They whip away all the hair from your foo-foo, and then they diamante it. I say they, I imagine you get some Pritzik and glitter and have a crack yourself. <laughs> have a sparkly crack yourself, you're welcome. Um, I just don't know who that's for. I've never met a man who said to me, oh, I love vaginas. But I wish they were a bit more zhuzhy. A few more sparkles wouldn't go amiss. I want a glamour a showbiz entrance. <laughs> Has anyone had uh, a vajazzle? She had. What did you? What did you? What motif did you go for, madam? I just had a heart. I was a little bit embarrassed to ask for one. You you had a heart yeah. because you were embarrassed to ask for like something spectacular. Something. You were embarrassed to ask for something spectacular. <laughs> so you were fine with someone putting glitter on your fanny, but you went. <laughs> I don't want to ask for anything embarrassing. <laughs> How adorable. And was it for a special occasion or was it just...? No, I just thought, why not? You thought, why not? <laughs> well, plenty of fucking reasons. Basic hygiene. <laughs> Your boyfriend could chip a tooth. <laughs> <laughs> and it was definitely a proper vajazzle, not a Liverpool vajazzle, which is just a euphemism for herpes.
Has uh, anyone else come across a vajazzle? He has. He has. <laughs> <laughs> Not hers, I hope. Um, go on, what, what, what did they have? You can't remember, it was your, it was your stag do. <laughs> oh! You can't remember anything. Sounds like a Liverpool vajazzle to me. <laughs> no love, I don't know what happened, it's just really itchy. <laughs> Fucking hell! Obviously, I could never get a vajazzle because I don't have a VJJ, but I would consider glitter balls. <laughs> you know, for a special occasion. Oh, speaking of special occasions, there was a couple in a couple of weeks ago at one of my gigs, 35 years married. I got chatting to them because I thought, well, quite an incredible thing in this day and age. Got chatting to them. I said, what do you get her for the anniversary? And he said, deep fat fryer. <laughs> I said, well, what did she get you? And he went, chips. <laughs> and they seemed thrilled with that arrangement. It got me chatting to people about what is the worst gift you've ever got? Birthday, anniversary, Christmas, Valentine's. What is the worst piece of shit you ever got? <laughs> <clears throat> We've had a heckle. <laughs> Go on, what, what was that? Say a little bit louder. Tickets to this show. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, sir, what, what's your name? Toby. What, what, sorry? Toby. Toby. Toby, do you mind me sharing with the group? Thank you very much indeed, Toby. That makes it much easier. Because there's a heckle. It's quite a good heckle, quite a funny heckle. But we have to do a heckle put-down now. God. <laughs> I would love if I could just let it go, but I can't. <laughs> there are rules. <laughs> but you don't mind me sharing with the group, so it makes it much easier. We can go old school. Stop what, sorry? Stop stalling. Stop stalling. <laughs> don't panic, sir. <laughs> I've got this. I'll have to put you on arsehole waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Toby's mum <laughs> is so fat. <laughs> She's a fucking disgrace, Toby. Your mum is such a chunky monkey wobble slob. <laughs> Fatty boom batty blubber naught. She's so fucking fat, when she fell down the stairs, I thought EastEnders had finished. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. True story. Ahem. <laughs> <clears throat> you, sir. What did you say? What was it? Stop stalling. Yeah? What, what's your name? Gary. Are you trying to say Gary? <laughs> watch me. Gary. <laughs> yeah. 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 The fuck is that? Well, Gary, if you want my comeback, you'll have to scrape it off your mum's teeth. <laughs> worst gifts. What, what's the worst gift? What, sorry? You got a bread maker. I, uh, your husband bought you a bread maker. What a fucking arsehole. No, I just hate the whole concept, because bread makers... And I mean, I spent, like, 200 quid on a bread maker. That's convenient, isn't it? Because you don't live near shops and bread isn't fucking cheap. <laughs> oh, I'll just make my own, that's fine, because the ingredients cost more than a loaf of bread, but don't worry about it. <laughs> so what did you get him? Instead of an engagement ring, you... <laughs> you got a bread maker instead of an engagement ring. <laughs> You broke up with him, right? <laughs> You've just divorced him. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Why did you go through with marrying him? I mean, that must have been fucking awkward in the office. Oh. <sighs> Look at this. Oh, it's a nice one. Sparkly. <laughs> you poor thing. Any other bad gifts? You got what? Poor water? A dog pooper scooper. <laughs> Do you have a dog? At the time, yes. At the time, yes. 
the fuck have you done with your dog, dude? <laughs> what happened to your dog? <laughs> you don't have him anymore. Oh, <gasps> Toby's mum ate him. <laughs> the fat bitch. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Um, <laughs> any other bad gifts? Nothing. What what'd you get? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Jesus, listen to the bitterness there. <laughs> I think there are worse gifts than nothing. So like like this, like women get bought hoovers by their other half. And it's not just it's not just a shit gift, it's a bit of a dig. At least something in the house has got some fucking suction. <laughs> or you said you wanted a bag and a belt. That's got both. You're welcome. <laughs> there was a girl in the other day for her 21st birthday from her nana. Now, nana's a mental anyway. But her nana bought her, gift wrapped, beautifully gift wrapped, an Argos catalogue. <laughs> With two pound coins sellotaped taped to the front. <laughs> oh, pikeys. What, the worst one that I think a lot of people have done, Secret Santa. Do you do Secret Santa at your work? It's a nightmare, isn't it, to get something good for under a fiver, under a tenner? I went out and bought a brawn moustache trimmer. She was livid. <laughs> no pleasing some people, not like she didn't need it. Um, the, uh, the, the best gift is obviously uh, anal sex. Um, <laughs> not for a Secret Santa thing, that's a fucking disaster. <laughs> But no, it is. It's better to give than to receive, and anal sex is the gift that keeps on giving, unless it stops giving, in which case it tears. <laughs> oh, too much. <laughs> <laughs> the worst one I think a lot of people have bought, gift vouchers. Who here has bought gift vouchers? Yeah. What, what were you thinking? <laughs> you walked into a shop and went, excuse me, I wonder, could you help me? I've got some money here, this is accepted everywhere. <laughs> could you fix it for me so it just works in this one shop? <laughs> For a limited time period, I should explain it's a gift and I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> it's a great feeling when you get a woman you've been chasing for miles. <laughs> I've known thousands of women in the biblical sense, and by biblical sense I mean made-up women that don't really exist. <laughs> a lot of people just drift into relationships without really thinking about it, and we call those people men. A lot of men say when they first get together with a woman, they can't initially tell if it's the real thing. But I can, because I've got a special little indicator that sticks up. <laughs> Come on in, sit down. What's your name, madam? Alexa. Alexa. And what, what is it, some sort of cystitis? What's the matter? <laughs> what do you do for a living, Alexa? Um, lots of things. You do lots of things? Yeah. Yes, I think I've seen a card advertising your services. <laughs> Are you new in town? Go on, sir. Um, Don't let me guess. So, I'm an aspiring presenter. You're an aspiring presenter? Yeah. Ooh. Well, I'll say to you what I say to all aspiring presenters that I meet. I'll have an Americano, please. <laughs> Oh, I fucking love my job. Um, <laughs> gentlemen, do you remember what you were doing the first time you told a woman that you loved her? I do, I was lying. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me that look, it worked, I fucked her. <laughs> we went out for a drink the other night, me and my girlfriend, and we were chatting about what people actually think about when they're having sex. Not a conversation I would recommend. She said to me, she said, what kind of a man fantasises about his partner's friends whilst he's actually having sex with his partner? And I said, promise you won't get mad. <laughs> what do you think is the most important thing in a relationship? Give us a shout. Sex. sex. How long have you been together with your woman? Four years. Four years and sex is still the most important thing. Well, you, sir, are a liar. Up to two years, I would give you. Up to two years is fine, but sex is the most important thing. You're ripping each other's clothes off. It's fantastic. After two years, what's that coming up on the inside? Coming up pretty fast. Sky Plus. <laughs> any, any other thoughts? Most important thing in a relationship? Trust. trust. A lot of ladies saying trust. Any other? Cricket. Cricket. 
Cooking. <laughs> Cooking's the most important thing. Are you the guy from Quantum Leap if you just got here from 1970? <laughs> Cooking's the most important thing in a relationship. Have you ever become engaged by awarding someone a bread maker by any chance? <laughs> I don't know the weirdest answer. The weirdest answer I had recently. I said, what's the most important thing in a relationship? And a bloke went, consent. <laughs> there was a guy up in Edinburgh. I said, most important thing in a relationship? And he went, me. <laughs> a terrified looking woman next to him going. <laughs> Any other thoughts? <laughs> Lubricant. <laughs> well, if you run out, Any other? Oh, what, sorry? A puncture repair kit. A puncture repair kit. <laughs> Funny, I like that. I think it deserved more. Come on. Um, any other? What, sorry? Love. Love. Grow up. <laughs> Who are you in a relationship with? You're my little pony. <laughs> <laughs> Any other thoughts? Most important thing? Laughter. Laughter? Well, I, I don't know about that. I do think a sense of humour is what I look for in a woman. Because if a woman can see the funny side of life, she's much less likely to press charges. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, I, think the most, I think trust. For me, I think trust is the most important thing in a relationship. Because if you're with a woman and you don't 100% trust her, how do you know she's not going to tell your wife? I do love it when a woman says those magic words that mean she's definitely up for sex that night. This drink tastes funny. <laughs> I'm joking, you can't taste it. <laughs> I'm not a prude, you'd agree with that, wouldn't you? I'm not prudish. Here's the thing, I don't like swearing during sex. Who wants to hear that kind of language, especially from a child? <laughs> Oh, the look you gave me there. <laughs> you prefer a sweary kid. Fair enough. <laughs> I had a thing happen to me recently, a little bit embarrassing. I got caught. I didn't think this could happen when you were a grown-up. I got caught masturbating <laughs> by my girlfriend. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> Sorry I woke you. <laughs> You've got sleep in your eye. I don't know about you, but I don't like celebrities that are only famous because of who their parents are. Like Callum Best and Peaches Geldof and Jesus. <laughs> I heard a reporter on Sky News say at least one person killed in suicide bomb attack. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> that is the bare minimum you need to qualify. It was something about burning a copy of the Quran in Afghanistan. I was watching it thinking, I would never burn a copy of the Quran because I've got a Kindle. <laughs> Just delete it, don't fuck about. <laughs> I'm not worried about Islamic suicide bombers, they can only do it once. A Hindu suicide bomber, that is more of a threat. <laughs> because of the reincarnation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what's going on. I was going to talk to you about terrorist threat levels in this country because our government have picked the weirdest words for our terrorist threat levels. You know, sometimes they announce them at the end of the news. The weather, the pollen count, and then the terrorist threat level for no reason at all. And it's words that I don't understand. So, at the moment, the terrorist threat level in this country is substantial. I asked a police officer, what am I meant to do with substantial? He said, watch yourself. <laughs> I said, well, I'm not involved. <laughs> do you know what the highest terrorist threat level is? How's this for a creepy word? Imminent. What the fuck am I meant to do with imminent? <laughs> I imagine clench. <laughs> I mean, I've never been near a bomb when it's gone off, but I imagine that take the edge off, wouldn't it? <laughs> and we all know that isn't the highest terrorist threat level. The highest terrorist threat level, as we all know, is I don't care if this does look racist, I'm getting off the bus. <laughs> that is a massive rucksack, and he doesn't need to be saying his prayers out loud. I'm fucking doing one. Where middle-class guilt is overtaken by fear, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> of course, with these jokes, I could face the wrath of Islam, which I've always thought sounds like a shit pub. <laughs> Where are we going? Wrath of Islam. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> there's no booze, there's no fruit machine, there's no pork scratchings. 
Yeah, but women can get stoned. <laughs> Sometimes doing this job, you feel very exposed. Not when I'm doing jokes, but when I'm doing an observational bit of comedy, you feel like if no one can relate to this, I'm going to feel a fool. So, you know, share with me if you've had a similar experience. It's always embarrassing when you get an erection during a prostate exam. <laughs> and they realise. <laughs> Hang on, you're not a real doctor. Joke's on her, she hasn't even got a prostate. <laughs> Have we got any teenage girls in? Give us a shout, any teenage girls? I'm sorry, I realise that is a creepy question. <laughs> the teenage girls... The reason I ask, I read a thing recently that said that 90% of teenage girls are sexually active. Bullshit. A lot of them just lie there. <laughs> I'm frightened, you're not my real dad. <laughs> I often get asked by young guys, young men after the show often ask me, can you laugh a woman into bed? The short answer, yes. Obviously, she's too young for you if you're having to say peekaboo, but yeah. <laughs> you can laugh a woman into bed. The tough bit comes 20 minutes later when you're trying to laugh her into a taxi home. <laughs> I don't want to make a big deal of this, but I recently adopted a newborn African child. He was just seven pounds, plus postage and packing. <laughs> That's how they get you. If only they put holes in that box. <laughs> and that is the joke, interestingly, that Richard Curtis said was a bit much for the comic relief gig. <laughs> <laughs> Have you all been on that first foreign holiday abroad? Like the first foreign holiday you went on without your parents? Everyone been on that holiday? Yes. Has anyone not been on that holiday yet? Oh, quite a few of you. You've got a lot to look forward to. It's an amazing trip. It tends to be all the guys go away together, all the girls go away together, somewhere hot in Europe that's cheap that year. We went away, five of us, that went all the way through school together. We just got array level results, went away for two weeks in Falaraki. It was awesome. <laughs> Sun, sea, sex and sand, that's what we're looking for, that's what we found. It was, it was an amazing, life-affirming, wonderful holiday. Well, in those two weeks, I had sex with 12 different people. I'm not bragging, I was gang-raped. <laughs> Still, I didn't let it spoil my trip. <laughs> if there's a fight, I let my fist do the talking. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> I went to a fairly posh single sex school, but I never really fitted in. I think it's partly because I'm male. <laughs> partly because I was 35 when they caught me. <laughs> My granddad always used to insist on standing up whenever a woman entered the room, which is ultimately what led to him losing his disability living allowance. <laughs> I was up in North London, I saw a guy in the high street with a guide dog and a white stick. And I went up to him, I went, you must be blind. He said, tell me something I don't know. I said, there's a tree over there. <laughs> don't be a dick about it. You never forget your first, especially if they've got an unusual name. R. Kayla. <laughs> There's something I don't understand about a woman's G-spot. I can't quite put my finger on it. <laughs> I can drive a woman... <laughs> well done. <laughs> That's hit home there, has it? <laughs> Touched a nerve, so to speak. <laughs> Not very apt. Um, I can drive a woman wild with my tongue. Would you, would you like me to demonstrate? Okay, pay attention, all the action is happening here, young man. Drive a woman wild with your tongue. Have you put on weight? <laughs> Anal sex is overrated, it's fucking shit. <laughs> and it hurts like buggery. <laughs> I tried it with my girlfriend, she was bored to tears. <laughs> is everyone that's gonna get it got it? Let's move along. Um, <laughs> We've been together now for 12 years, me and my girlfriend, so to keep things fresh in the bedroom, we do a little bit of role-play. She pretends to be a nurse, and I pretend I'm still attracted to her. <laughs> That's divided the room, isn't it? <laughs> There's people that thought that was funny, and then there are unattractive women. <laughs> Some girls like to have the lights off for sex to happen. They like all the lights to be out before they have sex. And they've got a name. They're called Fuggly Munters. <laughs> I've never had a complaint about that joke. I've never had a woman come up to me after the show and gone, excuse me, I'm a Fuggly Munter. 
How do you think I feel? <laughs> Hungry? <laughs> Are there couples in? Give us a shout. Yeah. I've got a theory about sex in long-term relationships. So the received wisdom is it's men that instigate sex within a long-term relationship. It's the man that says, should we go upstairs for a bit of slap and tickle, bit of how's your father, bit of sticky belly. <laughs> Whatever you call it in your houses. But it's the man that asks. I think that is misogynistic bullshit. That's like saying the man's got the sex drive and the woman is just passive. I reckon it's about 50-50 in most relationships. The reason you don't notice when women ask for sex is because when women ask for sex, it happens. <laughs> We've got the expression getting lucky because we're rolling the dice, ladies. <laughs> if your woman says to you, do you want to go upstairs and fuck? Yep. It doesn't matter what else is going on. You could be full of flu. You could have just received devastating news. You could have just been shot in the leg by her. <laughs> do you want to go up to Jasmine Park? Yes, I do. <laughs> but sometimes, gentlemen, you'll know this, sometimes in a long-term relationship, you'll, you'll suggest becoming amorous with your partner. You'll suggest having sex, and she'll say no. And then she will give you some kind of mercurial strange reason as to why sex could not occur at that moment in time. And you would like to respond, you'd like to argue back, but you can't think of anything because you can't think at all because all the blood is somewhere else. <laughs> so I thought, well, why don't we take advantage of the situation we find ourselves in? Why don't we workshop it? What reasons have you heard, gentlemen, not to have sex? And we'll come up with a response. What, what have you heard? Headache. Headache. Tired. OK, let's deal with those in order. Headache. Easy. If a woman says, look, I've got a headache, just say, I'm going to be right at the other end. I could not be further away from that problem. Also, I'm going to fuck you. We're not doing Sudoku. You're not going to need your wits about me. <laughs> tired. Tired is, tired is like the modern equivalent of headache. And I think genuinely, if a woman says to you, like, I can't have sex, I'm tired, what you've got to do, you've got to listen, obviously. You've got to acknowledge. It's not enough just to listen. She's got to know that you've heard. And then make a suggestion. That's my advice, anyway. Don't, don't demand anything from a woman. Make a suggestion. So, so if a woman said, look, I can't have sex, I'm tired, I'd say, of course you're tired, I hear you, you've got the kids, you've got the house, you've got work, you must be exhausted, so why don't you, and it's just a suggestion, but why don't you do what you normally do and just fucking lie there? <laughs> you lazy fucking cow. <laughs> Any other excuses for not having... Pre pregnant? <laughs> She's too young. This is a long-term relationship you're in, right? <laughs> she said, I really can't have sex with you, I'm too young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yet, what was that one? Pre pregnant. Are you trying to nudge her towards a three-way? <laughs> is that bad? Clearly, yes. <laughs> I don't want to alarm anyone, but we've got a pirate in the house. <laughs> Hoist the mainsail. <laughs> She's dead. <laughs> She's dead? And yet you're still hearing a voice saying no. <laughs> that isn't her, that's your conscience, you monster. <laughs> Don't, any, other, any other excuses for not having sex? Your cock's too big. Try fucking a grown-up. <laughs> um, any other? <laughs> Sorry, sir, could you just repeat what you said there? <laughs> She's on the blob. Nicely put, sir. I think. <laughs> I think a lesser man might have said menstruation, <laughs> or her time of the month, or maybe period. <laughs> Even Arsenal are playing at home, or <laughs> she has the red devil in her belly, <laughs> up on bricks. <laughs> but you went with a, the much more genteel. On the blob. <laughs> She's on the blob and she.
I think in all seriousness, if a woman says, look, I can't have sex, I've got my period, I would say, well, your arse isn't bleeding, is it? <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Give me a moment to work my magic. <laughs> the best one I heard recently, someone, someone said, a very, a very nice gig in Cambridge. I said, any reasons for not having sex within a long-term relationship that you've heard from a woman? And a woman went, morning, Fanny. I said, what? She said, morning, Fanny. I went, yeah, I heard you. I don't, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's morning, Fanny. And she said, you know morning breath? It's that downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> morning, Fanny. Who knew? I'm telling these rather bawdy jokes, but I'm actually quite a sensitive kind of guy, quite metrosexual. I remember the first time I got together with my girlfriend, 12 years ago now, um, uh, first time we had sex, first time we hooked up, I cried. I don't know whether it was the physical act or the emotion of it or the pepper spray, but I teared up. <laughs> um, people do weird shit sexually. Should we, should we talk about some of the weird shit people do? Gerontophiles, if you're not familiar with the term, gerontophiles are people that find the very elderly sexually attractive. I know, a bit of a mouthful, isn't it, gerontophile? I prefer to call them OAPdos. <laughs> they like a bit of granny fanny, where's the harm? <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey, very different thing for them. <laughs> Years ago, this woman introduced handcuffs into our sexual relationship when she uh, called the police. <laughs> I said, I'll come quietly. If you strangle yourself during sex, it's called auto-erotic asphyxiation. If you do it to someone else, it's called a serious sexual assault. <laughs> My bad. A fluffy. Do you know what a fluffy is? A fluffy is when you're having sex with a woman and... Sorry, scratch that. Not when you're having sex with a woman. When you're making love to a lady. And as you make love to that beautiful lady, a fluffy is when she farts on your balls. <laughs> Couple of things, couple of quick things. Firstly, really? That's happening enough that we needed a special term for that? <laughs> and secondly, how do you ask for that? <laughs> Not that I would want that to happen, but when you find out that's your thing, how do you ask for it to happen? Because presumably no one asked for that the first time it happened. That was a happy accident. He was working away and one slipped out and he thought that's not an unpleasant sensation. <laughs> But then it's very difficult to ask for that to happen again. How, it's very difficult to come across as Mr. Darcy, the king of romance, when saying to the woman in your life, would you mind later on, when we make love, farting on my balls? <laughs> it's much easier, take her out for Indian food and hope for the best. <laughs> Has anyone in here ever walked in on people having sex? Yes. What did you walk in on, sir? My parents. Your parents? <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of special hug was mummy doing with daddy? What did you actually see when you walked in? Awful things. <laughs> what was your dad up to? I mean, he's balls, presumably, but... <laughs> did, you, did you get an eyeful? Sorry, obviously not like that. That'd be awful. <laughs> You'd have to think that was premeditated. <laughs> if you walked in and he was, oh, this is going to be brilliant. You saw your parents, because I presume you followed the classic etiquette of walking in on people having sex, which you walk in, I see, off. <laughs> and in your case, straight to therapy. <laughs> Has anyone else walked in on people having sex? Yeah. Go on, what you walking on, sir? My daughter. <laughs> I don't know why that's bad. I, it's so much worse. Because <laughs> if it was your son, I think we would all go, yeah, go on, son. <laughs> Go on, my son. But with your daughter, you can't walk in a go on, love. <laughs> oh, you look like you're fucking loving that. <laughs> hey, it's my little girl. <laughs> I mean, hopefully, it was a guy you approved of. Was it a guy you approved of? <laughs> he said next to you. I hope you obey the etiquette. You walk in, you walk out straight away. There's certain things that people do sexually, though, that, that could not be your response. Are we all familiar with the rusty trombone? <laughs> it's a sexual practice whereby a lady is kissing a guy's ass. I don't mean that metaphorically. I mean that in a far more literal and rimmy type sense. 
And as that's going on, she's also administering a handjob. So there's this movement and the pursed lips. Well, you can see how they got to a rusty trombone. I've got no problem with the name <laughs> per se. My question is, if you walked in on people doing that, what would your response be? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> got a question for the ladies. All women I know have got a very clear line. On one side of the line, things they're happy, confident, comfortable, and enjoy doing sexually with a loving partner. On the other side of the line, things they've been asked to do that they've said no. <laughs> what I would like to know, ladies, is what have you been asked to do that you've said no? I don't mean like reverse park or wash up. <laughs> what? Where do you draw the line is really what I'm asking. What have you been asked to do that you said no? You look confused. Did you not realise you could turn shit down? <laughs> no idea. You're just hearing now. The... Anal. A you draw the line at anal. What, sorry? Yeah, totally. But, but on his birthday, yeah? <laughs> Man up, lady. <laughs> That's where you draw the line. OK, any advance on that? Any other weirder things? A threesome. What kind of threesome was it, madam? Was it, was it two guys and you, or a proper one? <laughs> Go on, what, what kind of threesome was it? Two, two women. I think, see, I think that, on the surface, that sounds misogynistic, doesn't it? Sounds, he's gone, oh, I need two women to satisfy me because I'm such a man. I don't think that's what it's about. I think he was thinking of you. <laughs> he was thinking, wouldn't it be lovely if after lovemaking she had someone to talk to? <laughs> thinking of you. Loves you. And, and, and any others? Any advance on this? Egging. What, sorry? I'm not sure if I'm mishearing or you can't talk. It's tough. <laughs> God, what are you saying? Pegging. Pegging. The fuck is pegging? <laughs> Isn't that just running? What's pegging? You mean foreplay? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, she, and she wouldn't do that, sir. What a prude. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it... Blumkey. Blumkey. What's a, what's a blumkey? mistaken, she just said, it's when you give a guy a blowjob while he's having a shit. <laughs> and he, and sorry, madam, a guy asked you to do that. <laughs> you know what, though? I admire that guy. <laughs> because that's what made this country great. <laughs> that's what made civilization great. Daring to dream. <laughs> There's an optimistic man. Oh, I'm having a shit. I've had loads of shit. It's pretty boring. <laughs> what about... This whole area is free. <laughs> it's all going on back here. <laughs> At what point in the relationship did he ask for that? The end. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad way to end a relationship. <laughs> Things aren't going well, you're not getting on. I'll see if she'll suck me off while I'm having a shit. Because <laughs> if, she, if she says yes, I think she loves you. <laughs> any, any, other, any other weirdness? The reason I, I've asked that question a few times now is because it's my favourite bit of the show, because I know that there are women out there who are currently having pressure applied to their legs <laughs> by the men in their lives. <laughs> there are men out there going, I just wanted to fucking try it, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest one I heard about recently from an audience member was a Simba. Have you heard of a Simba? You know a Simba? A Simba is from the Lion King, I believe. <laughs> it's when you're with a, a beautiful lady, 
you're making sweet love to her, and you finish on her chest. Fine. A little bit disrespectful, some might think, but fine. And you take... Simba. <laughs> Bring in a little Disney magic to the bedroom. I, I'm not sure my girlfriend would appreciate a Simba, but I think, I think I could just do it on my own. I think the next time... I think the next time I'm at home and I've got broadband and a bit of time to myself, I think I might try and finish there. Simba. <laughs> I've got a tip for the ladies, or if you like, I could put the whole thing in. <laughs> Just a short one. <laughs> Do you want to know the secret to the perfect hand job? Use your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I left my last girlfriend because she got really fat. I'm pregnant, there's always an excuse. <laughs> Breastfeeding in public, does that annoy anyone else? Yes. Annoys me, the baby's head gets in the way, you can't see a fucking thing, can you? <laughs> now, no one likes having their parenting technique criticised, but would you agree with me that seven is too old to be in a pram? Would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. Would you have said anything? Because I said as much. It's a wheelchair, is it? <laughs> Who's got kids? Give us a shout. <laughs> Who hasn't got kids? <laughs> what are you saying, happier? <laughs> Which is weird, because we're not trying to get anyone to join our gang. People with kids never stop going on about it, especially when you're my age. People with kids, join us. You look tired. <laughs> Join us. <laughs> Who's going to take care of you when you're old? <laughs> Medical professionals. <laughs> I've got to go now. I've got to have 12 hours sleep. <laughs> Not even tired. <laughs> of course, the pill revolutionised the way that women control their bodies. Before its invention, our poor nanas had to take it up the wrong one. <laughs> or face falling down the stairs. In a hot bath, drunk on gym with a coat hanger chaser. <laughs> My best friend's wife is, uh, is having a baby, uh, and I asked him, I said, what do you want, a boy or a girl? And he thought about it, he said, I wanted a blowjob. <laughs> really mournful. <laughs> I like getting a blowjob off the missus, I don't know if you get this, I don't know if you get a blowjob off my missus, but... The thing I like about oral sex from my partner, I think the thing most men enjoy about oral sex from our partners, not anything sexual, ladies, it's the peace and quiet. <laughs> ladies, if you've ever been going down on a guy and he's gone, ah, oh, ah, oh, that's not your technique, that's not the sound of his sexual ecstasy. That is the sound of a man not being asked a question. <laughs> I would think about adoption. I don't have kids, but if I had kids, I think I would have them adopted. <laughs> People criticise Madonna, but the kids she adopted, fair trade. <laughs> <laughs> have we got any dads in? Give us a shout all the dads. <laughs> Did you cry at the birth of your first child? <laughs> oh, very few of you admitting it. A lot of guys are embarrassed by the fact they cried at the birth of their first child. I think it's because they don't quite know why they cried. There's different theories. Some people think it's the biological bond with the child that you meet for the first time. But that can't be it. You're only meeting it for the first time. It's not like the mother that's been carrying inside her. That's more of a biological thing. With the guy, mm, no. Some people think men cry at the birth of their first child because of the gift that's been bestowed on them by the woman in their life. That would make them tear up? No. <laughs> I think the real reason most men cry at the birth of their first child is because they see what the little shit's done to the missus. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> now she's got a vaginus. <laughs> Good. Um, if my grandmother knew how much I spent on her funeral, she would be spinning in her ditch. When I was a kid, I didn't want to imagine my parents having sex, so I'd watch them from the wardrobe. <laughs> Can closet gay agrophobics ever come out?
How can you possibly explain the concept of death to a young child? Well, you need a hammer and a hamster. <laughs> He's not gone to live on a farm, has he? He's all over the fucking job. <laughs> it always feels so much better when you have a wank with a dead arm, but apparently I ruined that funeral. I remember in the playground, my dad's harder than your dad. It's not really the issue. The issue is both our dads have erections in a playground. <laughs> Researchers have created a contraceptive pill that deactivates sperm before it reaches the womb. My girlfriend's got something similar called stomach acid. Ten percent of women have cried in a shop changing room. I guess they weren't expecting to see me there. <laughs> Here's an interesting fact. The reason Morris dancers wear bells is so blind people know they're cunts too. <laughs> they say a problem shared is a problem halved. Didn't really work with AIDS, did it? Do you know you can get AIDS from a toilet seat? But only if you sit down before the last guy's got up. <laughs> My girlfriend asked me recently, she said, what's happened to your sex drive? I said, I burnt it and smashed it with a hammer. I was worried the police were going to get hold of it. <laughs> Humans and dolphins are the only mammals that have sex for pleasure. But a dog will do it for a biscuit. If you suffocate in a bag for life, <laughs> you'd be fucking livid, wouldn't you? <laughs> the irony would kill you. Um, I recently read Great Expectations, and it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I can do a brilliant Michael Jackson impersonation. Would you, would you like to see it? Yeah. Right, I just need a young volunteer that can keep a secret. <laughs> You know those human statues you get in the middle of town? You know the ones painted silver and gold, stand stock still? And then if you give them like 50 people when you walk past, they move their hand like a fraction? Actually works out cheaper if you're going to go past them every day just to buy a taser. <laughs> I had a thing happen in the high street the other day. You know the charity muggers? You know the ones with the clipboard and the optimism in the, in the high street? I dodged two of the cunts and the third one got me <laughs> with what I considered to be an unfair tactic, the backwards walk and talk. So I hadn't stopped, I hadn't made eye contact, and she told me her sad story as she trotted along backwards. And the wording was just perfect for me. She said, do you know how often people die from AIDS? I said, I'm not an expert, but I'm guessing just the once. <laughs> I saw an extraordinary anti-AIDS thing recently. I was in Johannesburg last year doing some gigs, and I saw in Johannesburg this charity had printed a leaflet with everything you need to know about HIV and AIDS because there's a lot of myths about AIDS in South Africa. So they print up this leaflet, and because they raised more money than they needed, they decided to attach a condom to every leaflet. Good idea. So they stapled a condom. <laughs> Genuinely true, the Everest of fuckwittery. <laughs> it's weird that... Are there any South Africans in? <laughs> oh, there's quite a few. Well, it's weird the linguistic differences you notice when you travel. Like, like in this country, when you say, I'm not racist, what you tend to mean is, I'm not a racist. In South Africa, <laughs> when someone says, I am not a racist, it means they're about to say something fucking racist. <laughs> Is this racist? Do Chinese people have guess who? <laughs> I tried that joke for the first time in a tiny little 50-seater theatre above a pub, and there was a Chinese lady front and centre, and she laughed enough that she sort of bent forward, and it looked like I'd gone, no. <laughs> it's creepy. <laughs> Genuinely weird. I like, to think I'm, I like to think of myself as an equal opportunities offender. I like to think I offend everyone and therefore no one, because it's kind of a blanket bombing approach to offence. 
It's like I'm not picking on any group, and also I'm not really making any points, am I? I'm just trying to make you laugh for a couple of hours. That's my only job in this world. I'm not trying to make any points or change anyone's mind about anything. And the best defense of a joke is always, it's just a joke. I was only joking. Relax, I'm just trying to make you giggle. <laughs> when you try and say something that's true, earnestly, from the heart, that's when it can fuck up much more spectacularly in your face. I've got a story about this. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. It's a story about PC blowing up in a friend's face. So this mate of mine, it's quite a long story, which is unusual for me, but it's a doozy, you'll enjoy it. This mate of mine runs a comedy club, okay, at a university. He's in his mid-60s now, he's been running it since the early 80s, it's a legendary club. Anyway, runs this thing, he's quite a right-on kind of guy. If there's a petition to sign, he's signing it and forwarding the email to me. If there's a march to go on, he's on the march. Very right-on, political, involved kind of guy. Anyway, he runs this comedy club, this incident happened about 12 years ago. He decided to put on a night of American stand-up comedy. There happened to be three American stand-ups in London the same weekend. Okay? So he decided, well, instead of just booking one of them, I'll book all three of them. We'll make it like a themed evening, like the 4th of July. We'll get hot dogs and Budweiser and what have you. It'll be fun. So everyone comes to the evening. There's like 300 people in the club, and he's all excited about it. The first act goes up on stage. He's a black American stand-up out of New York City, and he does what I would refer to as an Uncle Tom routine. Uh, if you're not familiar with the terminology, that means he did a racist routine. All his jokes were based on negative, racist stereotypes. He got away with it. He was a very charismatic performer. He was very handsome. But the material was, it was terrible. I mean, it was like, at best, it was uh, white guys drive like this and black guys drive like this. Nonsense, ill-observed nonsense. At worst, it was stuff that would make your skin crawl, okay? He totally got away with it that night. He got a big round of applause at the end of about half an hour set, and he walked back to the green room at the club, and my mate went in after him, and he went up to him, and he said, I want a word. You'll get paid for tonight's gig, there's no problem with that, but you would not be welcome back at my club telling those kind of jokes. I think it's racist, I think it's wrong. I don't think it's okay for you to tell racist jokes just because you're a black guy. I think, if anything, you should know better. I think it denigrates the struggle of the African-American people, and you can never say that no one's told you so, because I'm telling you so right now, it's racist and it's wrong. And the comedian went, I agree. When you're right, you're right. But I'm the other black comic. I haven't been on yet. <laughs> so I'll be Jimmy Carr. Thank you very much indeed for coming out. Cheers. Appreciate it. A um, couple of quick things. Sometimes if I buy a girl a drink after the show, she gets the wrong idea. She thinks I'm just a nice guy buying her a drink. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Who's going out after this? Who's going out tonight? <laughs> Loads of you. Well, I've got nothing but admiration. I mean, well done. But I can't wait to get home to bed. <laughs> I've had a lovely night. I've really enjoyed talking to you, but I want to get to sleep now. I've got to an age where I talk about sleep like I used to talk about sex. You should have seen me last night. <laughs> I was at it for eight hours. <laughs> I did down sheets, blackout blinds, the fucking lot. <laughs> this morning, the snooze button did not know what fucking hit it. <laughs> well, let's break out some rough stuff. It's that time of the evening. I'll tell you a couple of jokes that Channel 4 told me were not acceptable. <laughs> OK, it was the week of the tsunami. Remember the tsunami? All I wanted to say was the tsunami was terrible. Tokyo was covered in raw fish and seaweed, a situation the mayor described as delicious. <laughs> could have been worse, I could have said delicious. <laughs> but I didn't, because that would have been razy lacism. <laughs> I had a similar thing with Hurricane Sandy. You remember Hurricane Sandy that devastated the eastern seaboard of America? All I wanted to say was it was the worst thing to hit New York since those two planes. <laughs> Possibly they got it right on that one. <laughs> I tend to get into trouble with the papers for a joke once a year. Obviously, last year I went rogue. <laughs> but I tend to get in trouble for a joke with a journalist once a year. Last year, the joke that got me into trouble with a journalist was, was, was this one. You probably remember it from the last show. Why are they called Sunshine Variety Coaches when all the kids on board look the same? <laughs> now, the word variety is doing a lot of the heavy lifting in that joke, right? It's not that bad. The journalist in question said, you can't say that about retarded children. <laughs> Time out. 
Because Variety, the children's charity, they do great work. They do a lot of stuff with mentally disadvantaged children. But they also do a lot of stuff with physically disadvantaged children and socially disadvantaged children. You can't lump all those kids together and go, bunch of retarded kids. You can't call anyone retarded kids. You're a journalist. You should know better. And also, being offended on behalf of someone else, in my mind, is literally fuck all. That's just you taking the high moral ground. For you to be offended, I think, minimum, you have to be the one that's offended. So if you're genuinely offended by that last joke, you're retarded. <laughs> While we're talking about charitable stuff, as you leave this evening, there's going to be a bucket collection. There's people with buckets and tins, and I'll just briefly tell you what it's about. We're collecting money this evening for abused children. And if we raise between us just £500, we can buy their silence. <laughs> that's clearly a joke, right? The reason I say that's clearly a joke is because I did a gig in Croydon a couple of months ago and a woman genuinely came up to me after the show and went, where are those collection tins? <laughs> Just unpick that for a second. So not only did she not realise that, that was a joke, she wanted to help. <laughs> is anyone totally unoffended by anything I've said? <laughs> You're totally unoffended by anything? Well, what's your name, sir? Hamdi. Hamdi. It's an unusual name, you don't hear that every day. Well, I imagine you do, it's your fucking name. <laughs> Handy, what do you do, Handy? Student. You're a student, what are you studying? Economics. Economics, whereabouts? Royal Holloway. Royal Holloway? Well, maybe if you'd worked a little bit harder for your A-levels. <laughs> Just say Royal Holloway is not... I mean, come on. There are universities that have always been universities. There are universities that used to be polytechnics that then became universities. And then there's Royal Holloway, which I think used to be a 24-hour garage. <laughs> and they got a delivery of books and they fucking went with it. God love you. <laughs> right, let me try and offend you. Um, all right, when I was at school, a mate of mine got caught wanking in the showers. <laughs> Nothing? Well, it ruined the school trip to Auschwitz. <laughs> it's not going to get any more offensive than that, dude. It's a joke about the worst thing that has ever happened. <laughs> oh, I can't tell you a more offensive joke than that, but I can tell you a story about me that will change your mind about me and then change it right back. Do you, do you want to hear it? Okay. Well, it concerns... It's, it's basically telling you about what it's like being famous. What it's like is people ask you to do things, and it's nice to say yes, because normally it's fun stuff. Do you want to be on Top Gear? Yes, I do. Do you want to do a Jubilee? Yes, I do. Do you want to come and visit a hospice? It's palliative care for teenagers. Yes, I do. I got that call about six years ago. I said, yeah, I'll go. I didn't know what some of those words meant. <laughs> I thought it sounds all right, teenagers. I imagine that would be fun. Now, it transpires, palliative translates to dying, and I found myself in a situation where I went, well, I've got to go, I've said I'll go, and thinking, this is going to be shit. <laughs> Hand on heart, I thought, this is going to be fucking shit. But I said I'll go, so I'll go. So I went there with very low expectations. I thought, I'm going to, I'll, I'll be lucky to get through this without tearing up. I went there, it was genuinely... I, mean, I couldn't believe what a fucking arsehole I am. Because it was genuinely inspirational. It was brilliant to go. If you get a chance to visit a hospice, go to a hospice. They're amazing. Because I, I don't know what inspires you, but I like that idea of carpe diem, living in the moment, now being where happiness is. And if you meet life-limited teenagers, they're having that because they're aware of how precious time is. And I think we often forget in our day-to-day -day lives. And so it was amazing to go and to be around. I've been back many times since, and I'd recommend it as a thing to do. It's really fun. They don't want to be shut away. They want to be part of society. The thing that blew me away when I went there was an incident. So if I go out to get coffee before the show, if I go to Starbucks, obviously my coffee shop of choice. <laughs> Similar views. But if I go out to get coffee before the show, right, if there's a group of 15-year-old girls in the coffee shop, they'll be really flirty with me, not because I'm some super attractive dude, but because I'm a celebrity and there's a cachet to celebrity in our society, for better, for worse. There just is, it's a fact. So I'm used to that kind of flirting in that context. I wasn't expecting it within the context of palliative care for teenagers in a hospice. There's a girl in there, she just turned 15, pretty little thing, and she's a massive comedy fan. And she had all the DVDs, seen everything on YouTube, like really into it. And she was really flirty, and really tactile. And I thought, well, all she wanted was a kiss. And I thought, well, where's the harm? She's going to be dead before she can testify. <laughs> I can see you think that's bad, but I can make that worse <laughs> with just two words. True story.
It is a true story, it just happens to be about a different Jimmy. <laughs> thank you so much for coming out, Hammersmith. Stay fun. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr and I'm announcing my new tour. It's called Jimmy Carr Laughs Funny because there'll be laughs and it'll be funny and because I laugh funny. Uh, come and see me. Go to jimmycarr.com for details, you know, dates and tickets and all that kind of thing. You know how to buy tickets. Go and buy some tickets.